Hi everyone, my name is Jules Mayouf and I'm really excited to be a guest designer on Sewing Street. It's combining two of my favourite things which are sewing and designing. Uh, I live in London at the moment but I'm originally from Staffordshire uh, so I think I've got a combination of two really great things so London's really diverse and um, lots of different cultural impacts and then Staffordshire is very rural so there's a lot of country influence in what I do. My grandma first taught me to sew when I was in my early teens. She was a dressmaker and she was always sewing and taking in orders from different people um, and I think I got my initial love of sewing from her. Um, I started making my clothes uh, because I couldn't find anything that was fashionable so I created my own fashion. A um, bit dubious at times probably. I remember once I um, bought some really lovely, as I thought, heavy brocade material. I created a pencil skirt, thought that was fabulous. It turned out to be curtaining uh, and I got quite a lot of stick from that. But uh, you know, in my defence, I was a new romantic and I, I think I was just fashion forward. Um, I have done a lot of um, teaching and coaching and mentoring uh, in sewing in my career. Um, and I would think that probably the best tip that I can give to people, because um, all age groups have various challenges, but the best tip is to be kind and good to yourself and don't worry about if you make mistakes because you've always got your seam ripper to hand. I'm really looking forward to my shows with Sewing Street and helping you have some hints and tips and knowledge. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 73 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in to our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 till 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So, you never have to spend a minute without us. Good morning and welcome to Sewing Street on this lovely windy day. At least it's not raining when it's not here. But lovely, very windy day, so stay in, stay in and keep warm. I've just been outside. Oh my Lord, it was so cold outside, so stay in. We've got a fantastic day for you. Well, until one morning, morning on Sewing Street. We've got two guests, not just one, but two. We've got Jules and Sally Stevens as well. So that's very exciting. Um, and, as always, we have an early bird. Now, I know it's windy and it's cold and it's wintry and all of that outside, but we are, I don't know about you, I am ready for summer. So, in celebration of that, we have got a fantastic early bird of three half metres of camping, sorry, fat quarters. No, they're half metres. <laughs> right. I was sure they were half metres. We have three half metres of fabric for you. Normal price. £20.97. But today, because it's the early bird, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look, these aren't fat quarters. These are half eight. £11.97. That's why we thought they were fat quarters. But no, look, they're half metres. Let me show you. Look at the, look at the size of it. Look, see, half a metre. These are your 44-inch width, quilting weight fabric, 
Oh, I'm thinking um, beach bags. Actually, do you know, because this one's got flip flops on, I'd have that as a nice little drawstring uh, bag. Put my flip flops in, put my shoes on. You could even use it when you go on holiday to put all your linen in or your underwear or something. But Or buy somebody a pair of flip flops, a little summer present, make them a little bag to put them in. Because you often, you know, when you buy really posh shoes and really posh flip flops, they always come in a little bag, don't they? Isn't it really cute? Every sort of flip flop under the sun there. But it's not just that one, there are three. Three. So we got flip flops, half a metre of flip flops. And then we've got half a metre of deck chairs. I love this one because it's not just deck chairs, it's all sorts of camping chairs. Now this is lovely because it's got a lovely um, pale pink, like a ticking candy stripe background. Very pretty. And we, we've got um, deck chairs, plastic chairs. Love the plastic chairs. Those nice metal chairs. But again, um, uh, yes, anybody, anyone lost their outdoor chairs? Luckily, mine all survived because I lived down in the southwest, so we had the full on brunt of, of Eunice. But our chairs actually survived. Not many people's fences did, though, I have to say. We lost several, lots of trees falling over in the road. It was the, I heard the sound of the chainsaw on Friday morning and thought, oh, something's come down then. But actually, this is quite scattered, isn't it? Maybe this is chairs on a windy day. But again, I'm thinking like little, you know, this could be your passport, whole little travel, um, travel wallet, nice little drawstring bag, really bag. Really pretty. And you get three, three of these, remember? Three half metres. When do you ever get three half metres for 11.97? Now, remember, these are a pre-cut. If you buy one of the early birds, you will get three half metres. And if you buy two, you will still get them there because they are pre-cut. Now, this one, the final one, lovely um, minty green stripe. This is in a vertical. With caravans. Outlines of caravans of all sorts. We've got caravans with spotty curtains, caravans with stripy curtains, caravans with no curtains, all with tow bars. Again, perf perfect for using for your caravan holidays. You can make yourself your own special little project bag. You know, when you're um, taking your sewing away in the caravan, have a special project just for your caravan. So during the year when you think, oh, I know exactly what's perfect for sewing in the caravan, you could put it in here. Cushions, you can make two cushions from here. That'd be nice. So this works out as three ninety nine for half a metre. So when do we ever sell, other than in the major sales, when do we ever sell fabrics for three ninety nine, proper print, quilting weight, and it is your 44 inch width. It's beautiful, beautiful quality, really soft, but your nice quilting weight, it's lovely. But wouldn't it look nice for um, cushions for your caravan? Holiday cushions, I love these. Let me show you all of them together. Well, it's lovely because you've got the nice, um, like a spearmint, I'd say. Then you get the lovely pink stripe. So together, wouldn't they make a nice set of six cushions? And then you've got the more fresh mint. Nice, aren't they? You, if you make cushions with these, imagine pom-poms all around the edge. And um, 10 o'clock, we have got a bow making and pom-pom hour. So we've got all the pom-pom makers in all the sizes, but wouldn't they look, lo I think they just look lovely on your bed. I think my favourite one is the flip-flops. I definitely am thinking shoe bag. Then you can pop it in your suitcase, really, really easy. But nice little thing, think about gifts for people. You know, when you buy something for somebody and you think, well, I want to make it look a bit extra special, rather than wrapping it up in paper, make them a little bag, nice little um, cosmetic bag in any of those, especially for your holidays. So, 11.97, that's three, three half metre. That works out as 3.99 for half a metre. So, pop it in your basket, add it to your stash, because when it's gone, it's gone. And if we do have any left, that price goes back up at midnight. So, this is your one and only chance. But do remember, they are pre-cut. So, if you bought, buy multiples, they will still and get a loads. Have a look on the website if you want some inspiration of what to do with the half meter. We've got loads of books on there. Um, the fat quarter books, the half meter books, loads of different things you can do. So pop it in your stash and if you want some inspiration, have a look on the website. Right, so coming up today, I told you we had a jam-packed, fun-filled, windy, windy day um, today. So we have got the lovely jewels with us now at 8 o'clock. Brand new, brand new design. 
reading book cushion. Jules has arrived with bags. She took several trips to get to the car. She's made so much stuff to show us today. Lovely. So this is a brand new panel exclusive to Sewing Street. Now we know how much you love a book cushion. There are three panels and they're all slightly different. They're all different colours and they all say slightly different things. We're going to show you them in a minute, but there's a photo of them. So I'll show you how they work, what you what you do with them. So you either buy the yellow one, the purple one or the blue one. Blue is there's been a lot of you on pre-order wanting this because everything you need, and I'll show you in a minute, it's all on the panel. Um, and blue is currently in the lead. Beautiful. They are exclusive to us. Nine o'clock, Sally Stevens is with us with a brand new quilt design for the Blue Willow Quilt. And we are launching two brand new fabric collections. One, it's because the quilt is um, you can make in two colourways. So we've got two kits, one using the Willow Fabric design and one using beautiful Belle Isle from Moda. So two brand new fabric collection. Now, we are also, for the Blue Willow Quilt, we're selling the instructions on their own and they are selling very quickly. We are, and we'll only have them while they're in stock. Now, obviously there are kits for each, all the fabric you need for the kit comes with the instructions, but you can also get the instructions on it. And even better as well, we're also selling, because it's a brand new fabric range, the fabric on its own as well. Lovely. Anyway, that's the nine o'clock and I will show you all the fabric. It's gorgeous. We can't decide which one we like the most. Very difficult, very different fabrics, but both beautiful and really quality designer fabric. Then at 10 o'clock, Jules is with us again for a brand new product, which this is called Perfect Bows, with two bow makers, amazing devices, the Bow Genius. And it's a most amazing piece of kit that creates every sort of bow that you can imagine. Here's one that Jules made for us, which we've got hanging up in the studio. Layers of it's not just one bow, it's layers of bow. So if you want to make professional looking designer quality bows, with this um, piece of equipment, this bow maker, you it you can make exactly what you want. It's absolutely beautiful. It's amazing. We haven't done bow making before, but we know that you love doing bows. You can use them for decorating really small things from headbands all the way up to the back of your chair or sent to pieces or used for decorating presents or adding to your stitch, things like with this wreath that Jules has made. Uh, amazing products. And Jules is going to be demonstrating that, showing us exactly how to use that. That's at 10 o'clock. Then at 11 o'clock, Sally is back with us. We have got another brand new quilt kit, the center stage quilt kit. Um, it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And all the fabric in it is pre-cut, which is the best thing. So amazing. Yeah, no, that is, I'm thinking it's not called that. It's called the Happy Campers quilt kit. I thought, I did get confused. You know, it's like, you, they put it on there and I just read it out. But it's not called that. It's called the Happy Campers Quilt Kit. Fantastic um, kit because all the fabric in it is pre-cut pre for you. And then in the final hour, 12 o'clock, we have got a whole selection of pre-cut fabrics and books and um, new just some fabrics you may not have seen before and jelly rolls and, um, oh, we've got some layer cakes and books. Lots of things, so pre-cuts and books to stock up your stash. I have to say that slowly, otherwise I get my <laughs> stash up your stock. Stock up your stash. Now, if you want to shop with us, of course you do want to shop with us. We have got some fantastic things for you today. The best and the easiest way to do it is to go onto the website www.sewingstreet.com, click on Watch Live, and then if you scroll down, you can see there's two boxes. One's called Today's Show Deals on the left. Those are the things that I've already been talking about. And then one on the right is called Pre-Order. Those are the things I haven't put on air yet. But every, oh, look at that. Look, that's the Willow fabrics, beautiful. This is the the, um, the fabric and the that's going to be in the kits that Sally's going to be showing us. There's the, um, her design. All of that's all the Moda Bell Isles, absolutely beautiful fabric condition. We've got two mega bundles, so if you can't decide which of the fabrics you want to buy, you can just buy the whole bundle and save as well. Um, there's the Bow Genius, the amazing bow maker. We've also got pom-poms in that hour, and we've got ribbons and yarn and everything you need to make beautiful bows and fantastic pom-poms. There's the Happy Camper. It is called Centre Stage. We really confused it, but it's using the Happy Camper fabric. But the quilt is called Center Stage, and the fabric is called Happy Camper. So there's um, that. We've got a couple of Sally's um, 
quilt instructions for you as well because in case you missed out last time and here are all of our pre-cuts thread books lots of things loads of lovely things for you to see that's the entire day gone so if you've got to go out and there's some of the things i've been talking about and you don't want to miss out and worry that it'll sell out before you get back it's all there on pre-order you just need to click on the right hand side on pre-order um so let me show you the panels these are brand new brand new and gorgeous uh, shall i show you the blue one first since it's the most popular so far so now the good thing about these panels is the instructions come printed on them so you don't even need a separate set let's put my glasses on there we go there's all the instructions it explains exactly how to do it then on the panel it's quite a big panel i've got to open it all out because it's quite a big panel you've got the front of the cushion you've got the back of the cushion you've got the pocket isn't it lovely look at the shades of blues and it's got a really 3d look to it gorgeous and then this one says on this is this will be on the front of the pocket now Jules is going to be demonstrating this so she'll show you what these pieces are for it says shh I'm reading and it's got a handle as well I'll show you the um finished cushion so on the cushion you've got the um pocket that says shh I'm reading and then you've got the bookcase so this section here that's the front of the cushion so you can pop your book in there or you could put it on your sofa and pop your remote controls in there packet of minstrels i'm thinking <laughs> you could probably oh, the chocolate is available <laughs> i think you could slip in a whole packet of fig rolls um, you there, probably could yeah you? your glasses yeah. your scissors fig box rolls are my favorite biscuit hmm? box of chocolates in there you could get yeah nice flat box of chocolates that's the, and then on the back that's where those um the long books came in i showed you and it has a handle as well should you want to carry it around optional you don't have to put the handle on so that's that one the blue panel 14.99 that is fantastic value it's a big panel it comes with all the instructions totally brand new today and totally exclusive to sewing street and really good for beginners as well and also really good you know if you wanted to teach children to sew they want to make their own book cushion for their bedroom they could even um, embroider their own name on it as well everything that you need is on there um panel number two is the purple one exactly the same only it's got a different words so we've got um look at the purple it's kind of purple and fuchsia isn't it so this one says just one more chapter oh do you know i say that every night mm -hmm. i think oh just one more chapter and then i get to the end thing now i'm definitely going to turn my light out and then i think well i'll just see because obviously it ends on the cliffhanger you just read the first three lines of the next chapter and then you go just another one more chapter <laughs> um i'll just pinch this one i will put your display back out so this is the purple one in its beauty with handle i like the books on the back so if you wanted to personalize it this would be the ideal place you could write on here with a um, chalk pencil and then just embroider over it or you could go even further you could write pe your, the names your favorite books you could embroider down the spines to make it lovely present for somebody so if you were buying somebody a book for their birthday make them a cushion pop it in there now look this one's got the two pockets so there's your remote control there's your book there's your fig rolls. Yeah, that's a chocolate pocket. <laughs> there's your chocolate pocket. <laughs> well, I thought the colour was appropriate for chocolate. But this could, um, this is great for all ages, whether it's children, you know, it would look equally as nice on your bed as a book cushion or on your sofa. Gorgeous, isn't you it? You never Love lose your one. book either. Never lose your book. Put your bookmark in there and all your other reading accessories. Your reading glasses. Um, and then finally... The yellow one. So there is a one panel to suit every colour taste and decor. This one has got um, a nice sort of slate grey background and all the books are in shades of sort of yellow and ochre and orange. Let me get that one. There we go. And this one says, please go away, I'm reading. Fair enough. I know. I should just hold this up when I'm reading in bed yeah. and my husband starts <laughs> reading out bits from his book and goes, oh, he's always reading some like climbing book or uh. running book and he reads out interesting facts. I'm thinking, I'm on a really good yeah. bit on my yeah. chapter. <laughs> so that would be, go away, please go away, I'm reading. And then there's the back of that one. Gorgeous. That's not the handles, just Jules didn't have the right handle. 
<laughs> now these are brand new today and completely exclusive to us. Blue is still in the lead. This is the only place that you can get hold of them. All your instructions on here, brilliant gift for somebody. If you know somebody who goes, oh, I really like to sew, I've got a sewing machine, don't know what to make. Fantastic gift for them, because it's all there. But lovely to make for some, a nice Mother's Day gift, isn't it? Buy a nice little book, nice little blockbuster. Be lovely, wouldn't it? Pop to the supermarket, you can get yourself, get yourself a little book, put it in there. Um, there are other things that you might need, um, wadding and interfacing, which Jules will be talking to you about. Those are on the website if you want to get hold of them. We'll put them through, but it's all on there if you want need to buy the extra bits, and she'll be talking those through. Shall I put them back on your table? If you'd I like. I ruined the display. <laughs> okay, yeah. maybe I'll keep the... You can have one. Okay, we'll and share. I'll have two. So, Jules, where do we start? Well, no, good morning. Morning. Good morning. Sorry, we did this earlier. <laughs> Let's pretend. Yeah. Good morning, Jules. Good morning, How lovely Rebecca. to see you Lovely this to morning. see you. I haven't seen you for ages. ages. I know. How was your journey? And how was yeah, it was all right. It was a bit woo every now and again. Yeah, glory. Did your car go woo? Yes. I kept to the middle name, which I don't normally do because I don't like middle laners kind mm. of thing. But I thought, chances are if I get blown to the side I've got another lane to go to. Well my <laughs> worry was that I'd seen um, on the weather that on the TV that some lorries had fallen over in the wind so every time I overtook a lorry I went into the fast lane. You went, yeah. I thought how far how wide is that lorry and if yes. it falls over you don't want to be Because they were shaking a bit weren't they I didn't like to get yeah, too close. Yeah. Coming down the hills as well it was a bit. <laughs> There's one bit where I have to cross over the River Avon and it's yeah. a really wide section and the wind whistles down yeah. there and I was like mm. <laughs> I was 10 to 2 all Hold, the way. Oh yeah. I wasn't one arm. Hold on tight. Normally yes. I'm on the motorway just one arm yeah, but yeah. I was like mm. <laughs> We did it well, well done. Yeah. Well done you two. Well done we got there. <laughs> So, so how did you find this? Excellent. I mean, I had it before the instructions and was asked to do the instructions for the panel. So hence okay. why we have that one. Right. Um, so just a quick apology <laughs> about the instructions. We went a bit bingo with the numbers. Uh, we've got <laughs> lots of number three on here. But oh, just, really? Just bingo top, numbers. Yes, top to bottom, left to right, and you'll oh, be one, fine. Two, three, four. <laughs> one, two, three, three, four. Three. Yes. Okay. Bit, bit bingo. But it's bingo numbers. The instructions follow. When we print this again, it will be correct. So apologies. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it's very straightforward. In fact, I've prep. Obviously, I've done that one, mm. but I've not prepped anything else because I'm going to see whether we can do the whole thing. Do the whole thing. Fantastic. Yeah. And I've got a little um, kind of tip for you as well. Uh, so this is made up just as per instructions. Right. With uh, what I've done is I've backed the front and the pocket with the, the two tips here where we can say we put fusible wadding in. Mm. But I've run the top pocket edge just straight forward. Okay. But I'm going to show you this morning, the ones that Rebecca's got have both got like a little trim across the top. Oh, yes. Now, that's not an extra that. trim. That's part of the pocket. So I'll show you how that works. Oops. She says as we throw things about. So, first thing that you'll do, <laughs> we'll leave that, is you need to cut everything out and cut it all out on the line. But if you want to make the pocket with like the we've done trim. with the extra trim, okay. then what you'll need to do is just cut an extra half an inch of the white backing material, which is on your panel, um, at the bottom of the lining of the pocket. So, right. just do that and I'll show you how okay. that all comes together. Uh, in a second. So you just cut the pieces out? Cut all the pieces out, so you've got all of your little pieces. So you've got back and a front. Oh, and they're all labelled on the panel, so it's yeah, easy all to know on which the is panel. which. Um, a front pocket, a lining pocket, and a handle, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're going to take the two pocket <coughs> pieces first of all, and we're going to put them right sides together and sew the long top seam. Sewing everything with a quarter of an inch. Sorry, I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to gallop but I'm going to try to finish it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so gallop and not gallop. Um, so you, might you like said to for it. a firmer pocket, add a layer of wadding. So this is the stage. So this would be the point that you would add the wadding. So you'd add the wadding to the pocket front. 
Yes, I can and see that. The mine's a bit squishy. Yeah, and the cushion front. But I thought what I'd do is I'll do one without yeah. any padding so you can see the difference. Okay. And the filling that I've put in there, um, you can use a normal cushion inner if you want to. I haven't. I've used toy filling because it's nice and squishy. It is a very squishy And you can fill the cushion. cushion as much as you want. Yes. Um, if you are going to use uh, a cushion inner, then what you'll need to do is make sure when, when you come to the end bit that you leave a wider gap to put your cushion filling right okay in. um but if you're using toy filling it doesn't matter right to you okay so pocket front to front right sides together i'm going to sew the long top edge with a quarter of an inch seam and we've set Ooh, this purple's all purple's now in the lead purple is beating purple's it's a nice purple yeah, it's actually. this actually the yellow one's called mustard actually mustard that was um i, I think it was last year that, those were the Pantone colours for last year, I think. So if you bought a new grey sofa... Yeah. Because grey sofas were all the rage, weren't they? And you don't change your sofa every year, do you? Well, I don't know, some people might. <laughs> no, I, I don't. Do not. I know, no, every 10, 20 years. Yes, <laughs> they're when it, about. When it's innards fall out. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to press the seam back. So I've opened it out, press the seam back towards the top oops it's all right it's yeah don't floor. worry the end's just fallen off the iron me end's fallen off the iron. message from morning to you both i've just ordered the blue and the purple can you please show the backs of the cushions again i will there is the back of the purple i like that it's lovely isn't it and that is the back of the blue just a bookshelf but I like it. I like in the fact I feel like I would need to personalise. Yes, you could quite yeah. easily. I did some um, little bit of favorite, stitching, metallic thread stitching you could put on your here. Favorite literary quote. You could. To be or not to be. <laughs> to read or not to read. <laughs> to eat chocolate or not to eat chocolate. That's yeah. Not. Or you could put um, milk, one sugar. <laughs> <laughs> and then if anyone speaks me. to you. <laughs> <laughs> one sugar. I'm reading. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we've got the pocket. We're turning it the right sides round, and okay. this is where you'll get your little bit of extra. So, so if you've had cut the half inch, that's where so you get. Right. Got the half inch on the lining. So now I'm going to match the bottom, because if you match the bottom, miraculously, an extra you strip appears. Look at that! Nice. How like that. that? So then, just to make sure that you're going to sew it all down in the right place, we'll just. Not break the eye. Does it come? No. We'll just do it like that. It's well, fine. you can have it on or off. I put it on, and it's going to stay on now. Isn't and it? then it stays charged. Ah. No, it's nice. Like it. It's not heavy. No, it's not heavy. Is it right-handed or left-handed? Mustard and purple, neck and neck. Oh, that one says yellow. On the thing, it says mustard. Confuse me. So now I'm just going to do a top stitch in the ditch, which means in the seam that I've just created and that'll make sure it doesn't shift. Okay. You could do a nice decorative stitch there. You could. Nice excuse to use one of the 300 embroidery stitches. Yes, exactly. That you have in your machine and say I'm never going to use them. Uh, another message. Morning ladies, thinking great for Kindle and reading glasses from Collector. Yes. Yes. As well as fig rolls, obviously. But yes, you could put your Kindle in there. I like the fact that you can hide things, but also because it's all squishy. And that's yes. why I'd add wadding. So if I did put glasses in there, they'd be slightly I prefer protected. it with the wadding, but obviously if you if you didn't you want to, you don't to, have to. So now what I'm gonna do is I've got the handle and we're going to fold it wrong sides together and make a crease down it. So the handle is optional. The handle is optional. You don't want to carry your cushion around. The, it is in there for, to be used if you want to, but you can always keep the piece. Um, the other thing that you can do is if you don't want to do the extra ridge on the lining piece, you could line it with some other thing and yeah. use this, make that into glasses case you or could, whatever. Yes. You well, it's the another. same as like the cushion back. If you like that bit on the back, yeah. use your own fabric for the back and you make another cushion. So now we're going to fold the outer two edges into the crease. But send, when you've got yours, if you do personalise it, send us in a picture because we'd love to see. Love to see what you put on yours. People are so inventive, aren't they? I know. They? I'm always amazed. I think, oh, I wish I thought of that. Put it on the fans page. So I would embroider my favourite book titles definitely down the spines on the back. 
but you know if, like and if you were giving this to somebody with a book you could um put them can ask my favorite books do you know what my favorite book is rebecca Daphne do you want to <laughs> you're, you're, and all of it's my own book written yes, about it me, was written about me. No, it is my <laughs> well let's hope book. it wasn't written about me. it is my favorite book and i've got and she's also written a really good book, My Cousin Rachel, and I've actually got a cousin called Rachel. So it was her birthday, I said, happy birthday, my cousin Rachel. <laughs> so, that is actually my favourite book. Followed by Divided Kingdom by Rupert Thomas. I highly recommend that. My second favourite book. I read so much, I can't even remember what I've read. <laughs> the so, time the, the Divided again. Kingdom is a brilliant book where the whole of the UK has gone a bit corrupt, funnily enough. So everybody has to have a personality like test and then they split the UK with big fences into four and you have to go and live by your personality oh, type. It's a bit like uh, there was a, a film similar to that, wasn't there? So they have the yellow section, which all the people that's just full of fast food shops and motorways and shopping malls for all the really materialistic people. And then they have the blue section for all the sort of the poets and the authors. It's just a <laughs> You'd brilliant... Be the blue. Right, OK, so I've just done a folded in and folded in and just top stitched the handle. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you didn't see me do that, but that was Again, what we were doing. Decorative stitches. Decorative stitches. So now we're taking the pocket, uh, sorry, the cushion, cushion front. front. And we're put it, putting the pocket <laughs> on and lining up the raw edges at the bottom. What's your favourite book then, Jules? I quite like things, uh, science fiction things, so Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey was my first foray into science fiction. So okay. that was my that was my favourite for a long time. But I do like uh, John Gwynn books and um, the Dresden Files and things like that. So <laughs> Dresden Plates. Dresden, Dresden Plates Files, yeah, <laughs> those are the ones. <laughs> so I'm just quickly pinning along here because I'm going to machine tack it. So machine tacking means you just keep it on a straight stitch put it on a long stitch just because I think when you've got pins doing something like this well I always stab myself but uh, so now if you tack within your seam allowance so quarter of an inch seam allowance if you go about an eighth of an inch or right just, to hold, it in just place. to hold it that's all I want to do I like sewing I like books as fiction books that are to do with sewing as well have you read the book The Sewing Machine absolutely brilliant if you haven't read that it's all about this woman who has this really um, an old singer sewing machine and then it all goes back to the person who originally had it and, oh, and their story and they made and I, I think her brother or her husband had worked in the singer factory fantastic natalie fergie the sewing machine highly recommend that one i read loads of sewing fiction i've seen i've seen um oops i've got my tension wrong. i've seen uh the titles of them but i've never actually gotten to read i know i think any. it should be i keep trying to say can we bring those onto sewing street we could have a whole book club couldn't we because i read loads and loads of it there's um really nice there's a lovely um one called the runaway that's all about the when the Eng a group of english family moved over to america and then started uh, making quilts oh right tracy chevalier that sounds interesting, mm, very doesn't good. it? So if you've got oh, any good tips for sewing fiction, send them in. Because like I said, we could have a book club, couldn't we? I've read so much sewing fiction, so I sort of collect it a bit. Yeah. We could just do a new one every month, couldn't we? Yeah. Well, there you go. Oh, message from Susie Duncan. Susie says she loves me because we've usually got about three on the go. And yeah, and this book cushion would be great for our book club, wouldn't it? There you go, we could do, oh, mm. there we are. That's another Pat, one. Pat, when you go to book, if you go in a book club, I'm in a book club, you could take it with you, couldn't you? This is me at my book club. Yeah, <laughs> Get by, you could make one for each of your friends in the book club, couldn't you? You could all sit there with your cushion. <laughs> so the next thing that we're gonna do is divide the cushion front and just finger press. And then we're gonna fix the handle on. So remember, with handles, if you want it to lift up, it's got to lay down. So just pop yes. it. I think we, we should have a Sewing Street book club. Yeah. Yeah, Susie's, Susie's up for it as well. But I've read, and I've also started reading knitting and crochet fiction as well. Oh, is there such a thing as well? Well, there isn't. We, it's not a thing. It's just that I've discovered in my time lots of books that are se Related about sewing. Related to, And ah. I, have I have a big collection of them. There you go. Oh, yellow is now way in the lead. Well, 
I don't know which one I like the best, actually. So now I'm all, all I'm doing know. is tacking the, on top. I think purple. I think purple's the my yellow favorite. on top as well. Uh, the handles on top as well. So you're doing that within the seam allowance. Yeah. Okay. And then you know we're not far from being finished. So at this point, decide mm. whether you want to have a, a division in your pocket or not. Right. So whether you're going to put a so if it's like for a child and their books tend to be bigger. Yeah. But if it's for you and you think I want to put something in the other one, then this is your division point. So what you would do is get one of your friction pens and just draw a line as okay. and where. Um, I think I'll leave it. All or right. do you want me to do one? Go on then. Go on then. Go we'll on do then. It. Do a division. Yes. Yeah, we'll so the blue one you haven't got a division, but the purple one you have. So, so what would you put one, in your division? Well, I'm going to do a little division. So I'm going to put. And I'm, I'm pens. In favour of well. I don't write on books. You don't write on books. Oh, do you? cookery books. You can oh, write cookery on books. cookery books. This doesn't work. Not enough icing yeah. sugar. <laughs> More butter. Yeah. <laughs> My, a lot of mine say there's enough icing on here for three cakes. Yeah. <laughs> Forget the eggs. I have got the old recipe book which says, don't ever make this again. <laughs> but you can write on cookery books, but you can't write on any other books. No, not but any you other might need books. Your yeah. phone, you could put your phone, put your phone in, in there. Phone yeah. pocket. That's, yeah, that's, be all right for phones. It would be good for Kindle, wouldn't it? So now all you do is make your sandwich. So you've got, <laughs> make put sure, a sandwich put your sandwich in there. <laughs> <laughs> a baguette. A ba <laughs> A smorgasbord. A smorgasbord, little pen, <laughs> cheeky panini. <laughs> so there we go. That's that it, everything's like tucked in. Sandwich. <laughs> cushion sandwich. And then we just line up the edges. And you can pin. So if we were going to be putting a zip in this cushion. So if you were going to be putting zips. a zip in, yeah. you would have done it prior to the handle. So don't put your handle there just yet because you need to have folded over. You want to fold over an edge. Well, depending on where you put the zip. Uh, I would put it at the top because if you, you're going to spoil, mm. well, you could put it midway. Wherever you're going to put it or well, the bottom. Well, actually what you could do is you could, depending on which way around you wanted it to be, you, I'm just thinking you could take the pocket and use that as a fold over back. Yeah. Or you could put the zip in the bottom, then you could wouldn't put have the to zip in the bottom with your handle. Yeah. So you do that at this stage then. Yeah. But yeah, you don't want to put everything together just yet because it's easier to put a zip in. So if you're putting a zip in the yeah. top, for example, if I'd got my zip going down here, I'd be wanting to do it when it was free. If yeah. you see what I mean. No, I so would as well. I'd have my zip. So if this was this my zip. <laughs> That looks just like a zip. Just like a zip. Just like a zip. So I'd have my zip there. Yeah. I'd be sewing the one side onto mm. the tape. Then I'd be sewing the other side onto the tape. And it wouldn't matter whether my zip was open, closed, whether I did the ends or whatever. Right. Because by the time you've done that, you then fold it over. Your zip's in the top and you do your seams just accordingly. Okay. But yeah, I would... Um, so it's up to you. You can either do a zip or you can just have a little hole that you... Because you've just because uh, you've stuffed yours, so you've just got. A I've stuffed gap. mine, and I have yeah, just uh, whip stitched the bottom. Um, I did think about envelope backs, and I did think about using the pocket. Okay. Um, but I was being lazy. So, is it, <laughs> if you wanted to do an envelope back, would there be enough in the pocket? You. Would the pocket liner be actually big enough? Just about have enough, I think. You'd have to do it, so you'd have to decide before you started cutting anything out. Mm, okay. Um, because you've got enough white uh, edging to get involved for seams and things. Um, I don't know, I didn't do it. Let's so it's not, difficult yeah, to say. It's probably, I mean, to be honest though, you would ruin that look of the back yeah. as well, which is lovely, isn't it, with this yeah. clear area here. So I would say if you wanted to do an envelope back, you could, but you might be better off using some black fabric um, as a backer and doing that way. Morning, everyone. I love the Elm Creek Quilters books by Jennifer Chivirani and the Quilting Murder Mysteries by Elizabeth Craig from Lynn and Cumbia. Oh, I'm with you, Lynn. I've read the Elm Creek, love them, but I haven't read the other one. Thank you very much for that. Loving the demo. I recommend the Elm Creek Quilt series of books. 
about quilting centre in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I know they are brilliant. I haven't read all of them. They're not easy to get hold of actually anymore, especially the early ones, but they are really good. Oh, Jane on Facebook said, have you read Craftsnoon so Social Club? So we cool. Social. <laughs> yeah, it's felt like, yeah, social. No, I haven't. Oh, I'll have to, that one's on Facebook. I'll have to write that one down. I haven't read that one. The Golden Thread, I can recommend that. That's more of a non-fiction book, but it's beautiful. The Forgotten Seamstress, sent in from Liz. Well, who's that by? Liz Treenow, not read that one. I've got a good are you making list. a note <laughs> yeah, well these are all written down I said I can read those that's good I should have bought my stack of books next time when I come in next week I'll bring in my stack of books and I'll show you but we should have a book club yeah. and then we could all discuss them yeah as if we've not got enough to discuss because we haven't got enough to talk about anyway <laughs> mm. oh so what I've done is I put the front to the back to and then I'm now that? sewing all the way around but leaving a gap at the bottom she said, is there enough fabric to put in the zipping base? Yes, there is. Yes, because you would do it. There's a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So, yeah, there would be enough if you wanted to insert the zip. And to be honest, if you wanted to use a slightly bigger, because I don't like a quarter of an inch seam allowance for a zip. I always find my zip falls out. Yeah. It's, but you could use maybe three eighths. It would be fine. Because you do it within the seam allowance, so you'd be fine. Because I think I would put a zip in just so in case I wanted to wash it. I suppose if it was, um, well, it depends what filling you put in it. Because if you've put the polyester filling, oh, you could just put the it would filling. still be fine, oh, yeah. Point, you Sorry. know the recycled one that we do? I'm sure yeah. that's that's washable. Oh, that's you need true. to just double check, but I'm sure it's But yeah, if I, if I was going to put a, a zip in, I would use a slightly bigger seam allowance because I find that when you use a quarter of an inch, it doesn't always catch all of the zip tape, so I always use a bigger one. But yeah, you would just, you wouldn't notice that it wasn't square if you used a slightly bigger seam allowance at the bottom. Because that's no, the bottom section on how of the much cushion. You, kind of stuff you it. wouldn't notice that. If you were going to so do a zip, obviously here. you'd need a cushion pad. Um, so how big is it when it's finished? I think is it 15 inches? Have you got a tape? Oh, I have a tape. I have a handy tape measure. I want to say 15 inches. Well, it's 15 inches, but obviously, um, then once it's made. It'll be 14 and a half. So if you're going to buy a cushion bed, I'd buy a 15 inch one. Because I like them a bit, I like them yeah, cushion like them. to be bigger. Or yeah. even 16 would be all right, wouldn't it? But you definitely, so if you were going to do that, you see here, mm. I've left a hand's width. So that's your stuffing hole. You won't get a cushion pad through that. No. You're going to need to stop about, just as you go around the corner. Uh, probably about an inch in because you're going to have to have mm. that amount and of space you know, If you in. really don't like putting zips in and you really want to put a cushion pad in, then just sew it in. I mean, how many times are you really going to wash it? Yeah. You could lace it. And just you, in? Stick, over sew it. And then when yeah. you need to take the cushion out, undo it, honestly, five minutes. Yeah. I mean, I think if it was, um, if I was making it for a little one, which I don't know if these are quite the look for a little one, but if I was making one for a little one, mm. I probably would yeah. want to put a zip or something. I think so. I think particularly if you personalise it and you put their, their name on. Message from June. Morning, loving the demo. If you don't want a cushion, the panel will make a lovely book bag. Oh, June, that's a good idea. Well, Wouldn't it? June. June. Great minds, great minds. <laughs> because <laughs> during the break, mm. I thought I might make a pencil case, if I can find a zip, of course. So that's I the don't challenge. And mm. a little drawstring bag out of the other... Because I've got another one that I... Oh, have you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you could easily I make have a, a surplus But you could make a tote bag. Imagine turning up to book club. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's my oh, tote bag. Oh, do you like my book? Oh, yeah, my bag, yes. Just, <laughs> just something I whipped up. So I'm going to turn the corners now. Good morning, Rebecca team. And Jules, lovely morning of demos ahead to... Uh, there is. Thank you to all on Safe Travels Home. Thank you very much, Susan. Thank you, Susan. I think it's a bit windy for you up, up in yeah, Greater further Manchester. Further north, it's like, yeah. woof. We have um, got a lovely morning of demos. We have. Um, I'm just going to be turning this through now. I'm, I haven't clipped the seams, although you can clip the seams, but I prefer, especially seeing as I've done a quarter of an inch seam and it might take a bit of squishing down and what have you, I'm not going to trim it, but I'm going to turn the corner. So if you put your thumb into the corner, press down with your finger, index finger, and then press a across and grab it all 
and then pull it through, it keeps your corners square. Oh, nice. Nice tip. Okay. That's um, dressmaker's Is corner. Hmm. Oh, what, will you press it over? So over and round. You just do all of them. Saves poking it with your scissors and making a hole. <laughs> yeah. And go, oh, got to go over it again. Yellow still in the lead. Purple is creeping up. It's like a horse face, isn't yeah. it? And in the lead is yellow, followed very closely by purple, and blue is slightly lagging behind. Blue was was the outrider to start with. I know. Blue was odds on favourite. Right, okay. But everyone who bet on yellow is clad. <laughs> so after the book club, we will be setting up um, a betting <laughs> yes. shop. <laughs> Little gambling quarter. We could do every got... morning. We could say, right, so we've got three kits on offer today. What's going to go? Place your bets. Place your bets. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. We'd have to bribe Cat to lie, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't take much, you know. No, but we could bribe her to make sure that we won. <laughs> then we could be all always. Had, we then won. we'd be had up for corruption. Ah. Oh. I should. I think we're probably in good company, aren't we? <laughs> right. Okay. So there we are. And then obviously you'll get your um, your stuffing in there. I use the toy stuffing. I use the um, eco-friendly toy stuffing. Oh, did you? I haven't got that one, but I have got this one. You can use that one. I have got the super soft toy and cushion filling, and it's nice and squidgy. This is very nice squidgy. So is there enough in here for a cushion? Yes. Um. So. Yes. That took virtually a whole one a of those. A whole bag, okay. Yeah. But you can, if you don't want it quite so firm, you can just have a little bit less. It's up to you. And then also you, we had, um, did you use the fusible wadding? That I, had I did. Here? Have you got H640? I think that's what it is. Yes, I did. Yeah. I used H640. And so... Um, so we could quilt it as well then. You could quilt it. In fact, a uh, purple one. I did a couple of quilting lines just as a nod to the fact that we're... Quilters also. Um, yeah, this is more than enough, isn't it? So this is, if you want the fusible wadding, which means it's iron on on one side, much easier to use, none of that tacking business. Um, there's more than enough there. You could, that's yeah. enough for yeah. several cushions. It's enough for the front. So the what you could do before you attach the pocket is you could quilt. Yes. Over so the on on this one, I um, just did a running stitch in metallic thread because cool. I quite like metallic. Close on that. Hold it in the middle. These panels are brand new, brand new. Not only that, oh, sorry, oh hang on, that way around, they're totally exclusive. Cannot get these anyway. So you, um, did you do that by hand? Yep. Oh, that's very nice. It's just a little bit of gold thread running gold through. Gold thread, or you could do it, go over it by machine. That looks yeah. lovely. Yeah. And we've got metallic thread on the website, should you want some for a bit of glitz I and like sparkle. I like metallic thread, love a bit of metallic thread. And but then you, you see could, the so if you put wadding behind the cushion front, you could quilt over all the books, couldn't you? Yes. Yeah, if you wanted to really make it special, you could get mm. uh, like all over. Oh, it. If it was really little... raining all weekend, <laughs> 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 all the time, or if you've got a new six eighty, yeah, and you're yeah, thinking, and you're um, thinking oh, I'm just going to spend <laughs> a little bit more time on this. You could play with it to your mm. heart's content, couldn't you? But the difference is, I don't know if you can tell very well, but oh, this yes. is very floppy, whereas this is a bit stiffer. I mean, you don't have to use fusible wadding. You can use normal, but I guess fusible just um, is easier. If you use normal, you just want some, what of this? Is this 505? Yeah. Use your 505. 505. On that's your a normal big jam. wadding. Um, put it onto the wadding, not onto the material, because if you put it onto the fabric, it wets your fabric. So if you're using 505, right. spray it onto your wadding, then smooth it, down. What if you do it on the fabric? Have you tried that? What yeah, it just wets your fabric. And does it stick? Uh, it sticks, but you've got like you've got to iron it then. Because you've got soggy fabric. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. So but you like, know how people always go, always do this, and you think why? Why? Because we've done it the other <laughs> way, didn't work. <laughs> I'm planning on doing a bag for book group with a special section for a wine bottle. Oh, yes, I'm like that. Yeah. That's up yeah. to my free roll well, suggestion, hasn't hold it? On. <laughs> up. <laughs> well, I love a free yep. roll. Look wine at that. Wine bottle. Yeah, perfect. Well, I know it's, you don't have a. Book, wine bottle. Book, wine bottle. Not that I'm advocating drinking, be sensible and blah. 
It is quarter to nine on a Monday morning and Jules is already suggesting that we... <laughs> no, I'm not advocating it. I'm just saying responsible drinking as the, whatever, I know, but whatever I the government's nice. strap line is. If you're going round to someone's house for book club, <laughs> with your cushion and like your book... Wine, what? chocolate, <laughs> gin, tonic, <laughs> slice of lemon in a um, Tupperware container. Olives. Few olives. <laughs> Actually, don't put the stuffing in, just line the bag, have it with all your provisions in there and your books on the outside. Yeah, so Same I guess what, yeah, what you could do is use the pocket, if it was a bag, and then just make it into a bag but not stuff it. Yeah. It'd be a square bag, but... Yeah. You might want to line it, but... Um, do you know what? The, the extra that you have uh, on your fabric panel, mm. you, you can probably piece a lining... Yeah. I haven't done it, so I don't know. 100%. But or you could cut it across where the that part comes to make it into a longer bag. Yeah, but I think it'd make a nice bag. In fact, yeah. it seems a shame to put that on the back when that could be a bag. <laughs> that could. It's a lot. So if we've got some lovely, um, some black or purple mm. fabric anyway. Yeah. Use that. Yeah. I know lots of you do that with our panels because yeah. the panels always have so much stuff on them. Is that loads of you go? Well, I'm going to. I'm not going to waste and that. And I'm really, using my plain yeah, fabric. You've wasted that in a. W no, you haven't. But I you know. Have in a way. But if, if you want to make your panel go, if further, you're economical, you've wasted that. Mm. On you. Yeah. So I would probably be putting the instructions on the inside. Yeah. Because you, you don't have to. No, you know, morning, Elliot. What time do you call this? Oh, I love that. So it's like ten to nine. We've all been here since six. Elliot turns up. Has he bought cakes? Mm. Did you bring cakes, Elliot? I think if you come in late, you should bring cakes. Yeah, that's your punishment. Yeah. Cake or coffee? I know, Jules <laughs> bought us cookies and he can't have one of those. That's going in No, it's not Because he's late. Yeah. Ten to nine. <laughs> anyway, Jules, that was lovely. Thank that you. Lovely. We did Thank it. So we did much. it. We did yeah. it. I know, I know. I just need some stuff in. And we've got, I'm looking forward to bows. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yes. Look, yeah, But, but it will hair. change. Mm. Mm. Watch this space. Uh, yeah. Are you I, a bow um, aficionado extraordinaire now? I think I am. Mm. Do you know what? They gave me a bow, bow maker and pom-pom makers. I'm thinking, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, all right. So I just sat there and started. I'm thinking, suddenly there was a whole room <laughs> full of pom-poms. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. I mean, I'm a bit obsessed now. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, so behind Various Jules, sizes. we've got bows. <laughs> I've got bows behind me. I've got a pom-pom. I've got a cloud with raindrops hanging behind me. Got Jules wreaths. has got wreaths. We've got rabbits. She's got bonsai trees. Now, you, you have to poetic license on the bonsai tree. If you go like that, the screen, it looks really bonsai. But mm. if you don't, it doesn't quite. But anyway. I think it's brilliant. My own bowl. I made that. About Did 20 you? years ago. Did you? And you made the pom pom bonsai tree as well. Yes. It's fantastic. We've got them <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. So, Jules, we will see you back here in another hour. Indeed. For bows and pom poms. And I, I will take my um, sewing machine with me because I'm going to try and do. To make it into a, a bag. Hack, if All I can. right. Take your machine or we'll see take you soon. Take your machine and go. So, let's start with the yellow panel, which is currently in the lead. Uh, 40, only fourteen ninety nine. You get the whole panel, which has the instructions on it. You've got the front of the cushion, the back of the cushion, the pocket, the pocket lining, the handle, and obviously, if you want to use your own fabric for the back, then you've got two cushions, haven't you? You know, two or dead, or you can make cushion. You make like the bag. You can make a pencil case. All sorts of things. If you just want to make the cushion anyway, you've got everything you need. Fourteen ninety nine. The yellow one is currently in the lead. Remember. See you, Jules. See you in a minute. These are exclusive to Sewing Street, made for us, and you cannot get hold of them anywhere else. I think that's a fantastic price. So that's the yellow one. Lots of you buying multiples of these, because like me, you can't decide which colour you like. Um, the purple one. Should say the big purple one, shouldn't it? But it doesn't. It says just one more chapter, which I think is my favourite one. Maybe that's why I like the purple one the most, because that's my favourite saying. Just one more chapter. Sometimes, if you ever like read a book where you have to almost close your eyes when it gets to the really exciting bit, because you can't bear to see if someone's going to die or something, or you know, when you're in a film, and then it's you think I just can't bear it. I can't bear to find out what's going to happen. Um, just one more chapter. So that's the front of the pocket. Then you've got the back of the... I love the back of the cushion. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Looks really stunning against the black. But again, you know, if you were very economical, you could use make two cushions from this. From Susan, can we get more of these in the future? Oh, what, more colours? More colours? Yeah, we could. Well, it depends. I don't know. If they sell out today, who knows? Who knows? Maybe we'll get inspired. Maybe they'll let me do book club. 
I've been asking them for ages if I can do book club. Let me know if you'd like to join and then we'll persuade them to do a book club. Sewing related, obviously, or knitting. And then finally, the blue one, which started off in the lead. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? Now it's not. Yeah, and the good thing about these, they're all suit to any age, boys, girls, men, women, whatever, doesn't really matter. And um, different ages as well. That's what I quite like about them because in the past, I've only really seen book cushions for children. And why we all want a book cushion? Keeps it all tidy, doesn't it? So this is the blue and I like the back of that. You've got lovely, look at the shading on the back section of that. It's really nice, isn't it? And I would, honestly, I would, if you got a friction pen and you just wrote the name of the book you liked, your favourite books, or the person you're giving to his favourite book, or the name of the book you're giving them, and then just embroider over it. We need a book club from Liz. Absolutely, Liz. Right, that's one vote. That's one vote. I have been telling them since we worked on Sewing Quarter that I would like to do a book club. Every month we could go through a book and say, and we could, and we could, um, message in you could we could put our reviews on we could make recommendations and then the next month we could all read it and then we can all talk about it so we've got one vote thank you liz that's the start um so this is the blue one and this one says shh i'm reading shh don't you hate it when people read out bits of their books to you oh. or the newspaper you think no don't i'll read it myself but if you were really going to go for it, you could embroider the names of all your favourite books, your whole library. Winnie the Pooh, Peter Pan, and all your favourite ones. Or if you're in a book club, you could put the names of the books you'd read as well, and the ones you don't like, put crosses through them. And again, all the instructions are at the top, everything you need to know. Don't forget, when you get the panel, today's day, 21st of Feb, so that you can then watch back, because Jules did show us the whole thing. Um, you can put wadding in if you want, depends. I think it's quite a good idea to put wadding in the pocket, particularly if you're thinking of putting your glasses in it or something, because just to give it a bit of extra um, stability. But you don't have to. But if you want wadding, the best thing, the easiest thing, is the fusible wadding, the H640, just because it's simpler to use. You can use other wadding, but this makes it easy. You've got loads here as well. You've got a metre by nine centimetres, more than enough, because if, if you're only doing the cushion, front the light you know the pocket you only need a little bit if you're doing the whole cushion front you've still got enough for two or three could book club sounds like a great idea rebecca thank you alison that's two votes we're nearly there how many do we need do you think i think it's great maybe i should just set one up on our fan page anyway i could send put you a list of all the ones i like and then you could all buy them and we'll read them together i can reread all my favorite i've been collecting them for years we definitely need a book club. I love the Elm Creek Quilter books. Well, they do. I'm struggling, though, because when I was thinking about doing this, um, I had them all. I'm struggling to find a supplier for them all because for everyone who hasn't read them, we need to be able to buy them so that you can get them. But it's a good idea, isn't it? I'll have a think about that. Please do keep checking out on them. They are selling very fast. They are brand new today totally exclusive to Sewing Street. And then I'll let you know by the end of the morning which one won. But currently it's yellow. Nice, but we'll let you know. We will be back, I will be back after the break with Sally Stevens with her brand new quilt design featuring two brand new fabric collections. Again, I'd like some votes to switch your favourite because Kat and I couldn't decide. I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes time. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. I've been part of the Sewing Street family now for over a year and it's been the most incredible journey so far. Some of you may already know that I like all things sewing, anything from quilting to toy making, needle felting, and of course applique, which is my favorite. The best thing about being part of the show is being able to share with you my imagination and bringing you new ideas and new designs and patterns and seeing how you interpret those designs and make your own work and then sharing your images of those is the most rewarding part for me. I'm currently working on lots of new ideas and exciting projects that I cannot wait to bring to the show and share with you all. But in the meantime, take care everyone and happy sewing. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. 
You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7 full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Sewing Streets have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account, and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one P&P all day. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there. Welcome back to Sewing Street. We have got a fantastic hour because not only have we got Sally Stevens in the house. Morning, Sally Stevens. Good morning. Morning, quick wave from Sally. Not only do we have Sally Stevens in the house, which is always great, Thank you. we have got a brand new quilt designed by her and two brand new fabric collections. And we don't know which one we like the best. <laughs> 
So we'll we'll start because Sally has made one the quilt in one of the fabric collections, and then she's going to do a demonstration using the other, so you can see them both in action. So this is the quilt. It's called the Blue Willows Quilt, and Sally's going to talk us through the design and why and the inspiration in a moment. This is using the Willows Fabric Collection by Whistler Studios for Wyndham Fabrics, which is one of the brand new um, fabrics. It's gorgeous. It all is shades of denim chambray linen absolutely gorgeous it's really lovely if you love blue fabric this is gorgeous and what i love about this is not your blue and white it's your blue and linen very subtle so in the kit for this one so that was the quilt behind sally you get the full instructions that sally's written it's got all got all the pictures lovely diagrams really easy to understand exactly how you make the blocks how you join together even how you you know you're making your hourglass glass units and cutting them up really really comprehensive she explains everything well sally is a quilt expert so these are very easy to understand and look at the price look at the price 89.99 for a full quilt and seven and a half meters that is an amazing quilt, and this is designer quality fabric as well. This is Wyndham Fabrics fabric, Wyndham Fabrics fabric, um, and it's 66 by 77 inches. Important thing, great price. So in the kit, you get two and a half meters of powder blue. That's used for um, some of the borders and the binding. You then get these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you get a meter of the base fabric. You get uh, which is this one two and a half meters of two and a half meters of the powder yep. blue a meter of the base yep. fabric yep. and then you get a half a meter of the other one two three four five six seven eight aren't they lovely so if you love blue look at that beautiful and then you get like a really that lovely natural linen beautiful chevron this one is gorgeous this looks like denim and then you've got these beautiful etched flowers, but the background of the flowers is in the linen colour. Then you've got that same fabric, but in reverse. I, I think I like it best in that reverse. Yeah. It's gorgeous, yeah. isn't it? And they've printed it, so it has a linen weave effect on the background. You've got that same um, lovely chevron, but in the blue. So you can really see the sort of indigo, denim and chambray effect of it all. Lovely, um, again, that linen background with flowers printed in the denim colour and then you've got these lovely well, like flower flower stems I was going to say they were willow but they're like vines in blue and then you've also got in the linen colour so you've got that beautiful of array of of the mixture between the linen the linen colour you've got denims you've got chambres you've got that deep indigo colour beautiful and that's everything that you need to make the front and the binding is that right? It is. And the binding as well. So because there's those two, obviously, that you've got a meter of this one that's used for the, the background areas. And then this is for all the, the borders, the powder blue. Gorgeous. That's a lot of fabric. And obviously, full instructions as well. So for 89.99, seven and a half meters of designer fab of the, the main fabrics of designer fabric. Obviously, the blue is our plain and rose and hubble blue. Um, and all of these beautiful fabrics gorgeous that's amazing and the finished quilt is 66 by 77 inches so that's big enough for a double bed it is lovely isn't it i think it's beautiful love the love the colors in that one but if you want something that's a bit more red white and blue this is moda moda brand new brand new moda bell isle um from minnick and simpson who are Two sisters do lots of design. They design fabric, they write patterns, and they also design for mode. And they have designed this collection. This is very typical of the sort of designs that Minnick and Simpson always do. Um, it's featuring beautiful red, white, and blue, but it's very floral, as well as mixing it with some spots and some stars and some stripes. It's gorgeous. Now, this is $99.99 because it's, the, it's a different fabric. It's mode of fabric, absolutely beautiful. So it is a bit more than the other one, which means it's on split pay. So if you want to spread your payments, 
interest free, you can buy this for two equal payments of $49.99. The first payment will come out of your bank account now and you will be sent the quilt kit straight away. And then next month, the other half will be taken out. Now, when you come to check out, you can choose whether you want to pay for it all in one go or whether you want to do on split pay. Entirely up to you. But if you want to spread the payments, then that's up to you. But remember, that is interest free. It's only available on this one because split pay only happens once we reach $99.99. So in this kit, obviously, you get the full instructions and they work either way, doesn't matter which colourway the instructions work for either of them. And then you get two and a half metres of cream that's used for the, the blocks. And Sally's going to demonstrate this one so you'll see what the, how the colours all work together. Then you get a metre, which one do you get me that one? Which one's thicker? That one? It's the that one. <laughs> tiny <laughs> rosebuds. Yes. Yep. So you get a metre of the one, it's beautiful, it's a lovely, really sort of deep ocean blue, blue with a tiny polka dot in, and then these little sprigs. You get a metre of that one, that's for the um, sashing. And then you get half metres of each of these. So you've got this beautiful, again, lovely ocean blue, really stunning floral print. So this whole sort of red, white and blue fabric collection, it's more red, white, blue and pink and a bit of green as well. So it's absolutely gorgeous. It feels very sort of like Jubilee, but in a pretty way. You've got this gorgeous paisley print. Love that. But it's got um, little sprigs of roses all amongst it. This one is gorgeous. This is the sort of, the background of this, it's ivory rather than white. Or well, maybe a cream, it's a warm ivory. Same as the blue one that you got the metre of, but with the ivory background, that tiny polka dot with the little sprigs of flowers. Then you've got half a metre of this one that's the same as the blue one, but with the ivory background with large, big, big flowers. We've got the um, that little sprig print again, but in the red. But I love the red, it's like a tomato red. Sort it's of beautiful. Isn't it? The rich... It's not pillar box red. No, 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 no. That no, tomato. It's quite mellow. Yeah, it is, isn't it? More, it's maybe got a bit more orange in it. Mm. But it's um like like I would go really juicy tomato red. Then the paisley again, but with the cream background. And in the red. So you've got it in the red, white, and the blue. Thank you, Elliot. It's brought me a cup of tea. <laughs> it's good when Elliot comes in, I always get a cup of tea. <laughs> And then you've got the large floral. And I like the fact you don't see it on the, uh, the ones as much. This is quite a mottled background, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's, um, yeah, it's like a, oh, how would you describe it? There are almost two or three reds. Yes, it's, in it's it. got that kind of mottled look yes. to it. And you don't see it as much. I mean, it is in the blue, the mottled background, but it shows up more in the red. It does, yeah. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight half metres of this beautiful Moda Minnick and Simpson Belle Isle fabric. Then you get a metre of the spot for the borders. And then two and a half metres of cream and the instructions. 99.99 for a full double bed size quilt. Absolutely beautiful. Now we have less than 10 available of this Moda one. Now, the Belle Isle quilt kit, we have less than 10 left. So if you want it, you really do need to check out. Five also in baskets. So if those five check out, we have only got five of these kits left and it's only 10 past nine. Now, as these are brand new fabrics, if you love the fabrics and you want more of them, because they're not all, not all of the fabrics in this collection are in the kit. So I'm gonna start with this one. Um, just for order of continuity of starting with one and starting the other. We don't have all of the fabrics in the quilt kit because we didn't need them all in the quilt kit. But if you want all of the fabrics and you want half a meter of each, there are 13 of them, you get half a meter for free. So you get, the dark blue, you then get the same print in this lovely pale blue, the chambray. Remember, these are sort of fabric um, colours, so they're denim, chambray, indigos. You get the lovely um, trellis floral print in the dark, in the indigo and in the linen. You get the chevron in the blue sort of, well, that's all the shades of chambray, indigo and denim. You get it in the, th the shades of linen. Then you have this lovely, like, tiny little bubble print. So it's like a spot, but more like little bubbles. Really lovely, low-volume fabric. It's one of those perfect fabrics for um, cutting and piecing in any direction because you can never tell. Really good for joining together. And the same thing with the, the, like, the um, like an ivory background. And then we've got the blue floral leaf print 
and the same one with the linen background. Then we've got a really small little leaf and dotty print background. And then we have the um, vine print in the chambray and the vine print in the linen with the pale blue vines. So for 83.88, you can have half meter of all of those 13 fabrics, but half one of them is free. That's amazing. Now this is brand new today. We have never shown this on air before, and we probably, I don't think we'll be getting it back. So when this is gone, it is gone. It's absolutely gorgeous. So if you love blue fabric and you love that blue and white look but you want it to be a bit more subtle a bit more antique and a bit more muted this is perfect i love that one now if you also want to buy any of them individually you go onto the website we have also got them for sale individually by the half meter so if you're thinking i absolutely love this and i want three meters of it Go to the website, put six units in your basket and you will get it as a full piece of three metres. It won't be cut. And these are only £6.99 for half a metre, which is amazing. So if you buy the bundle, they come as pre-cut half a metre each. But if there is one or two that you love and you want more of, or you just want half a metre of one of them, um, but if you wanted, say, two metres of this one, then you can buy two metres. It will come as a whole cut piece. But they're all on the website, so just go onto sewingstreet.com, click on Watch Live and scroll down and you will see it all on there so you can choose. So that's the Willows fabric. And then the same with the Moda. So we've got all of the fabrics. Now, not all of those in the kit because we didn't need them all. There's 18. It's 18. Wow, there's 18 in total. And we are giving, if you buy all 18, we're taking £15 off. Whoa. And it's all on pre-order. 119.82 means it can go into split pay. So two equal payments of 59.91. Um, you pay the first instalment now, you get the sent the fabric, and then you pay the second instalment later. You will have it sent straight away. So for 18, so if you've got a an idea for quilt that you want to make and you want all of this. You're thinking Jubilee bunting. You're thinking, I'm going to make a load of tablecloths or napkins or gift bags or something for the whole street. And I'm going to have a party. This is fantastic. They are also all available by the half metre. So you've got the lovely floral print in red, ivory and blue. Big floral print. Gorgeous. Can you imagine, say, thinking, making yourself a dress for the Jubilee or a skirt? If you want any of them just singly, but you want more, you know, you want more than half a metre, then they are available. But this is what is all, all of these are available, but they're also available with £15 off. You've got lovely spotted check with little floral prints in red. I say ivory because it's not, as, it's not bright white, it's more ivory. Love the stars. I mean, just on their own, aren't they gorgeous? Beautiful stars. And that mode of fabric is so soft. It's lovely. Um, in red, white and blue, well ivory. And then you've got this tiny little floral sprig print that's really pretty. You see, because we're putting them all together, you're not really seeing them as much individually, but even on their own, they're gorgeous. Red and ivory. And I like the fact they've put a little bit of pink in here and there. So some of the floors have got pink. This floral one has got a bit of pink background. And then in the paisley, we've got blue, and ivory and red. So that's the whole bundle, £119.82, half a metre of each, £15 off. If there are any that you want individually by the half metre or you want more of any one of them, go onto the website and they are all there. Finally, finally before we get to Sally, if you love the quilt and you've already got some fabric and you want the instructions just on their own, there they are, $9.99 for the Blue Wills, Willows Quilt. Now, these have sold very, very quickly on pre-order. We don't have that many left. So if you want just the instructions on the road, you need to put them in your basket and you need to check out. So we have all the fabrics, all the options. We've got kits, bundles, half metres. But if you've got any questions, because I know I've gone through quite quickly because we want to get onto the demo, um, please, if you've got any questions, just um, email studio at sewingstreet.com. If you want to see any of the fabrics individually or you want me to go back through anything, just let me know and, and we can run through that. Um, if there's any left, we might pop the fabrics into the 12 o'clock hour, so I've got more time to go through them, but that's if we've got any left. Anyway, morning, Sally. Morning. I went through that as fast as I could. Yeah. <laughs> 
trying to get on with the demo. Very good. Um, so, first of all, I want to know about the design and the inspiration. What made you um, design the quilt? Well, the inspiration was the fabric, actually. I was sent the fabric right. and asked to make a quilt. Okay. Which is quite often what happens. Nice. So, why it's called Blue Willows is because I got the blues the, the of the willow first. fabric. And I don't know, looking at them, it made me think of, there's a particular tree I quite like in, um, in a park in, in Worcester that's a huge weeping willow. Okay. And it's quite nice to sit under there and it drifts and sways. Mm. It's nice and shady, it's cool, but you know. And I thought, you know, that sort of reminds me of it. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, and so, and from then on, um, I was trying to create a drifting effect. So that's why, if, if, you, if you can see on the quilt, the the cream yeah, yeah, no, sort of drifts does drift. across and it's in a field which is fairly square so that was where the square mm -hmm. came from and around the edge of the, the sort of park field are all these um, paving stones, um, blo oh, block okay. paving, block mm. paving. So that's the combination <laughs> okay. really. It's stretching it a little bit. Yeah, I know, but that's the but inspiration. Yes, yes, that's right. I like that. That's it's right. nice to know the story behind the Yeah, design. that's right. And I did feel with these blues, it, they are... Fabulous quilt, Sally. Love the design. Lovely to see you too from Susie in Worcestershire. Thank ah, you. well, Susie, do you know the willow tree that Sally's talking about? Because she lives she in Worcestershire. May, she may do. She Whereabouts may is do. it in Worcester? It's actually where the council offices are. Okay. It's like a park, and yeah, I used to when I used to work near there, I used to go and have my lunch there. So there we go then. It was rather nice. Mm. It's yes. lovely to know where you find inspiration. Yes. It was the thought of the sort of drifting, the drifting swaying yeah, trees, and then the you know, as well. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and the colours are really sort of um, relaxing, mm. I find. They're not too bright. It looks quite bright on the TV screen, but I think it's a little bit more mellow. Well, it is. And I think it's because it, they are very much indigo denim, chambray. Yes. They are like natural, well, they're not, you know, they're dyed, but yes. natural fabric colours. That's right. So that's it right. is very soft. Yes. It's nicer, I think, than that blue and white, isn't it? Yeah, because it's that can a be a bit crisp, mm. but yes. And I thought it would be a nice quilt to just sort of either have a picnic blanket in the park or, yeah, or drift to sleep on your bed. <laughs> Under your willow's quilt. Under your willow's quilt, yes. So obviously I didn't, wasn't able to call the other fabric range a different name. No, but it works really <laughs> but well. But it still works, In guess. both fabrics, yes, doesn't it? it does. So if it doesn't really matter which fabric you make in it. So if you bought the instructions on their own or you made it in either of them, it works really well. Yes. But I guess what you do need is the con slightly contrasting. Yes, that's how it works light. really, is the contrast of dark and light. Okay. And also, again, if I go to the quilt, well, I'll show you a block, which might help. A block is made up of these two sub blocks, really. So that's one. Okay, so you've got a square with two a triangles. Square with, in it. With, with four, four. triangles in it. And then a four patch but with rectangles. And that is, so joined together, that is the block. That is the block. Oh, okay. Each of, of them, each of the blocks then is flipped on the next row and alternated. Across the quilt. Right, to give that. To give that sort of feeling. Thing yeah. Look. And also the sashing between the four patch mm. rectangles is the blue in this case, and between the hourglass blocks is the cream. So you get a nice contrast between the blocks. Yes. Because otherwise you, you would end up with. with sort of yeah because you've got that, that mixture of light and dark yeah and that's a bit have, too you need to have it solid up. yeah yeah oh, it's beautiful so, so where do we start then so we start as i said there is the two parts there's the hourglass block which is in this case made of two reds and two right and greens. that's where you get the dark and the light coming in with the blue one it's made of two blues darker right. blues and two creams and the four patch Rectangles literally does what it says on the tin, really. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the fabric, it's the positioning, isn't yes. it? Yes. And also because with both of them, I wanted to showcase the fabrics as much as possible. Mm. So that's why I've made big blocks. Yes, that's true. Because a lot of them have got nice big prints. On they them, have, they? especially you know, in this case, they're really they're really large prints and they work really well. Because you could end up if you'd done little tiny. Um, yeah, you blocks, wouldn't. you wouldn't see all no, the florals. 
So hopefully it, it works for both of those. So that's quite a you could you could make the the quilt in your own fabrics with small prints or large ones. But if you've got large prints, it works yeah. really well. So how do you decide then? Do you cut it all out and then when you did it and lay it all out first to decide what you're going to put where? Well, I I use a computer program, mm. so I tend to draw a sketch of what I'm thinking about. Then I put that into a computer program and then I can colour that. Right. But when, you know, for the viewers who buy this kit, when they come to make it at home, what would you recommend to get that balance? So you need, you've got 10 fabrics. You definitely need, I would say, um, a solid, a plane in the 2.5 metres to create that. Yeah, no, if you bought the kit, what I mean was if you bought the kit, how do you decide? Oh, right, okay. So what you're going to put where? I, would I have got, sorry, I was entirely <laughs> missing your question. I didn't there. explain that very well, did yeah, I? Yes, so you should do a little toffee hammer and just tap. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, I'm getting you confused. Because it's really important that you get them. Yes. So you get them in the right place to get that look. And fortunately, I've got a sketch diagram uh, in the pattern right <laughs> which, marvelous which tells you which fabric goes where okay okay so oh so, oh, right see i looked at that i didn't so once you know what all your fabrics are then you just number them and then yes, you make sure right. you get them all in the right way yes so Fantastic. the the frames of the hourglass block are in fabric one which is right. the 2.5 meters then there's half a meter of all the others and you can then choose yourself, but you need two of the darker colour uh, okay. and two of the lighter colour for each. Yes, yeah, so as long as you follow block. this as the light and yeah. the dark. Right, now this makes sense, because that's what I was thinking is, how would you work out? Or would you get to the last <laughs> block and go, oh, I've got any blue oh, no, you know. I'll put it all in the others. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm being a bit thick there. No, yeah. no, I just don't think I explained that very well. <laughs> yeah, so I've explained to you which, which fabrics are used for which thing. Right. Got it. That's okay. all making sense now. Right. Good, good, good. So we start off to make... Do you cut everything first? Um, Are you a pre-cutter in advance? Or I tend to... Mm, no, I tend to cut and make one block mm. and just make sure it's doing what it's supposed <laughs> to do. <laughs> yes. Obviously, I do that when I'm testing it mm. anyway. But when I actually come, because I mean, this is lovely fabric. They're all lovely fabrics. And if you make a mistake, you know, it's a bit like, oh, no. Oh, no. And I've you, cut out everything now. Yeah. You will have plenty of fabric, though. There will be a little bit left oh, okay. over of, of most of them and also of the, the, the cream. I mean, not yards of it, but, um, but you know, yeah. enough. So if you just should make a mistake, it's not a problem. Um, so once you've made one block, do you then then I would pre-cut the lot. So I do so my usual on. thing of, of cutting out and labelling. So those say are the frames, those are the rectangles. I've got some cornerstones. So I'd cut out those right, okay. then and then sew them together. Because I tend to chain piece when I'm sewing. And if you've got all the pieces cut out, you literally just grab them and keep and just keep yes. going. So yes. chain piecing for anyone that doesn't know is basically you sew one seam and followed by another seam another seam another seam for example be quite nice yeah if you've if you've got time to show that because i know a lot of people talk about chain piecing and when i first learned it it took me a while because i'd never really seen anyone do it yeah and it, i understood the principle but I'd never actually yeah we can it. we can easily demonstrate that it basically just means that you sew lots of patches together mm. without stopping you can stop but you don't need to stop <laughs> Without any stop. Stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> and, and what happens is because you're just sewing and sewing and sewing them together, mm. and I will show you, you don't waste much thread. Right. Because a lot of the newer machines now have thread cutter, mm. which helps because it only chops a little bit of thread off. But if you have an older machine, even a sort of hand crank one, you can still do chain piecing. And then you cut them all apart when you're finished and you've hardly wasted any thread mm. because I think there's nothing more um, more annoying because I've got some older machines that don't have thread cutters. You keep pulling that out yeah, that's and true. cutting a bit off and you might have lost three, four, six inches of thread. And time. And time, yes. And even if you snip it with scissors, you've got to leave a length, otherwise the machine doesn't yeah, like that's it. True. So chain piecing, which I will show you. In fact, I could show you that. Bit. Well, it'd be quite only because I kind mm. of had to 
work out how to do it. I was never really sure how close do you put them together. Oh, I, I almost bucked them up. Okay. Yeah, so I almost bucked them up. Then. Yeah. This is actually in my interest because I'd like to get the expert to show me exactly how to do this. It's not about anyone else. So interesting to hear a designer's inspiration. It is translated in a beautiful quilt. Lovely to see Sally from Collecting Modes. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I always want to know because these designs, they don't just sort of happen. It's not just, no. you know, there is usually an inspiration behind it. We all need to go to Worcester now and sit under the willow yes, tree. under the willow tree. It's really so crowded. Like this time next year, we'll all meet for a picnic. <laughs> What do you reckon, Sally? Gorgeous quote. I've ordered the pattern. Would be beautiful with Liberty or William Morris. Yes, yes. it would be. Yes. It's, so it's a bit of your log cabin that you've got to have that dark and light. Yes, it is. Yeah. Mm. It just creates that sort of, yes. I think it's slightly, because oh, I forgot to mention as well, there's like a, a sort of a stream thing in the park. Oh, well. there's a stream. <laughs> yeah, you missed the stream. I missed the stream. <laughs> That's the stream. It's probably flooded now. Yeah. So, right, where are we? I'm going to do the rectangles first. Is that the one you would start on? If you're a, a complete beginner, mm. and, th and this, I think, is suitable for confident beginners, not so much because it's difficult to make, but because it's big. Yeah, OK. So yeah. if you can make one block and then go, did that, then that, you're just yeah, doing the same true. thing again. So if you've done a bit of sewing before, but you've never attempted a quilt, and you think, oh, right, this is the time, yeah. then this is yes. perfectly achievable. Because the blocks are so large mm. that it really grows very quickly. They're 12 inches oh. by 18 inches. So, yeah. And there's only 20 of them. So, you know, so some of my bad. quilts have had like... A, no, you just make 100 of those. Oh, no. You know when it says cut 144 two-inch squares? Yes, you think, I think, oh, no. <laughs> just? What do you mean, just? <laughs> You can't, I mean, I will show you some, some cutting techniques as well, but let's just say, I'm, I probably haven't got these in the, in the, in the order, I, hang on, let's just get it right. <laughs> that one, and that one, and then that one. And it's all got numbers, it's brilliant, because I thought yes. you'd have to have different configurations oh, no. for every one, this, but no. No, they're, they're all identical, every nice. block is the same. Um, Which is amazing, because they don't actually look like that. That's, because well, of that's your part of the idea, yes. Love it. Yes, and it gets, sort of keeps the eye moving. Mm. You could put all the blocks the same way around, but then I think it just looks a bit flat. Yeah, not quite get as that good. Stream, willow. No, that's right. Stream, willow, <laughs> park. <laughs> oh, I know, I'm going to. I've got friends who live in Worcester, so I'm <laughs> gonna, next time I'm there, the day we do the park, I want to sit under the willow to tree. <laughs> Mind you, if it's still there after this... I know, it might be flooded. Storms. Well, the town where I live is flooding today. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, not the town itself, um, but a road between our town and the, oh, and the next it? one. Oh, is it? Yeah. I hope yeah. you know which way you're going back then. I don't need to go that far. Oh. I'm, I'm at the top of the hill on the other side. Always live on the top of a hill. <laughs> top tip. No, the I town... I live on the top the, of a hill. Yes. Not by accident. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> the river is, is, well, very close to us, mm. but it's down a... I don't know, about 80 foot Fantastic. slope. So <laughs> if the church spire gets covered, we're in trouble. That's about the size of it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but you see on the news when the um, church spire fell off the church in oh Wales. No. And somebody was videoing it as well. It was <laughs> quite awful. I'm so sorry for them. So, now I would, oh, I should use my quarter inch foot for this. We're out of sequence here, but not to worry. I'll just swap that. Yeah, that's how confused you. <laughs> So oh, the quill kits are currently neck and neck. Oh, excellent. Mm. Well, I, well, we couldn't decide. When I saw the blue one that Sally had made, I went, I love that one. Absolutely love that one. And then she brought out the mode of red, white and blue. And the, oh, I love that one as well. <laughs> well, I had to wait a bit for this one. So um, I'd made the blue one. I didn't know what the other one was going oh. to be. So it could have been anything. So it was fantastic. <laughs> it I did thought, work. Oh, yeah, so the mode is the main graphic that's the KM6647. And then the, the Willows blue one is the one that's on the right, LC6634. Okay, so I'm Changing going to through. sew these with a quarter inch seam. Okay. When we come to the hourglass blocks, to begin with, we don't need the quarter right. inch seam. So. Hang on, am I plugged in? Oh, I've got the wrong foot pedal. <laughs> I'm pressing a foot pedal that isn't plugged in, but this one is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that would be Jules' machine. There's a lot of things down here. I know, there's a lot going on down there. So I always Burn start marks. off with a little bit of scrap fabric. Oh, okay, so that's right. That's yep. nothing to do with it then. That's nothing to do with the actual pattern. Yes, yeah, so that's. But it's a good way to start. Okay. Now I don't it, do that. They I've learnt now. It's, it's not so us. important if you're just sewing straight lines. But once we get to the 
hourglass block. Okay. It's quite important. So we're going to sew a blue one what and a red they one. They call that piece of fabric something, don't they? Is it um, like I call donkey? them leaders and enders, but some people call them donkeys. I know. What's that about? I don't understand why. <laughs> don't know. Don't know. Anyone knows why. No, I've heard them If I don't donkeys, know, I don't like to say it. Just I never really understood why. <laughs> But yeah, I was always told they're called leaders and enders. And Makes more sense. Headers and footers. Headers and footers, yes. <laughs> and if you've got, if you use big enough pieces, although they're kind of waste, the way I'm using it, you can actually then make more little blocks out yes, of them, them together. Oh yes, we don't throw much away. So I'm going to sew these two rectangles together. And this is the quarter inch seam. Okay. And then when I get to the, more or less the end of the fabric. What, like a quarter of an inch? You can just go over a couple of stitches. Right. Then you go for, what have I done there? Not one of those, and a cream one. So you haven't moved your fabric, you haven't pulled any thread out. Right. We're going to slide that as near to the needle as you can. Oh, okay, so you leave your needle down in the previous fabric, lift your foot. You can leave it down in the gap between, which is what I've done. So okay. you've just got a couple of stitches in between. Oh, oh, so you leave the needle down in the gap. In the gap. Right. You can, I mean, you could leave a centimetre gap, you could leave a millimetre oh. gap, but I just tend to leave a couple of stitches because then it comes, when you come to trim it apart, you don't accidentally Yeah, you see, I think I leave the needle down in the previous fabric and then often the next fabric sort of pulls up and I have to up. hold it down. Yes. But if you do it this way. This way it doesn't. I mean I you can see it's flat as there was a good reason to ask flat as flat. So we just carry on. Oh. Yeah, because mine curls up and I have to hold it down. But if you leave the needle no. that makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. And you're making it up. Yes, I mean I've done it myself and you end up trying to sort of push the next yes. one through and it, it, it bunches mm. up. And then you end up with it too tight and you Yes. Yeah. So when you're making the whole quilt like this, you can now do all of them. So I would now all do of them. all of them. So I'll just keep doing all of the blue and cream ones, all of the blue and red ones. Yeah, perfect. Right. And then you've got them all done. And then they're all done. And it does make a lot of difference in terms of the time you spend. Mm. And then when it's done, and you'll end up with a, you know, like a bunting. A bunting. A bunting <laughs> of them. And you just cut. And then you don't have to cut off thread ends either. No. So you've got little tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, I can see that. Brilliant. Just snipping. You don't need to trim that any closer. So that is your rectangle blocks, which I'm going to press. And I put in the instructions to press to the dark side. When we come to the hourglass block, we will need to, to slightly change that. Okay, but on this but one, for this to one, the dark side. To the dark side. <laughs> it's a posh iron, isn't it, this? Yeah, it's rechargeable, so you can take it off the base. Oh, can you? Or you can leave it on the base and it changes base and it cha um, charges up again. I'm looking for Message a new one. Sarah. Good morning. It's called a donkey because they carry your thread from the start to finish, making the sewing journey easier. Oh, now we've learned ah, something. Thank you, Sarah. See, I've always wondered. <laughs> That's why I've never done it because I've no idea why it's called no, a donkey. No, and you're thinking about, you know, I'm saying something and I shouldn't. Yeah, well, there you go, because it carries your thread. <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I, I, knew, I knew somebody out there would know. We <laughs> had no idea. Yes. The donkey. No, I mean, how long have I... Well, I've been sewing for donkeys, but <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. There are less than 10 of the Moda kit available now, no. if you want one. Yeah, we haven't got any of those on the website, but we used to... We, did, we do stock them normally, but they're really good because they're rechargeable, so if you need to take them somewhere else... Well, I'm in the market for a new. Well, there you go. They are really iron. nice as well because they've got like copper sole plates. So they're really yeah, that's not like the look of. I mean, look mm. at that. Whew. And then you, there's a switch on it on the side where if you just flick the switch, then it comes off the base. Yeah, that. <laughs> you have to remember to put it back, otherwise it oh, yeah. obviously runs out. <laughs> but eventually, it will run out of juice. And you have to put it back. You don't have to put it back between every go though. But it's quite oh. nice to, you know. Yes, yeah, yes, definitely. Because I have um, an extra long ironing board. Mm. It's actually rectangular. It's not like a shirt board. And um, for 
particularly for pressing quilts. And if you're sort of wrestling with the cord yeah. from one end to the other. You need one of them. One of those. Hope you're listening, Paul. Yeah, Paul. <laughs> Can you get some more? <laughs> I'm sure they must be on orders, just I know we've run out of stock at the moment. So now we've got our two, in this case, rectangles joined mm. together. We've got pressed to the dark side. Yeah. And that one pressed to the dark side. So when we put them together, just to join them, the seams will nest together. And that means you've got one seam going that way, mm. one seam going the other way, and the ridges make a sort of lock. So th I'm rubbing that quite hard and they're not coming apart. Oh, okay. Okay. And that's called nesting your seams. And do you just rub them to get them together? Just rub them to get them together. And then normally what I do, sort of belt and braces really, is put a pin in the fabric about an inch from the end and bring it up through the actual stitch line. Oh, okay. And if you check on the other side that you're also through the stitch line oh, on that side, okay. you know that those are in the right in place. The right place. Oh, okay. If there's a slight mismatch, you will, will end up with your points not quite joining. And I, I do like I do like nice points. <laughs> I do like yes. nice points. Nobody will be checking that closely, but you know, if you if you attempt to have them, you've got more chance of meeting up. Well, I wouldn't criticise any missed points, and probably if you zoom in, you might find one or two here. Mm. But um, I was think if you try, if you try, then yes, <laughs> it'll be close. And if you know a, a good way, a fairly reliable mm. way of doing it, and I then like the pin make... idea. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. try that. So now I've learned the proper way to do the pin piecing. I always have to use a stitch ripper to hold my fabric down. Don't have to do that anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and then. Um, Remember, Sally is a quilting expert. If you've got any questions, yes, please do. Just message in; she'll be able to sort them please out for do. you. So there you go. I've got my four. Okay, so that's the paving slab together. section. Yeah, that's my pavers. The pavers. <laughs> and I always press. I should have mentioned before when I've sewn a seam, even if you've sewn dozens of them, dozens of them, I always press the seam as it was sewn, so with the fabric still right sides together. And that sets the thread into the fabric. It sort of beds mm. it into the fabric. So when you fold it to to press again, so with this one, I guess it doesn't matter tin. which side you go. It doesn't really matter, and we'll come to that when we come to the hourglass fabrics. But I'm becoming a fan of pressing seams open. Oh yes, yeah, I. Whenever I do that, I think, oh, this is naughty. I shouldn't be doing this. Well, I used to think that. Because everyone goes, oh, you shouldn't press them open. And I then I think feel that really was bad when I do it. Yeah. But if you imagine, so if, if now I've got those pressed open, I've got four layers of fabric yeah, there. Yeah, in the middle. Plus two, plus another two. So there's eight layers there. If I do it that way, I've got something like 12 or oh, okay. more. Now that's fine, it's not a problem. And if you are machine quilting afterwards, you just may find it's a bit of a bump as you go over yes. that. If you're hand quilting, it's a pain. Yeah, you won't get through. Yeah, it. it's it's just it's just not as easy. Mm. So I'm I'm I am coming coming more to, along to a press to seam open. Press seam open. I know, but you know how you sort of people often say you never do that, and then you feel really bad. Oh, well, there is no such thing as the quilting police. <laughs> Thank goodness. What happens in your sewing room stays yeah. in your sewing room. <laughs> Particularly what's on the back of a quilt. Yes, nobody yes. Will know. Because a, a lot of people still would say, oh, you must pull your threads and then you sew them in at the end. You are joking, life is far too short. I don't do that either. I reverse stitch. I, so I do if mm. I'm doing something that might pull and tug and I do at the beginning and end. of No, of when I'm quilting. Quilt. Oh, when you're quilting. People, you're supposed to when you machine quilt, yeah. not reverse stitch. You're supposed to oh, well, I do. tie the threads through to the back. Oh, no. no. I reverse stitch. Yeah, I reverse stitch. And, yeah, no. We should have quilting confessionals, yeah. shouldn't we? What do you do that you shouldn't do? I admitted last week for stitching over pins. Don't tell anyone. I try not to, but occasionally I have done. Mm. Um, <laughs> but but you usually don't do it too often because no. either the pin snaps or your needle snaps and then you think, oh, why did I do that? I know. <laughs> you can, if you, if you need to sew over pins because you're doing perhaps a curved yes, seam or that's something. that's what I was saying is that yeah, I do put them in vertically. Then I would sew as best you can on the 
fabric. But then if you're coming near a pin, hand turn. Oh, right. No, I just sew over them. Slowly. That's, but, but that was my quilting you're confessional. <laughs> you have to have, everyone has to have a confessional. <laughs> yeah. So there you go, that's our rectangles block. Brilliant. And we're going to make 20 of those. Now then, this is the hourglass, hourglass block, which, when it's made, looks like that. It's lovely, isn't it? Because it looked originally it was like it was a red triangle and a white triangle, but it's because it's, it's two reds one, together. It, but it gives two. it a really nice effect. Yeah, yeah. Because you've got you're using fabrics from the same collection. You've got the same background and the same base. Yeah, it's lovely together. Yes, yeah, so I think that's um, that's always helpful. Again, if you're a beginner, but if you aren't using kit fabrics, this is with any pattern. A lot of people say to me, "How, how do you know what colours to put together?" So I always say, and, and this is this is my confession, <laughs> right? Is it as bad as pins. <laughs> yes. Oh, I think it's better than that. <laughs> right. You've got a piece of fabric mm. and you really like it. I love that. And I want to make a quilt with that in it, but I don't know what colours to put with it. Mm. Well, somebody very clever called a designer. <laughs> <laughs> Who has such abilities. Who has this ability. <laughs> and I can't say that I do. They no, would have put colours together with mm. expertise here. So you would pick out a cornflower blue, a, a, a sagey green, a darker green, a peach, a pink. So you just copy? Just copy. What they did? Yes. So Fantastic. I suppose, in a sense, that is a cheat, but it means you're using somebody's expertise to help you. Mm. So if you go to, to a quilt shop or a um, fabric shop and you say, right, I'd like to match some fabrics with this for making a quilt with, then you can take that up to the vaults of fabric mm. and the and shop can, yeah. owner will almost certainly be ch chuffed to bits to help you and you can match the fabrics. So rather than thinking, oh, I wonder if orange will go with this, you just go, no, I'm just going to choose the colours that are in there. Yes. That's yes. brilliant. You, I mean, if you want to put an orange with it, go ahead. Mm. But, but I mean, for example, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put those mm, together, no. you know? But, the, but if you're not using the whole of a fabric collection. Yes, yeah, so if you, you don't need to use <laughs> okay. the whole of a fabric collection if you haven't got one or if you've only got part of the collection. Right. Yep. Yeah. So ha hourglass. Hourglass. I hope we've got time to do this. <laughs> it's because we've been chatting. I know. It's terrible. It's only two blocks. It is only two blocks. Only two blocks. We've yes. done one. We've done one. <laughs> <laughs> and they really go together quickly if you're doing that chain yeah, piece. Yeah, that's true. I mean, really I've learned how to chain piece. Quickly. So, I'm using different fabrics here that, that's it, than what I've made up, but it gives you an idea. So we've got a cream. And we've got... So no triangles? Two squares? Two squares. Nice. Large squares, nine inch I think they are. And what we do is we put them face, facing together, right sides together. And then with a ruler, which I had somewhere but it doesn't really matter. You can have that one on the floor, there's one rotary uh, ruler there on the floor. Oh yes. I think I'm going to sneeze, so stand by. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the lights. It always makes you sneeze. If you're going to sneeze and you look at the light, I don't know why. Some Maybe people say it does that if they look at the sun, but I don't know to do it really. So from one corner to another, we draw, in my case, a pencil line, but it could be an erasable marker. You won't see it. When we finish sewing, it will not be seen. So you don't need to worry about that. Swap the foot again, because we don't need the quarter inch foot for this. Okay. In fact, it's best if you don't. I'll explain why. We're going to sew what's called a scant quarter inch from either side of that right. pencil line. A scant quarter inch means it's narrower than a quarter inch. But you don't have to say, oh, it's got to be uh, two sixteenths or anything mm. like that. It just needs to be less than a quarter right. inch. If With mine, I'll show you, um, the, f the squares are actually a, a, a little bit generous, so that when we come to trim it down, if your quarter inch isn't quite accurate, it isn't quite scant. Oh, okay. So you will have plenty. All right. But th the, if you see scant quarter inch written on any pattern, and it's a familiar term, then that's what it means. So you sew 
a bit less than a bit less than a quarter of an inch either side. So you don't even really need to measure it. Now, you probably would want to um, to pin. I'm not a pinner, you see. So it's bad habits, bad habits. Not a pinner. No. My sewing's open. No, oh, no. <laughs> you can come and join my sewing room. Yes. <laughs> but again, if you're a, if you're a beginner or or, or I am know, a super pinner, actually. Oh, Maybe I'm that's not. why I sew over pins. I'm not. Pin everything. I'm not, and even when I'm doing circular piecing, which I've done demos before in the past, I'm a glue pinner. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, no, I pin it, pin everything, pin it and press it and over press it and press that it That looks like a pin that I've sewn over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a banana pin. So there we go, a couple of pins in there. Now, if you've got the ability to move your needle across slightly to the right, if, you've, if you're on a quarter of an inch um, foot, you've got a quarter inch marker on your foot, just bring it over a little bit to the right, which you can do by adjusting them. Okay. And then we're going to sew. And that's where I should have started with, with, with one of those donkeys, because when you start on a point, yeah, it, goes it does tend to bunch up. So it's a good idea to use those. Now we're going to call, we can call them that now. We, we know call why. them that now. <laughs> <laughs> Not headers and footers. People are probably saying, you call herself an expert. <laughs> she just admit, I made Sally admit to her quilting confessionals. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So the instructions are available on their own for $9.99. And also if you get either of the kits, but they are very, very limited now. Both of them, the Blue Willows and the Mode de Belle Isle one are, are both very limited. Um, $89.99 for the Blue Willows, that's the one on the right, and the Belle Isles kit is on the left. And a lot of the little tips I'm telling you are in the instructions. Oh, okay. So. so if you get your instructions, they'll all be in there. One of them is please read for all the instructions. But I know a lot of people record the, yes. the you know, watch it back on YouTube, so. Okay. So I've got those two triangles sewn together, uh, squares sewn together. Pins. Press. You could almost do with like a circular. Yeah. Like a sushi. Oh, I know what you mean. Yes. <laughs> With an iron well, one going of those past, desks that has like a round bit so that you could have your sewing machine here and then you're yeah. pressing that. That'd be quite useful. Wouldn't yeah. It? I've got an L shaped sewing unit, which is quite useful. Mm, so that is quite good. But um, So we've pressed that. We now need to cut it apart on that drawn line. So, what did we do? Oh, dear me, I'm having a right old. Well, you just haven't got the space you used to. You need to get used to your space at home. I know, I know. Also, I'm usually sitting down when I'm sewing. <laughs> I always stand up to cut. Yeah, no, I do, but um, not sew. But not to sew, home. no. So, we have got one I have made earlier in different fabrics, and I have pressed that to the light side. Right. The one I've just sewn, I'm going to press it to the dark side. Oh, so you do two of these. So you need one well, you obviously in one colourway and you need one right. in, the, oh, in a different colourway. So you've got your four, okay. it'll say on the, um, the instructions, mm. it's fabric two, three, four and five. Okay, so I've pressed this particular one to one side and it tells you this in the instructions. That's pressed to the light side. This one is pressed to the dark side. Oops. Now I'm going to put these right sides together. And you would think you've got to do, uh, yeah, you'd think you've got to do white, red, white, red, okay. but no, no. Oh. Put the reds on top of each other, the creams on top of each other. And then you will see, again, because I've pressed them in opposite directions, the seams nest, nest again. Okay. So this is where it does make a difference to press the right way. It does. To be honest, of all the, the tips, really, I'd say, I mean, 
slow down is always a good one if you're struggling, you know, just slow down. Slow down. It's no race. But I think pressing is the most important mm. thing you can do. I press every seam. I press it when it's flat. I press it when it's opened out. And I keep pressing. And I think it helps with your accuracy. OK. Just take the time. Just take, take the time it. to press. Yes. Yeah, because that sort of seems like mm, boring. Um, Kathy has asked what Make the Willows fabric is. It's Wyndham. <coughs> for, um, Whistler Studios for Wyndham Fabrics is the Willows quilt. It's a lovely fabric. They're both, they're both mm. lovely fabrics. So we've got a red to red, cream to cream. We now draw a pencil line at right angles to the seam. <coughs> OK. Yeah. And we're going to sew that with a, a scant quarter inch as well. Either side of that pencil line. Just make sure that's not flipped over. I'll tell you another little tip in a minute. Are we OK on time for that? <coughs> the Willows has now gone into the lead. They were neck and neck. <laughs> 89.99. And remember, that is a double bed size quilt. Everything you need, except for the backing and the wadding, but the binding fabric is in there and everything else. 89.99. That's why you've got the two and a half metres, because there's quite a lot of blue in the frames. Yes. But then you've also got your um, your binding, now, which like I think is important because I like the binding to echo. Yeah, well, it's nice, isn't it? Because that really does. It picks up the binding is picking up the the edges. It is a bit like a picture frame. Yeah, it's hard. Yes, it's, it's nice as well if you buy the kit because you've chosen the colours, so you know it works. Yes. It's quite hard otherwise, isn't it, to decide. What colour would you put there? Because on that, oh, this, that one you've got, oh, the cream on the Moda one you've got around the edges, haven't you? It's pretty. Yes, yes. And I've used just one of the blues for the cornerstones. Yeah. And that one and this one. So you'll have plenty for that. Because they're only tiny. So you've sewn quarter of an inch either side of that line. Sewn quarter of an inch either, either side of that line. Same as before. I'm going to trim across that so the things we made first that that's a half square triangle right we're now making quarter square triangles okay. or hourglass blocks i won't press it for the moment oh that's amazing See? and you've got another one made as well at the same you've time. got two at the same time so when you look at it and you think, I've got to cut out triangles and join them together, no, you haven't. No, no. Fantastic. No. Never cut a triangle if you can avoid it. No, no. <laughs> or sew it down. And if you do, don't sew it to anything else. No, if you do have to cut triangles, use some kind of starch equivalent spray. Yeah. And don't keep touching it. Just leave it alone. <laughs> Just don't even look at it. No, don't even look at it. So, and then as you might imagine, because I guess we're getting a bit tight for time here, we then mm. have, it tells you which orientation for the block oh yeah so you make sure yep. you, so you make all your blocks yep. and then sew them all together so with the one behind me you have all the dark blues on the right hand mm. side at the top and with this one it's all the reds and then so you in sew. the loader one the dark blue is only in the rectangles isn't it yes and the it borders, is, yes. And the borders. And yes okay which i thought was quite nice because the other fabrics are really nice but the blue is quite, um, it mm. does come forward. Yeah. So I think it, it might dominate a little bit too much. Whereas right. I hope in this, it, it's more of an accent rather than... By than having the dominates. red and the cream yeah. is the squares, then yes. the blue is just in the border and the rectangles. It's beautiful. So then we it just have beautiful. the little short rectangles I mean, what a stunning the bed quilt. It's a nice big one. Mm. I wanted to do big blocks, as I say, to showcase the fabrics. But then when I realised how quick it was... Mm. Um, so it's a very achievable quilt. It's very achievable. Yes. I love that. I think it's gorgeous. Well, thank you so much, Sally. I'm just going to quickly run through the kits again, because we've only got about two minutes. Sorry. Well, <laughs> but we will see you back here in an hour with you another will. quilt. Yes. A smaller one. A smaller one this time. <laughs> smaller one. But Sally will be back with us another hour with another, another quilt. But it's a smaller one. Um, so this design, brand new today. You can buy the instructions on their own if you want them. Here they are, just the instructions that are in the kit. Everything you need to know, all the pictures, very thorough, it explains everything. All the questions I asked are actually 
all answered in here and all the little tips and the tricks, everything you need. It's a very achievable quilt. So if you have sewn, done a bit of sewing, you thought, actually, do you know, I'd really like to make a quilt. This is a really good place to start with. And you can see, actually, on the instructions, you can really see that stripe, can't you? Like the stream. But it's not a real stream, you know, it's slightly staggered, so it gives that sort of stream look. It's beautiful. That's the instructions on their own if you want to use your own fabric. However, if you want to make the one that Sally has made, um, this is the Willows one, which is a mixture of blues and linen coloured. And then you've got um, the big piece of pale blue that's used for all the borders. That is 89.99. So you've got seven and a half metres in total. Absolutely beautiful um, wind and fabric. It's designer fabrics. Absolutely beautiful. And the, the quilt that's been hanging behind Sally, that makes this quilt exactly. All you'll need is backing and wadding, but you, it includes all the binding and everything for the top of it as well. And I think for 89.99, that is a fantastic price for designer quality fabric. Um, if you'd like to make the Moda one that Sally's been demonstrating with, again, you get full quilt instructions. Da -da, and then you get all of this beautiful seven and a half metres again. So you get um, the ivory that's used for the background and then you get all the two and a half metres of that, a metre of the border fabric and then all these beautiful reds, whites and blue. And these are all the fabrics that Sally has used and been demonstrated with. They're not any other ones. They are exactly the ones that she's been using. Beautiful. Gorgeous. You do need to check out your basket. So there are a lot of you that have it in your basket um, and, and it's not yours until you check out. And we've got a lot of you in there and, and we don't want you to miss out. Also very popular has been the Willows Mega Bundle. So in this you get 13 half metres and they're pre-cut. So you will get half a metre of each. This is from the whole collection. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's lovely. You, you can see the indigo and the denim and the chambray and the linen in there. Um, but it's lovely because it's a very subtle, it's like your blue and white, but an antique -y version of it. Now, if you buy the mega bundle, you will get half a metre free. So you pay only pay for 12 of them, £83.88. Lovely. Um, if you would like the whole bundle of the Moda Bell Isle fabrics designed by Minnick and Sampson, because there are some fabrics that we didn't put in the quilt, but that we've got anyway. So there are 18 half metres of this whole, all of the patterns are in the red, ivory and blue. So you've got paisley, small, small florals, you've got stars, you've got um, like a checkered background, large floral here, and then you've got um, dot, dot, like a small polka dot, and then floral prints there, all of them there, 18. So, so this is Moda Bellau fabric by uh, Minnick and Simpson, who are um, two sisters who does often design fabric for Moda, as well as creating their own patterns. They have designed this, it's absolutely stunning. It's obviously, it's Moda, it's beautiful. Um, £119.82, you've got 18 there, but you will save £15, which is a whole metre, so you're getting two of the half metres for free, save £15, which is a lot, so if you want the whole collection, it's absolutely stunning, isn't it, £119.82, that's available on split pay as well, because it's over the 99 so if you want to make it, just to spread the payments, it doesn't cost you any extra, we don't charge interest for that. 59.91 will be taken out of your account today, we will send you all the fabric and then the other 59.91 will be taken out on the 21st of March. The second amount will be, the second half will be taken out. You could have finished your quilt by then, but if you're thinking Jubilee makes, thinking you want to make some, you know, this is a brilliant collection to have, brilliant for bundle. Um, we have got um, instructions for an FPP Union Jack cushion. This would be absolutely perfect for it. Now, all of the fabrics I've been talking about from the Moda and from the Willows, they are also all available by the half metre. So if there's one of them that you love, you only want half metre, but you can buy that. If there's one you love and you think, yeah, I'm going to make my Jubilee dress with that. I absolutely love this red star and I need three metres of it. Put that number of units you need in your basket. Right, but in the wind, just to warn you, if you do want any of the wind and willows by the half metre, we don't have any more than three metres of each of them because they've been massively popular. So if you want some of that fabric separately, go through, have a look on the website, go on to sewingstreet.com, 
click on watch live all the fat and then scroll down all the fabrics are there so if you want anything i would do it quite quickly put it in your basket and check out and then you can guarantee these shorts anyway the willows is 6.99 a half meter the moda is 7.49 for half a meter which is amazing for moda you don't often get it for 7.49 anyway Anyway, whoa, we've run out of time. So I'll see you back in a couple of minutes' time. I will be back with Jules, who's going to be showing us all about bows and pom-poms. And we have the most fantastic bow maker for you. First time on air. So I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes' time. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando, and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps, and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, Click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store.
And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. to Sewing Street for the bow and pom pom hour. Who likes my headband? Look, Jules made me a bow headband. Now, love bows, love pom poms. Very difficult to make on your own though. Well, we could all tie a knot and tie a bow, but it's quite hard to arrange and get right. And we can all use two square circles of cardboard to make a pom pom, it takes hours. However, we have all the gadgets you need. We have this amazing bow genius that makes bows, that makes you look like a genius, fantastic. We've got two different sorts um, and we will be going through them. And we have got lots of pom-pom makers as well for making gorgeous pom-poms. So this is all about pom-poms and bows. But firstly, Jewel set herself a challenge to make the reading book cushion into something else. So what did you do, Jules? <laughs> so it was definitely something else. Made it so <laughs> something <laughs> else, just something else. Bless. The only uh, zip that I could find was an open-ended zip, so I've just backed it. But you have now a ribbon pocket. Yeah. And a drawstring. Oh, that's lovely. So that's you can do that with. Yeah. So this the was another panel. panel. Yeah, but you could use the back of the there cushion to make yourself a little drawstring bag. And Jules made that while we were with Sally. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. That's so. very impressive. <sighs> Flew without a pat. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. That bad. Lovely. <laughs> but it's seat. just it's so. so that you can see something different. Really, I think it's quite nice if you if you want to go off at you know. So if you I bought do the book the panel <laughs> at eight o'clock, those that's something else you can do with. If you didn't. Go on to um, watch live on the website and you will see all the three panels for the book comes there and you can buy yourself one. Anyway, let's talk about bows. Oh, no. So I've got I've got two different bow makers. Yes. I was um, very excited. Sorry, the big box. Oh, I thought it was my glasses on my head. <laughs> sorry. Yes. <laughs> Made you wear something yeah, that you're I not used to. And sorry. I'm trying to put my headband on my eyes and it's just not working. <laughs> no, so the bow genius. Now what what happens with these when you get it out so when you get it out you've got it in a so little a carrying lovely case. box nice box Look, carrying case with window we like we like i've got one i've got one it's very pretty you've got so one this is what happens when you open the box so when you get it um, instruction leaflet and everything is in a little uh, the some of the components are in the cellophane bag uh, okay. but you've got like a an opening section here it might be a bit stiff when it's new but it just slides open oh do you have to open both of them yeah so when you pick it up if you haven't opened it, oh, okay. it doesn't fall apart right and then when you take it apart you have got components yes separate. i have a gray base yep with spikes yep and I have a plastic bag full of purple things. So I put mine all in and you ah, can see how they right. fit in. Okay. So they do two different things. You won't be using everything all together, but I found that's quite a nice way to store it and it fits back into its little Oh, I see. So instead of putting them back, if you put them, pop them all in the thing. Yeah, you don't lose them all. Um, but you will okay. either use it as Rebecca's got it now. So it's Sorry. just the, the piece in the centre. Okay. Or you'll use it without the piece in the centre, with all the pieces. And they just that's so they just pop in they like that. They pop in, um, but Easy. the piece in the centre. Mm. So you'll see on these there are two different sizes, so you can't go wrong. You'll soon know which is the correct size, and you'll also notice that in the front piece you have got a yes. needle. Oh, I wondered what that was. So if you just flick it towards the end, it pushes it up. It's quite spiky. So mm. do be careful with it. Leave it in there till you need it. And then the centrepiece. But it's got an eye yes. next to the point, like a sewing machine needle. Yeah. Okay. I'll show you what you need I'll to put, do. I'll put mine back in for now. And then <laughs> if you want to swap it, so you'll either use it like this mm. or you'll rotate that and unlock it, remove that piece. Yeah. So that's there. And then you'll have either the large 
all the small all spikes. All the small accordingly. So if you put the large ones in, put all four in, and you'll use them separately. I haven't used all eight sitting in there. All oh, right, so you choose, so you either use the centre thing or you use the large spikes or the small spikes. And then once you're using your spikes, you'll use your needle as well. So the little piece in the middle this has got a twist. So when you put your needle in and twist it around, that secures the needle. So, oh, so that goes in the bit that you took the pillars out of. Yes. So you've got two different ways of using it. Oh, this is brilliant. Very multi-purpose then. And it's sturdy. It's it's yeah. nice and, you know, there's no fiddliness about it. It's a nice, solid And the needle is really, I mean, that's like a needle I've never seen. Yeah. Be, be careful because it, obviously it is a needle. Yeah. But um, actually you can't, if you run your hands over the top, the needle's slightly down compared to yeah, the Yeah, it's top a ballpoint yeah. almost, isn't it? Yeah, but it, it pierces the, the yes. fabric. So... It is very sturdy, isn't it? This is brilliant. I'm loving it. Right. So, so what do we do? So if I'm, I'm just going to take these all apart. So this again. is the Bow Genius. This is the um, graphic that's on the screen at the moment. Forty four ninety nine, and you can do loads with this one. So you've either got the sort of the the big spikes, the small spikes, or the central pillars. Yeah. So, so absolutely loads. What so do we do if we're making a bow such yes. as this kind of bow? And you've used fabric. I've used fabric. Um, wow. I'm not sure if we have got the fabric panel, but this is one of our, this is our Easter fabric panel. I have that. I have that. Yeah. Yes. So um, what I've done is I had oh, two of them. Because you're making Easter bows. Yeah. I had two of them and I just cut down where I thought I'd like it. So okay. this one I've cut two. Uh, the one on the wreath at the back, I've cut three. And then the one with the... Um, uh, pom-poms on it I've cut so can you one. use any width fabric or ribbons you can yeah you can go from really tiny so this sort of width that sort of width right up to the ones that we've got here these are 10 inch oh. and you could go bigger if you you know right. if you wanted to you could have a wider so if you've got for so example you can use like quarter of an inch ribbon yeah or you can use copious amounts you probably could use I don't know I haven't 18 inch maybe mm. I haven't really tried it I've tried up to 10 inch um, but I think if you had something like organza or so lining, backs of chairs at weddings absolutely I mean look at that that would be perfect on the back of a wedding yeah, chair beautiful. or you know around a post mm. for a wedding or you know that kind of thing yeah so rather than Parties. tying something around the back of a chair make a bow yeah okay and they're really easy to put on and take off so and it's, it's only 44.99 and that's it that's that's all you oh, need it's it's well worth it it's it's um yeah you go a bit mad once i can imagine it. right so what do i do next so i'm going to use this is about two inch ribbon that okay. we've got here the first thing that you need to do is if you've got ribbon that is single-sided so you've got a right and a wrong side just be aware of that so you'll start off You'll have your tail, decide how much you're going to have your tail as, and then you pop it into the top. Now in the top, you've got like a little spring catch on there. Yeah. Can you see? Yes. Um, and that will hold everything nice and tight oh, as you okay. push it in. So you don't have to worry. It's a bit like a third hand right. uh, for you. So as you go in, just give it a little twist. So now, if my ribbon were to be single-sided, this would be the wrong side that's coming out here. Now, I might want, on here, I've got markings, so I might want a four-inch, and you think, oh, hang on, it skips to eight-inch. No, it doesn't. You can, oops, hello. Oh, <gasps> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Extra stuff. So this is How the size. How exciting is this? Is this the size of your tail? This is this is an eight inch from the center. So that's actually mm. sixteen inches of bow. Width of bow, and that's a sixteen inch width of bow. Right. So if you um, decided that you wanted longer than that, obviously you could measure it out. But um, yeah, that that is a, a double width of bow. Yes. So you decide where you want it to be. So that's a four inch. This is actually a two inch. So the the outer curve is a two inch. Okay. So you decide where. It, where you want your turn of your bow to be and then just hold it down as it comes to the center 
from the bottom, so the bottom is closest to me, from the bottom give it a twist and pull it down. So that's held there, so I can fiddle and faff with that, make it how I want it to be, and then I go to the next side. Now this is the inside, I should have done two-sided ribbon, shouldn't I, you'd see better. Um, and then that's where I want it to twist, bring it up to the centre, twist the bottom upwards, and that's that. And so that's full instructions for this are all full involved. Full instructions on there. So and there's also um, a QR code that you can zap so you can get oh, videos as well. Oh, for a nice video. Right, got it. So I'm going to do another one. So twist it up to the centre. And then final one I'm going to do and twist. So now you can fiddle around with it, decide whether actually you want those all to be four inch or whether maybe I want these to be two inch or whatever it is I want to do. So once you've done that, now we need a little clip. Mm -hmm. Where do, oh well, I'll use a, a pin for a second. But you, you might want to use a clip, it's easier. So if you hold it now and pull it upwards, don't let go. This is the important bit, hold it there. And then when you've held it there, you will put a clip in or you will get your needle straight away and sew around it. So you can either sew it now, or you can put a wire around it. Um, oh, not it. Yeah, yeah, not it. It's entirely up to you. I haven't bought, because <laughs> that's me being prepared, I haven't bought my hand needle. I've got everything else, but not my hand needle. So I'm just going what to... There used to be hand needles in the pin pot. That's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap... I'll find you one. Thank you. I'm just going to wrap it now. Now this looks a little bit messy. Don't worry about it because you can cover it over or you can decide, oh, what a star. We'll do that in a second. But you can um, decide what you want to do. So I'm just going to knot this for the moment because I've wrapped it around. Thank you, Kat. We got a box. And then pop that off. So that's my bow so now's the time you, you would just rearrange it and make it all nice and pretty how you want it to be so you just take your your loops out your tails out and then decide how long you want your tail to be so if i want those both to be about there i'm going to dovetail the tail so make it flat fold the edges so that they line up and then you want the point down inside and the tip to be the outside so you just snip across and that makes your tails and then with the piece that you've taken off what you then can do is do i quite like bows that have got a wrap around the middle yeah well these so, red velvet ones that you've done yeah that's what they look like so they? all i did with that was fold the piece oh, under see that one look. take it around that's beautiful isn't it fold the piece under and then it's just stitched at the back and then yeah. stitch it at the back and so it looks amazing doesn't it that's your bow very from, professional i think the pieces that we've got because these are on the show today uh that this ribbon's on the show yes today, it is um i think they're meter pieces yeah they are so a metre piece will make you... And we've got the red velvet one. A mm. four inch width of bow. Okay. Well, that's worth knowing, isn't it? So that you know how much you need when you've got to make 300 of them or yes, something. Yes, exactly. And, I mean, I, I've done this really quickly. At home, you'll be you'll be faffing about forever. But these, I, these, <laughs> I mean, this red velvet ribbon, that's on top oh, of all your Christmas lovely. presents, isn't it? So yeah. we've got that, one ninety nine for a metre. And the bow that I've got there, I think that was a five inch bow. Christmas presents, put them on your yeah. tree. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be, or birthday presents, any presents, you but isn't it that beautiful? Yeah. So that's just one type that's of just bow. One type now what about bow. these spiky things? So the spiky things, thing, so we're going to take that out now, take the centre clamp out, put that to one side, mm. and then I'm going to put... The, um, We've got the small spike. Are you big uh, spike? I've got big spikes. Big spike. Because I'm just going big. Put the centre. Everything fits together so well. It does. It? And there's no pushing about with it. It's mm. you know you line it up and it slots in. There's no it's struggling. Like is what I'm saying. Is, yes. It? Engineered. It's been thought out, hasn't it? I love it. This is my favourite bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
got an anorak. Anyway, so what we'll <laughs> what we'll do is we'll get a reel. Looks like stone of ribbon. <laughs> yeah. I'll get a reel of ribbon because, or you could use. I used raffia as well. It really works well with raffia. It's lovely, isn't it? You know how raffia pings back all over the place. Well, you. I'll show you in a second why it works. Like ping. Look at. We've got the raffia, 4 for a 50 gram ball. Look at that, the raffia wreath. So, um, should I do it on the overhead? Um, so, Jules has made this one. Look at that. She's got this lovely um, grey gingham ribbon. The ribbons and the raff raffia just on the wreath. That's hard, isn't it? Ribbons, raffia ribbons and, and raffia raffia on the wreath. Too many words and thirsts. <laughs> um, that's lovely, isn't it? I think Very garden centre posh. Yes, yeah. I mean, how much would you pay for that? I know I've I had the wreath trays, underneath, isn't it? but yeah. Mm. Yeah, so a lot. I'm actually going to use that ribbon. Now, I've got it on a reel. Um, I think we've got it in pieces, we... but I've got it on a reel. Okay. The only thing... Yeah, we do have that grey ribbon. Your difference is that, obviously... And we have raffia. When you've got it as got a it piece, all. you can still do what I'm going to do now as a piece, and I'll show you how. So to start off with, you pierce oh, the you ribbon. You put the needle thing in, yeah. don't you? So you pierce the ribbon, and what you'll do is you'll have it on the right side is going down towards the base plate. Then you take it up, and it's literally, you're just wrapping. So you go opposites, and as you go across the middle, you pierce it down again, just so it's going to hold it, because ribbon can be slippy. I'll try and keep my hands so out all the way around so the stone see. circle. Yes, Stonehenge. Here we go. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's quite nice. I mean, sometimes it's nice, isn't it, to do crafts like this? Oh, isn't it? Cause we've yeah. all got bits of. I mean, you could even, you know, cut fabric strips, and they have that frayed effect. So if you've got fabric scraps or salvages or the ends of things. Keep it all cut into narrow strips because well, you get a lovely frayed effect ribbon. And I think you? we've got on the show today, we've got the um, Rick Rack rotary blade, haven't we? That's another one for you to say. Yes, we do. So you, so you can use that and that will give you a sort of um, fabric roll look. And you've got your fabric rolls later, haven't you? So you can use those as well. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Perfect. No. For all those, you know, for ribbons or leftover bits of fabric or raffia, all different things, different materials. And it's... It's nice to have, to be able to do a craft that's using your fabric stuff. Zutalo, who didn't know how long the ribbon was? Fret oh. not. Fret and Z not. Because I know I've got a different colour ribbon, but this is just to show you if you have got oh, uh, so problems you, with it. Yeah. You can use all, you can join in another yeah. piece. So you just put another piece on where you mm, left so you off. So you've got a multicoloured one now. I've got a multicoloured one. I didn't try this at home. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> Oh, I like this. Not a child at all. No, this I? is brilliant. I love this. And I want then one. Come down. Oh, children would love this. Yeah. And for some reason. And I love wrapping presents. I always wrap mine in cellophane after the wrapping paper. It stops the wrapping paper rip. But I'm thinking now, if I have one of these. Yes. Oh. So when you want to finish. I put one of these on. I think this bow's amazing. Just, um, just stop where you want to finish and cut off mm. where it is so now oh what do i do what now? do we do next then jules oh <laughs> that doesn't this. look as pretty as oh, the finished no. thing so <laughs> this needle in the middle is brilliant it's such a good idea thread the needle thread the needle so it's like a sewing machine needle isn't it because it's yeah, got the eye at the huge. end and then notch your thread now i am just going to thread an ordinary needle so you might want to talk amongst yourselves for a second <laughs> <laughs> but at least right. it's got a big eye it's got that's got a big eye let's have a look at one of these ones let's uh, working out how to get them out the doodah first oh, oh and there. then you use an, an ordinary needle as well yeah because um that you can't take that off the the doodah Gold nine eagles. So these this ones. um this one is the bow genius. Brand new, brand new today. Forty four ninety nine. You've got everything you need in it. You've got that centre spiky thing that makes the bit ribbons that Jules was just showing. We've got the inner circles for the smaller woven ribbon and the outer circles. Just think of all the things you can do with bows. Bows for your hair, like this one. I can never <laughs> do it that way around. That's the one I've got here. 
tiny bows. You've got big bows that you can put on the back of chairs. So if someone's asked you to decorate something for their wedding and you're like, oh, yeah. or Christmas or Easter or people's birthdays. Yeah. All wreaths sorts of for stuff. your front door. Oh, just all sorts of things. Anything that you could ever imagine you want to put a bow on, but you want it to look really professional. Because if you go and buy these ready-made bows, they're really expensive. They are so expensive. I was looking, because doing a bit of general, mm. um, and something like this, which is literally your ribbon wrapped around a headband with a, one of the bows that we've made on it, something like that would set me back about five or six pounds. But yeah. that's a bit of ribbon from your stash. Mm. So on here, what you need to do is pop your fingers either side of the centre. So I've got my needle, I've got my fingers either side and just tease it off. Don't panic because you have got a knotted thread going through there. Ah, so it's not all going to suddenly fall apart. That's where the genius is. Now what I have found, I haven't done it here, but what I have found is you can clip this off now and thread that to your needle if you want it to. But that's far too complicated for me on screen. So. Now what you do is take your needle. Oh, right. so, you so you've use, got your first stitch. You could use, yeah, so you that's could. holding yeah, it together. I'm, I'm being a bit wasteful now just because I don't want to try and thread that on screen. Um, and just pull that through and we can clip that off in the end. And then you just literally fasten the two together, fasten them all together, a couple of stitches. Now if you wanted to, this is the point at which you can Add a button. A bu yeah, so thinking a button would be nice, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, so on my, and then you just finish it off on the top or bottom. Because I've got one, oh, I'll have to take this one off, and then I'm going to show you after having pinned it on. <laughs> but you can, while you do that. And then just trim that I'll off. I'll unpin that. Oh, no. So look, this is one of the ones that Jules made. This is her pom-pom and bow bunting. But um, look at the pink ribbon, and that's got the little button then in the middle. So this is a little one. This is using the inner, yes, the inner hen. Yes, that's using the inner one. But it works in it exactly the same way. But it's lovely, isn't it? With it, like that's so pretty. So yeah, that's. I mean, I've got a huge knot there, but I wouldn't have when I was at mm. home. And if you want to trim up this, you can just trim it down to nearly where the uh, end is, but you don't have to. So that's quite nice two coloured actually. I think that's it's better lovely. that way, isn't it? It's so gorgeous, that's that one. The other thing that you can do, as I say, you can do use your raffia. That's mm -hmm. brilliant using your raffia. Um, the other thing that you can do is something like this where you've got kind of a, a figure eight. So on that one I'll just show you Okay. So really it's I mean you, I think if one if I had one of these, I quite oh, I really do want one. Um, I'd have a go with all different things yes. first. Yeah. Try all different ribbons to see what works, what you like. But, you know, to put something like that on the present is lovely, isn't it? So with that one, all I did was, so if you take your ribbon again, and I just used one. Just thought, well, Nice on a bag do? as well, a bit of decoration. Yeah. It's a bag. Like a little it? clutch bag, it would look That's nice on. It's amazing. Forty four ninety nine for all of this. You can make all of these. And once you've got it, that's it. All yeah. you need is some ribbon, strips of fabric, raffia, Try all different things. Garden twine would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. For you know, and if you do lace. like lace would look mm, lovely. Lace would look lovely. So if you do like rustic effects things, garden twine, very very cheap. Yeah. And um, as we were saying, with your fabric, I mean this fabric panel, because I, I just thought um, if you have got fabric strip rolls, mm. then they've already got a pinked edge. They are, but then I think it would be quite nice. I'd just cut them and you'd get that frayed effect, wouldn't yeah. you? It's a very rustic look. So again, with that one. Oh, so that's, you're using the, are you, oh no, you're still on the big ones. Yeah, I'm still so on the big ones. So you just wrap it around the opposite ones for the figure of eight. Yeah. And, and all of this is in the instructions. Then again, just pop it through there. So it shows you about the floor, the large floor bow, the basic bow. It's great. So it? take that Very off. Very simple. So it's all there. Everything you need to know is there. And if you go, it gives you the website address as well to go for for more styles and different things you can do. I had a look on um, on the internet, and there's lots of YouTubes of people making bows using these, doing all different things with them. There's an amazing one when somebody had arranged, I think, a, a baby shower. 
everything oh, was covered yeah. in bows. Just really, really great inspiration. And you can just build up the bows. So with this one, I've not even sewn through it, but um, with the big bows, so the one that's behind you, um, there's this massive one. Three, three loops, if you like, of the yellow. Yeah. And then I've used three other different ribbons and graded them down. That's all wired ribbon. So oh, okay. um, with wired ribbon, yeah. you can really manipulate it, mm. you know, however you want to. Yeah, there's a picture of it. So, yes, yeah, you can really move it around. Then, yeah. Can't you? That's massive. Beautiful. So that's your figure eight What's bow. That? And again, right. you haven't got so much of a tail there, but you can always wrap that tail around the centre. So if you don't want a tail to your bow, which you sometimes you might not, then you can manipulate that round, and that's the one that I've used here. So if you've got um, something else that you're putting it underneath, or mm. you know, or that that would be a good one for a handbag or hair clip or yeah. whatever it might be. So yeah, brilliant. brilliant. So we do have a diff, another one, another piece of equipment. Let me just put mine back together again. Um, that's the bow genius that we were just talking about. This one is called Bow, bow Genius Decor. So I'm going to get mine out of the box. So what's in the Bow Genius Decor? This one is $24.99. So your Bow Genius Decor is literally the base. The ba oh, All right, so I've got my base. And your And stand. the pillars. That's your be Bow Genius Decor. So you can create all of the big bows. Yeah, so it's, it's geared up more for such as this kind of thing. So with this one, we'll So make it's exactly the same, yeah. but it doesn't have the pillars. And so you can't do the woven ribbons. No, but you can do- But you can do all of the- Your regular bows. You so can do fabric bows. Yeah. So on this one, again, if you decide that, so I've got a lighter and a darker on this one. So this is gonna be my top, this is gonna be my right side. As you put it in, twist it. So that when it comes out, mm. it's the wrong side. Because you know when you tie a bow yourself and you try and twist it as you do it to get that, and it never quite works, yeah. does it? And then what you do is you decide where you want it to be, fold it over, from the bottom, push up, so you know you're twisting it inside mm. out, if you like. So you've got the other side on there, so we did about a six inch. And then twist it back. And look, I've got... That's a bit too long, so okay, that's not a problem because I haven't sewn anything. I can oh, just okay, so you just take it out, undo it, and go it's right. Okay, isn't well, it? but you I'll can really then, then have a look at it and see. And even if you take it all out and you don't like it, you just pop it back in and do it again. Yeah, do it again. And if I think, well, actually, a seven inch is going to be too floppy, for example, because mm. this isn't wired, um, I'll do a six inch one instead and just pull it down to the six inch. When it goes through, just make sure that that bit's flat and the twist is inside the pillars. Right. Um, and then it'll kind of lay f properly. And then twist it there. So this makes, yeah, so this bow genius decor just makes the traditional bow shape. But obviously, same as the other one, you can do it up to the eight inches, which is then a 16 inch bow across. Actually, you can make even longer. Yeah. It? You can make you it could. as long as you like yeah. because you're only using those measurements for guide. You can go beyond that. It doesn't mean it's just the centre pillar. And you can stack them. But it anyway. doesn't have the um, the bits to make the woven bows. No. But it does have everything to make the traditional bow in any size, shape, using any material, whether it's narrow cord or eight inch wide ribbon. So twenty four ninety nine for the Bow Genius Decor. Again, comes with full instructions. And um, a link to lots of different. You can have a look on their um, have a look on their Pinterest board. They've even put the address of that Pinterest Offray ribbon. Loads, loads of information there on it. Um, so you've just got to choose, really. Forty four ninety nine for Bow Genius. That does the big bow. You know this classic bow as well as the woven bow or the Bow Genius Decor twenty four ninety nine that does just the traditional bow, but there's so many different options mm. there. And you can stack bows We've as well. We've had an email from Fiona. Yeah. There used to be kits for making, hang on a minute, making daisy flowers back in the 70s. Mum made a question about the daisies around it. This has brought the memories from Aww. Fiona. Oh. <laughs> it does look very like. much like a daisy, doesn't it? Yeah. So on this one, I've stacked it. So you just decide, oh. yeah. Oh, so and you, you don't have to make 
separate bows and sew them together no, then? No, stack it all up. But if you're going to stack it, um, when you take it out, you can either clip it or be quick about it. Keep your stack as a stack. And then I would sew through. So have your needle at the ready. Okay, and sew through it all sew together in all one together. go. Yeah, don't let it go. You let it go. Well, you know so if then. maybe you like flower arranging and you want to put, you know, some bows and ribbons on, on them or, you know, I know a lot of people when they do flower arranging in church and then they hang them on the ends on of, the the end pews of the pews and then they have ribbons yeah. as well. So if you were doing something like that, it's the sort of thing would be really useful to have, particularly if you worked in a group and you could own it together. Yeah. But um, think of our big jubilee parties that we're going to be having. Oh, you know what? Mm. Street Fab. party. Yeah. Start collecting your red, white, and blue fabric now. Cut it into strips. Two inch strips would be lovely. And you've seen how quick um, this is. Because we've got the rotary cutter thingy, haven't we? The um I think we've got the blade. We've yeah, got set, we have we? got the blade set and it has three blades in it, a pink and a skip and a wave. So you can cut your fabric. Put you, this goes into normal 45 mil rotary cutters. You just put this blade in, take the other one out, and it cuts the fabric. Is it not in this hour? Oh no, life sold out. Is it gone? Oh no. I, mean, I might be on the website. We'll have to see if we can find that. But you could do that. Or just cut it with pink and shoes. Yes. Or go for the frayed look. Any of those Doesn't options, really matter, any of it? the above. Any of the above. I mean, it's not going to be waving around in the wind too much. It probably won't fray, well, but if you want them... <laughs> we the hope it's not going to be... <laughs> well, let's hope it's not. Let's hope those storms have gone by then. Looking forward to that. So there you go. I mean, obviously, at home, you will take you a lot like more time. You look like you've had a lot of fun making all these bones. I have. <laughs> Do you know, I only, had the, I only had it on Monday. Wow. And it was just like... No, yeah. I can't do that because I'm making bows. I'm making bows. You've got bows everywhere. Sashes. There you go. That That's looks like the bridal shower or hen weekend sash. <laughs> <laughs> a clean version. Yes. <laughs> or you, you see, there you go. That's a um, really nice one for, for Easter. Mm. Easter bonnet competition. Easter bonnet. Yeah. Bow look tie. At that. Bow tie. You can have it as bow tie. I think it's a nice thing you can do with children, isn't it? Yeah, it is very straightforward. Because, uh, I mean, and they, they'd um, probably be even more inventive. See, I'm thinking, right, I've got garden twine. I want to have a go at that. Yeah. I want to see how that works. Hessian. Hessian would be Hessian brilliant. Is Hessian fab. would be really cheap as well. Morning, ladies, could you put a piece of ribbon across the other way first, then tie this across the bow before removing from the machine? Well, you can, because when you, um, if you wanted to use wire, there's enough room there's enough space in there to slide the wire through so you would have you'd slide the wire through you'd have all your bows pick it up and twist the wire um, so yes you can you can do it with fabric as well so not a problem at all so what do you do you put the so you would oh put, you put the ribbon that way so you'd put um Jill's wire going to show us now could you do it with ribbon right okay so you'd put your wire pretend that's wire any excuse to make another bow. Yes, can we make another bow? There we go. But could that be ribbon? That could be ribbon, it could be wire, it could right, be okay. whatever medium you would like to, mm. to secure it. And then you get your bow again, your uh, fabric again, twist to secure it. Take it over. This is a very posh bow. Twist. Brilliant for fancy dress. You know, when children have got to go in school fancy dress and they've oh, got to be Alice in Wonderland yeah, with a big back bow. back of a dress. Perfect. Back of a dress. Back of a dress. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So that would be there. And you would get, um, so now you would either have your wire or ribbon or whatever such like in there. You could do a double. The thing I found with wire... Um, you want the smooth part of the wire on the top, so just take it through and do a quick twist okay. and then manipulate it round when you get to the other side. But um, but tying it like this before you take out is quite good, isn't it? Because it's yeah. sort of, it's particularly if you're doing multi bows. You would definitely do it if you were doing the big ones. Right. And then, again, just pull it up and that's all done. secured. You would do it, obviously, a bit needs, but with the wire, mm. the knot would be here and you wouldn't want it there, so you'd just tug it round to the back and then just literally 
Well, but I guess if you were making if bows for ribbon. hanging on to things, then putting the wire around it would be great because then you've immediately got something. If you're yeah. attaching it to a wreath or something. Yeah. So take that round. I like, I over. think, I think I'd go for the bow genius because. Oh, you, yeah. Because you've got the, the prongs to do these woven bows. That's it's my more favorite. versatile, and I'm loving, I'm loving the. Um, yeah, and what, uh, the other thing that you can do as well is, um, so if you've got a bow mm -hmm. like this, if you have, you, you've got to decide which size. So we'll go small because I've got a small bow. Um, what you can do then is lace around. Actually, I've got it on my hair clip, so I'll have to take one out. My hair's, <laughs> my hair's a wreck. So what you can do is now lace around with whatever. Your raffia. <laughs> with anything, really. Um, you want that in the middle. We do sorry. have raffia. If you want raffia, have a look. All of these different things, like the raffia and the velvet ribbon, all, the, and all on the website. We've put all of them on there for you. So what you can do is you can do a surround bow. So with a surround bow, you're not going in and out. You're just literally doing a figure of eight. Mm -hmm. around the larger ones do a couple round that and then go so you go north south then you go east west like a four leaf clover like a four leaf clover and then can you what yeah can you use synthetic ribbons yeah yeah because a lot of the ones you've used are so, um, yeah. polyester, polyester -y kind all of stuff. sorts, yeah. polyester, cotton, anything. Again, you want... Um, Can you use yarn actually, for them? I wonder them? if this will go through it. Pardon? Can you use yarn? Um, I think you'd have to use quite a bit of it. You could do a lot of winding, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah. Or thick yarn. Sorry, I'm going off beam here because I don't know if this will go through. It might not. I haven't tried this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big eye. Oh. Yes. I like the fat as well, that it all um, packs away, so I can put yes. all mine back together. I can <laughs> and it stays in your sewing room, lend it to people, right, there we pay go. a deposit. So wrong <laughs> oh, I've lost one. Uh, oh, no, actually, let one go through there. So, if you've got... That's gone through there. Oops, come along. Oh, there it is. Oh, I thought I haven't even taken it on the desk and I've lost one. It's all right, good. there we are. So now I've got, we'll have in a second, I've got my surround bow and I've got my uh, raffia coming out the top and the bottom. Mm. But with raffia, you can just like tie it as and when, wherever, can't you? You can make it yeah. as scrappy as you want it to be. So you that's actually a lot of that. a lot of bows with that 50 gram ball as well, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, definitely. So now I can put that into there. And this is like a kind of a butterfly bow. So it's that way up. And then just wrap your raffia around the middle. In fact, that's what I did with the ones on the wreath. And then once you secure it, obviously I've not secured it yet, but once you secure it, mm. that is like, I'm going to go all undressed now. Like that. So that's a surround bow with organza ribbon around and it. And then how, how did you attach that to the hair clip? Just sewed it, it over. Oh, just sewed it sewed over. It over. Yeah. Fantastic. But that, and you can see it's all, I've got two loops for each, north, south, east, west. But mm. that does look a bit clovery, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Like a four leaf clover. Yeah. But yeah, weddings, parties, any celebrations, <laughs> pop it on your hat. Odd horns. Yeah. Just depends anything. on what you use. I mean, lace would be gorgeous, wouldn't it? Lace would be brilliant. So, so the bow cancer. genius, we have less than 30 left. Oh. Mm. So please, if you've got it in your basket, you do need to check it out because it will be gone otherwise. Oh, and we are going to do pom-poms as well. What's that bit on the top of there? So that stops things wriggling around. Oh, I was thinking yeah. like that's got yeah, like funny moldings in it. Ergonomic. It's got these moldings in the top so that when you put it on, it keeps, oh, that holds everything together. It's and then it just locks both sides. Yep. And I'll just try to do it now. Take that out of there. That's really good, isn't it? So, well, it's just quite nice because you know we have this equipment in our sewing room, and then we don't know what to do with it. We've got another box, but that's all clipped together beautifully. Oh yeah. Do you know what it looks like? When they, do you remember heated rollers? <laughs> Look, 
<laughs> Remember those? Yeah. Do people still have them? I don't know. My I mum used probably to got take hers on holiday. My dad would go, do we really have to take those heated rollers in the suitcase? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you used to blow the thing out, uh, when you were abroad because it was the wrong voltage. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. never done that. No, no. <laughs> But you need to check out if you've got it in your basket. We are limited in stock now. You do need to check it out. So you have to choose. If you have the bow genius, you have everything. You have the um, the traditional classic bow cent central section, as well as the small outers and the big outers that make the woven bow and the needle. That's forty four ninety nine. Or you can get the bow genius decor, which. <coughs> $24.99. It has the same case and the base and the central section for making the traditional bow, but it doesn't have the prongs around the edges for making the woven bow. It has the spaces for them. Yes. So you, uh, I'm not sure if perhaps later on we might get an upgrade kit. Oh. I don't know if that's on the card, so don't don't mm, quote don't me. Don't know. That could be a but guess. But I wouldn't risk it. Just get the whole lot. Just get <laughs> I know. My favourite bit is my favourite bit is the one that we've just done, the one that looks like a rosette. I just think that you could put mm. that on everything. In so many things, yeah. Everything. Award yeah. yourself one. Yes. Right, let's do pom poms. <laughs> pom poms. Pom poms. Right. Let I'm me gonna put, put mine. I, and I like this. I think this is just yeah. It works in my craft room. I don't want all sorts oh, of bits. Oh, I tell and you, also, the also the bow genius decor doesn't have the lid. Oh, right. Ah, I'm well thinking, spotted. Well, I thought, oh, God, I've lost the lid. <laughs> oh, no. But, but, but no. Have, then I realised it wouldn't have fit in the box anyway. It didn't so it. the Bow Genius Decor does not have the lid. It is just the base and the prongs in a bag, but it doesn't have the carry lid with the lock and everything. So we've got three different sizes of pom-pom makers here. Um, now, two of them have two one as one so the extra large this is fantastic jumbo pom-pom maker this is your bobble hat pom-pom yeah you definitely when need we all did of them, bobble hats way. with oh sam sabida we did them just before christmas she did crochet ones um and i bought them for my nieces for christmas i bought them one of these and these is the perfect size for bobble hat as well as trees and all sorts of things but if you're thinking big chunky one for bobble hat that's brilliant so that is 9.99 it is massive um, Jules has got a few of these, mates. we'll show you in a minute. Extra large. So that will give you a four and a half inch diameter pom-pom up to. You can obviously trim it right down as well. Um, we've then got the large. Now in the large, you get two. So you get two pom-pom makers. One will make a two and a half inch pom-pom, that one. And the other one will make a three and three eighths inch pom-pom. So you get two in that for 6 99 And then finally, we have... This is from small, small. Um, and you, again, you get two in this one, 5 99 So you get a one and five eighths inch diameter pom pom and a one and three in, in it, three eighths of an inch, 35 mils and 45 mils. We have got loads of yarn, all different colours and types. You need to go onto the Yarn Lane website. Oh, sorry, you don't need to. <laughs> yes. Sorry, She's reverse. Right. <laughs> Going backwards. You don't have to go on the Yarn Lane website because it's all on the Sewing Street website. <laughs> if you um, <laughs> click on Watch Live and scroll down, it's all on the pre-order there. So it's all on the same. But what we've done is put the right yarn, different sorts. We've got some cotton, we've got some acrylic, we've got big balls and small balls. So just a whole choice. So you don't need to go on the Yarn Lane website. You can go on the Yarn Lane website. There's even more <laughs> yarn on there. But we've selected some for you today that you can make pom-poms with. So, Jules, can you show me a big pom-pom? I can show you a big pom-pom. Um, the big pom-pom, so in the, in the cloud, yes. the centre pom-pom is the big pom-pom. Right. I didn't do very many of the big pom-poms. My Did little you? trees up here are big pom-poms right. too. Oh, you've Should got I that take one, one down so you yeah. can see it? Yes. I love the cloud. So, my tree is the big one. Okay. And it does, it is big. That's nice lovely. What have you got in the middle of that? In the middle of this? Yeah, what holds it? A stick? Yeah. It's a blown off the tree stick. A real so stick? It's a real stick. Okay. And then this is just felt that I've put around the top right. with nice. polystyrene underneath. Nice for table centre. Yeah. I look, <laughs> I was just saying to <laughs> this morning that they look like the Lorax trees. 
Remember the, the film, The Lorax? No, no. never anyway, seen that film. that one is by Dr. Zeus. Is it Dr. Zeus? Oh, okay, One of yes. those ones, yeah. Like the cat in the hat thing. Oh, right, but, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. They're lovely, aren't they? But I yeah, like it's, so that's the biggest one. Mm. So that's your extra large one where you just get the one of them. Yeah. In fact, the picture on the extra large one is of trees. Yeah. Not of... <laughs> Nicked it. You see, they've got trees there. Nicked the inspiration. Not of um, pom-poms or bobble hats. Perfect for no. them. You can, but you can do them. You can do all sorts with them. It's amazing what you can do. With so them. how do they? Stuff. How do they work? And are they the same? They're all. So the principle of all of them is the same. Okay. Um, so what you'll have is this unit. So um, the reason I, I quite like this unit because it's very solid, and you, it's not flimsy at all. So the way that you're going to be making them is this is. So they fit together like this. So I don't think you've broken it. They fit together like that, but that's how you right, need to have with them. The pin. You need to have them together to make mm. the pom pom. And both these sides pull out. Okay. Okay. So what you do is you start winding on one side. You can choose where you want to have it. I really like the big one because it has got the divisions marked on here. So if you wanted to do um, faces or different patterns you can make mm. flowers there's lots of different intricate in intricate patterns intricate. that you can make out there so if you wanted to do that it's actually got don't know if you'd be able to see but it's got yeah and i can see on my embossed well. oh markings, markings just marked on, on it so you can decide that if you want half of it to be one color and half of it to be the other color then then that's oh what so you if you wanted do. a striped one yeah you use the markings yeah okay so what you'll do is you'll hold it and you start off. It's easier to start off more in the centre than it is at the edges and just pop a couple of winds around of the wall so it secures it and then you can be hands free and you just literally work up and down. You don't have to be too prescriptive about it just as long as you're getting reasonable coverage because you're going to do a few different rows on it. So you just keep going. We've picked the biggest one. Maybe we should have gone and picked the smallest one. But generally, yeah, that's what big, you do. Yeah, go big, go home. <laughs> Was that Elliot? <laughs> no, so Elliot's in the office. Is he in the office He's in the now? office. He's having an office day. He's not... Um, yeah, which he's supposed to be making all those lovely videos we have on there, but he's probably just chatting and eating yeah. biscuits in the office. So basically, you're going to keep winding, keep winding, 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 until you get to... This is all, all needs to be full. So if I show you one that I have wound. Okay. So that needs to be right. It needs full. to be full. Right. So pretend. Okay. Yeah. I'm that I've done it. And what I do is I do a couple so that I've definitely got right up to the edge. Right. There. Because okay. when you're just kind of winding along, you don't necessarily get to the edges. So just make sure you've got right up to the edges. Can you see what I mean? Yeah. Otherwise it will. Will be an uneven pom pom. Yeah. Um, you probably will be trimming them down anyway, but and then take your wool to the top, so you're at the end where the clips are, mm. and then fold that over. Then you can start the next one here. Okay. So you've got a little bit in between, but don't worry about that. And again, obviously, keep going round and round. And I am going to then swap to the other one. Because if I take this off now, it'll be a bit... Yeah, that's fine. Pants. Okay, so you wind <laughs> it up until it's Wind it up full. until it's full. So once you've got it to the end and it's all full, you clip it down. So that's your unit. So you can put that down, go away, come back to it. It's still fine. Mm. It's not going to spring out or anything. So once you've got it to that stage, it'll be like this. Brilliant. So you just cut off what it, your uh, last little bit. Don't worry about that. It will all be enclosed. So now you just need to cut around in between the two posts. So just get some snippety snizzers. Oh, but he's in the old days of two pieces of cardboard. Oh, it's so simple. Oh, look. Oh, what did we do? Not very snippety snizzers. That's, oh, that's secret, 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 colours. secret. Oh, come along. It is easier if you've got. Yeah, you need sort scissors. of sharp, you nice want sharp to the tip scissors, mm. which 
We have a jewel full. I've sorted them all out. I should have um, practiced. I find, though, when I make them, that I'm quite impatient at this stage because I'm really excited. I know, I'll be getting to the knife I have another in a pair here. Try those. Oh, hang on. And um, so you just want to get it done? I yeah. tried a rotary cut on the once, don't. Thank you. Don't, don't. That'll be my um, Oh, look at that. My They're top right, tip. Butter. Don't use a rotary cutter. It's so rubbish. Nearly cut your hand off. Forget what I was just doing because this is How so How many colours simpler. have you got in there? Oh, mm. look at those. For you. So if you use the right scissors. <laughs> look at it. It's like butter. So no, what you will my need, favorite scissors. yeah, I'll remember those. Mm. What you need is <gasps> another piece of wool. So don't do anything till you've got another piece of wool. Okay. Then you slide the other piece of wool in between the two channels. Right. Just wrap it around, and then just tie a single knot and pull it down. Oh, I just love a pom pom. And then turn it over. Big fat pom pom. Big. I made pom-poms in plastic bags in the days when you could still get them. They uh, looked amazing. I've made them from net. All sorts. And then made those like into bunting, but big net. You can yeah. buy net um, like six inches wide. Something really satisfying well, about that. Just pom -pom. something glorious about a pom-pom. And then what you do is you pull the two pieces there and the two pieces on the other side. And this is so easy. And then you just squiggle da, out da, the middle. Da. Put that back together so you know you're in the right order. And there's your pom pom. Oh, that's just beautiful. I love the colours. So what did you do? Did you So the only thing that you need to remember is like we were saying on the other one, um, you kind of position things where you want it to be. So the centerpiece is your outside layer. So you've got to decide where you want things to be. So if I want that in the centre. In the in the middle here. Yes, I'm getting it. Yes. Yeah. Then you're that's working got, backwards. Yes. So you do a bit of so you go on this side and decide where it is. Um that's why it's quite good when you've got the little divisions. You can do them in the same place yeah. for both of them. Oh, and just decide okay. that that's there. And then you just give it a haircut. Yeah. Now, now. haircuts. Let's talk haircuts. You know what it's like when you go to the hairdressers yeah. and you say, I just want an inch off, and then you end up with five inches off. You will know that feeling when you do pom-pom trimming. And pom-poms <laughs> do not grow back. They don't grow back. Um, what I would do is I would have a bag by your side and trim over the bag because it just gets really uh, mm. all over the place. And then those trimmings use the stuffy cushions with. It's so soft. Oh, okay. So don't waste them, just keep them in a separate bag. Oh, so with the, okay. So how do you, <coughs> and so what do you do? Just trim them? Literally, you decide, so you would carry on with that and you'd right. end up with something like this. So literally, you decide um, what kind of shape you want it to be. So if you want it to be a circle, I've left all the trimming, uh, all the um, ends on here because I found this was quite useful to attach to other things. Like a hat. But it's also quite good to hold on to and just see what it looks like. So um, I'm just thinking if I trim here, you're going to hate Oh, me. just do it on the floor. We'll get Elliot to <laughs> It's just on the desk. Right, okay, so we'll pick them up in a minute. You, de you decide what kind of shape. And if you think circle when you do it, channel your inner circle doing it, okay? And you just move it around. And you can decide how you want it to be. And you just kind of keep yeah. fluffing it around. And if you see a sticky, uppy bit, and I guess if you then you think, oh, I want it to be smaller, you just cut it to the size you want it to be. And if you want it to be, so I was going to do macarons. Obviously. Nice. So if you squish it down, so this was, again, judging colours. So if I want it as a macaron, I don't want it to be circular. I want it to be this sort of shape. So I want it to be kind of round. Depends if Mary Berry's watching. Yeah, but these are really good for you yeah. dieting, aren't they? Yeah. If you just look Healthy at them. Healthy macarons. <laughs> yeah. Everlasting. Just look at them on a plate. And you just kind of keep trimming it in. And you go a bit more than that, but you can see the general idea that that 
Yes. Eventually, you can get yes. it flat enough. You might trim the centre a little so bit So what more. have you made with your pom-poms, then? <sighs> what haven't I made yeah, with my pom-poms is better to say. So this, mm. this, this, before I did I'm the show... Well, I'm fascinated by this. This is my daughter's, and she, she started making the pom-poms, and then, of course, she got a bit fed up with making the pom-poms. So what we're doing here is making a rug, lots of different pom-poms. <gasps> I've seen those, like those really, they're really expensive, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, and it's and solid when you kind of so go So what have you it. got under, oh, So I've got like an open weave underneath and I'm just tying the tails just on. Just like a mesh then. And then at the end I'll put a non-slip backing on it. But that's a something that you can do if you end up making lots and lots oh, of. That's gorgeous. Um, other things we've made, well we made some bunnies. Although he looks a bit more like a guinea pig but anyway <laughs> he's got a little yeah. tail <laughs> Gorgeous and he's got guinea little pigs. felt ears and he's got button eyes. button eyes so you can make bunnies you can make There's trees so many things i love the tree love the bonsai you can make tree. the bonsai now i'm not going to bring it over because it looks better from a distance <laughs> yeah the bonsai <laughs> it's not tree quite bonsai but yeah full of those, twigs those red trees brilliant for um, table centers yeah absolutely and then we have a an Easter wreath mm, with bow, bows and, and a chicks. chicken and eggs. So it doesn't just have Ooh, to, doesn't hello. have to be just the bobble for your bobble yeah. hat. And then we've got the cloud. Oh, and the, the cloud! Raindrops. I love the cloud and raindrops. So, so that's lots beautiful. of lots of pom poms. That'd be really at the top. nice. Um, mobile. There it is. And the raindrops are um, the, the same sort of thing. Lovely as this. for a decoration, but children's kind of, bedroom. Yeah. And then there's another one, the one that we took off, the uh, mixture one. Oh yes, so the, the one the cloud bunting. I love this one. So that. So you've made triangles of pom poms. So six pom poms, same size. All right, let me show you it flat. Probably be easier to see. So six pom poms, six pom -poms. all the same size, and then you just sewed them all together. Yeah, so you've got sew them three, in a, two, in and a one, cup. and then it's like double sided as well. That's and lovely. And I think. That's been brilliant, Jules. I hope you've had fun. I have. And it's I hope been your a blast. house isn't too much of a mess. No, I've got lots of stuffing for cushions. Though. Lots of <laughs> snippings. Snippings. Well, it's been lovely to have you with Thank us today. You. Uh, when are you back? Uh, it's about a month, I think. I can't okay. remember what date it is. It's about a month, I think. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Well, we will see you back in about a month's time. But it's been Thank lovely. You. Thank you for showing me the bow Thank maker. You, I'm everyone. loving it. Really want one. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. Um, have a look <laughs> on the website. All of the ribbons and the yarn and everything is on there. Um, I will see you back here in a couple of minutes' time when Sally's going to be on with another quilt kit. Brand new, never been seen before on Sewing Street, and she's going to be demonstrating how to make it. I'll see you in just a couple of texts. Hello, I'm John Taylor from John's Taylor Made. You may remember me from the Great British Make Off competition. Um, I sewed my tablet rest last year with the lovely John Scott. Uh, Sewing Street have invited me back again to do a few more demonstrations for you, but they've also asked me to answer some questions. So the first thing I sewed was a ladybird pin cushion and I made it at primary school. And my late nanny Jo, she taught me how to knit and I think I got my love of sewing from her. She used to sew on that sewing machine over there. Um, something you don't know about me is I sew standing up. Um, my husband built me this sewing table. It's very similar to the one that you see on Sewing Street. My tip is more haste, less speed. My nan was always telling me to slow down um, and to enjoy what I was sewing and I would make less mistakes. And we also have a YouTube channel and a few Facebook pages. I cannot wait to start my journey with Sewing Street and I will see you there very soon. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our website, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! 
Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. And welcome back to Sewing Street. We have got a fantastic quilt for you. It's brilliant. What's great about this kit is all the fabric is pre-cut for you. How fab is that? So again, this is a really good kit for a beginner. Maybe you started sewing, you've done made a couple of bags or something. You think I'd really like to make a kit, but I just don't know where to start. I don't want all the cutting and everything. This is all cut for you into squares or strips and very, very simple to put together. And um, because we're just going to concentrate on this in the hour, we're thinking of, you know, of those of you who are beginners who, or who would like to see a real quilt expert make something from the beginning and we'll show you how to do it all the way through. You can then send in any questions you've got about this or any other thing you're quilting. We've asked Sally if she would demonstrate this because um, I think sometimes, you know, we do, oh, we make this quilt and, you know, assume a lot of knowledge. Well, we're going to be starting from the beginning and we've chosen a quilt specially for that. Um, it is called Centre Stage. Centre Stage using the Happy Camper range of fabrics by Jennifer Paganelli. Now, there are no camping, there's no camping on this. It's not like the camping fabric we had at eight o'clock. It's just called the Happy Camper fabric, but it's the centre stage quilt. Now, in the kit, you, this is this is the quilt. That's what it looks like. It's really pretty, isn't it? It's a 43 by 43 inch quilt. Brilliant for a lap quilt, a cot quilt, a picnic quilt, a hang on the wall quilt. But very, very good if you either are brilliant at quilting and you want a quick make, or you want to make a present for somebody, or you're a complete beginner to quilting and this could be your first ever quilt. So, full instructions, there we go, with lots and lots of pictures, it explains exactly how to do it, and very, very clear quilt layout diagram, which is very important, so you actually see what you're doing. Then, I'm going to unpack this very carefully, because I wasn't supposed to unpack it. So, you've got the fabric that is used for, that's the backing, isn't it, Sally? Is that the backing? No, the big pink bundle, big pink. Oh, is the backing, it's so the backing. that's the borders. Then, this is, look at how nicely this is packed. So, all the squares that are used to make um, the starries bits, the half square triangles, they're all pre-cut here. Look, I don't want to take them all apart. All pre-cut for you. Another pack. We thought about this when they've packaged them. All pre-cut. Either um, ivory ones, I'd say that's ivory rather than white, or the bright coloured fabric. This is all from the Happy Camper range. Then you've got the strips that are used around the, the sashing strips around the edge, the borders, all cut to the right width, and another one. And the backing fabric is all here as well. So you don't orf, often, orphan, you don't orphan, often, <laughs> I was trying to say always <laughs> and often at the same time, <laughs> got orphan. You don't often, or always even, get fabric for the backing but you do with this kit so the only thing you need to provide is your wadding. $84.99 fantastic price this is um, designer fabric beautiful quality it's really lovely it's really smooth and soft and look at the colour I love the print on this beautiful like fuchsia pink isn't it beautiful 
I don't know why it's called Happy Camper. Not really sure. I tried to find that out. But it is beautiful. I mean, it's quilting weight cotton, all 100% cotton, obviously, the 44-inch width. But it is um, designed by Jennifer Pag Paganelli. Maybe this reminds her of her uh, camping trips. But everything you need, I'm going to put it all back together carefully, is all in here and it's all cut for you, which is fab. So um, where did you start with this quilt then, Sally, when you got it? I unpacked it. Um, like I've done. Did you do it really <laughs> carefully and go, oh, did I not really I did, that? yes. I did and I laid all the bits out. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so neat. It's so neatly done. It is so neat. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to break <laughs> it up. But yeah, it's really, really sharply cut, really neatly cut. You don't have to worry about that. You've got your binding, you've got your borders. It's yeah, all there. Absolutely. I think it would make an absolutely fantastic gift. Yes, it would. Because yeah. it's actually packaged in a, mm. in a nice way. So if you've got a friend who's done a bit of sewing and wants to make a quilt, this would be a really good yeah, starting really place, good. wouldn't it? Really good, yes. Okay. And um, yeah, I enjoyed making it. It is quite quick to make mm. partly because it's not very big but partly because obviously it's already cut out but there is no need to rush to make it yeah you know, so if you've not done half square triangles yes yeah, and you've not put borders on or yep yeah. then this is a really really good place to start it with is it, and it? I'll be showing you how to do that so yeah it's a, it's a bit like the demo we did earlier mm. it's this is half square triangles rather than quarter square triangles so it's even easier okay lovely so you've made part of this and then you're going to show us how to make the rest of it because there are so few of these available right. <laughs> i normally get given two of you know of, of, of a kit to mm. work with either in two different colorways or two packs of the yes. same but apparently because there wasn't a lot of this one available so get in quick yes because um, they are they have been selling on pre-order as well we have got less than 30 in stock now so I've done something that I don't think I've ever done before on the TV, mm. and that's Made not finish it. Oh, fantastic. Yes, so it's not quite three quarters. I love the colours of it. I mean, they're so bright and vivid, aren't they? You've got that sort of lovely checkerboard pink, and then the blues and the pinks and the oranges. Blues really pop. And when you first, or when I first looked at the, 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 the squares, I thought, well, those aren't going to go together. I mean, you can see clearly on the photo that they do. Yes. I didn't <laughs> realise to begin with that, these were the actual fabrics that you you got. They are they are uh, identical, and so the placement it's easy to follow. You just literally. Oh yeah, well, there's the a nice quilt layout picture as yeah, well. Yeah, there's one so on you the can back. See how to do it. Yep. So those are the actual fabrics, which makes it even easier if mm. you're a, a beginner. So where did you start with it after you took it out? Does it tell you what order to do it in? Yeah, it suggests that you make the blocks first, which are the half square triangles, okay. and everything on the quilt, apart from the centre square mm. and the borders, okay. is half square triangles. So once you've learned how to make one, you just keep going. Right. There are five different fabrics. You've got your blue. I love that blue one, that's very it's vivid, really isn't nice, it? It's really beautiful. Yes. Your green, which is the same design as the orangey pink, mm. and also the same as the backing. Ah, oh, I see. So same okay. fabric but three colours. So that's another way that it, it goes together mm. really, really well. Then you have this. I think it looks a bit like seaweed, but I'm sure that's not what it is. <laughs> but <laughs> it is multicoloured, isn't it? it a is bit like your batik. In yes. that it's got sort of different shades of fuchsia and purple. And in That's it. right. And then you've got <coughs> the, um, the, hang on, where's it gone? This one. Oh, that's the orangey version. That's the orangey right? version. Okay. And that's used, so is that used in the, oh, the squares and the borders used as well? It's used in the squares, the borders, and around the star. Okay. And I can't find my orange one. I should have an orange one. So these kits have all been packaged for us so we can't sell any of these fabrics by the half meter we can't get hold of them um, in any other way because these have been packaged specially for us so if you want these I and mean, it's a shame really because i think this fabric is beautiful the color i like the color combinations of the pinks and the oranges it works really well together so but we can't sell it on its own because we have the kit specially packaged for us so the only way you can get hold of this fabric from us is if you buy the kit and we are limited now because it's so beautiful 
and easy. It is, I know. And that's, you know, so nice if you are in a bit of a rush route to make a gift. Yes, yeah, so you, you could just want to make something quick. Yes, because, I mean, I love to make a big quilt, but mm. sometimes you just want to make something a bit smaller. Actually, it's nice. I've made quilts like this for people who are having a baby because it's a yeah. brilliant, like, changing mat, isn't it? Play yes, mat. Play when you've mat. got a newborn yeah. and you go around to someone's house or something and you want to lay them on something. Yes. <laughs> it's lovely. And then afterwards, or you put it on the cot. But when someone's having a baby and you think, well, I never know, a quilt's a lovely thing to make. It is. And, and the colours in this, I think, are quite pretty. Mm. But also, it doesn't matter if they're for boy or girl. No, not really. You it's know, a, just a lovely it's just thing. a lovely and, and every time I've done it, people have been so grateful because it's not often yes. somebody makes a quilt for you. That's right. And for myself, <clears throat> not having any cots to put things on, mm. I would probably put this at a table centre. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, and you can do it sort of at a, at a, a jaunty angle. Yeah, oh, that would be so nice. So that you get a nice little table mm. topper, which I and love. And they're nice for little lap quilts as well, aren't they? They are, yes. And it's um, also the size of it, I think it's 43 by 43, is also a size that they recommend if anyone's in a wheelchair. Oh, really? Um, so around about 45, 42, oh, okay. 45. Just good, so because you can tuck it just round. Just tuck it round. Oh, yeah. what a lovely thing. How pretty. Yeah, but not too long that it catches in any no. wheels or anything like that. That's a really, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, well, it also, is. I mean, I know a lot of people, um, when we've on Yarn Lane, and they've made crochet blankets, they've talked a lot about making them for, you know, relatives who are in nursing homes and things, just when they're sitting there watching the telly to have something to wrap around Yeah, them. that's right. And, and it's a comfort as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, well, I think, why not have something pretty? So, we, so you're going to start off by making the half square triangles? I am. Right. So are they just called blocks? Oh no, they are called. I've seen. Have they called they, them that? They call them blocks. Well, I mean they are blocks, but yes. they're very, very simple ones. So there's no cutting to do of your blocks here. Nice. But what we do need to do, you have a, a white square. They provide all the white squares as well, and the all patterned. Cut. And, and I don't suppose it matters in which direct because it's not really a directional. It's not directional. Um, it, I should have mentioned that with the previous the previous quilt there are some directional fabrics but because you're doing quarter square triangles even with half square triangles you will find they come in different directions right but that's fine because then it means that you can put the quilt in any direction and it still works okay good so, good yeah, I never fuss about that really unless it's sort of people <laughs> no, you know <laughs> horses heads or whatever well that's true so. isn't it I actually don't really like directional fabrics well, no, I do like them, but never, I rarely ever buy them for patchwork because I hate having no. to think about it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and um, I often get people coming to classes and bringing stripes. Mm. And you think, oh, and yeah, they are lovely. Lovely, But for yes. patchwork, they're very difficult. And I have a particular friend in Anglesey, um, Angie, who loves stripes, but she uses them in these borders more, more oh, than anything. Okay. So, and, and with the stripes going this kind of way. So you don't have to worry about them because it's um, it, trying to get a stripe. It's yeah, very difficult it's very to cut difficult. as well, isn't it? Yeah, because they're not always printed straight. I'm sure they're not. They're not. You sort of start off with one bit and you think, well, shall I cut the fabric on a diagonal to get the yeah. stripe right? Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're not. I mean, some, some are better than others, mm. but no, because it's a it's like a um, conveyor belt type thing that they're printed on. I think they've only got a, you know, you know yeah. when your roller blind goes a bit skewy? Yes. I yeah. think it's a bit like that. So it only needs to be a tiny bit, but then if you've got, you know. <laughs> so they're fine for things, but I, yeah, no, I, I find directional with patchwork, like, oh no. It's nice if you've got directional fabrics, though, that, that are like a, a, a picture or an image, and then you can use this kind of thing. Yeah, then you can fussy yeah, cut them. Yeah, then you can fussy cut them. Stuff. So they're pre-cut, so the first thing to do is, as we have done before, draw a diagonal line with either a pencil, erasable marker pen. It doesn't right. really matter because it's in the seam. You won't see it when it's, when it's sewn together. And Yeah, it's a lovely um, kit to give to someone as a gift though, isn't it? Is it you know, to kit? actually make it, not made up, but say, right, yes. here's this and I'm going to show you how to do it. Because it's presented in that format, yes. it's easy to wrap. Yeah, it's <laughs> easy to wrap. <laughs> Handily, yes, very easy to wrap. <laughs> Which I find helpful. Mm. So, we are going to sew... Bow, with your bow maker. We are going to sew a quarter of an inch either side of that drawn line. 
So but when you do that, that's another question, is do you, how do you know? Because you can't use your foot, can you? You, you, um, well, well, you can't I, use your machine plate because you can't see it. So how do you know? So what I do, because we, we want a scant quarter inch mm. again, which is less than the full quarter inch. Now, if you put a quarter inch foot on, which I'll be using later, quarter inch foot has got a guide on the side. Right. And if you try to sew with this guide on, it can be done, but you'll actually end up creasing the fabric oh because it's not running over the edge it's not so running over the no edge good. yeah and it'll also bunch up at the beginning and it can make the fabric skew a bit as you're as you're stitching so save that for when we come to do the joining together mm. so i would use a normal foot clear foot or open toe foot is fine and you can see on if you if your machine has got markings you can see where the quarter inch marks are so I would work oh, out. Can you just move, sorry, the instructions out. Oh, sorry. Because then. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to have a quarter inch mark, possibly on your foot plates, mm. but also on your your foot. If you look at your feet, you'll see there are lots of little ridges and and markings. If you look closely, you'll see they are deliberately there to be quarter inch. Right. Markings. So they are specific. So because you can't use the foot plate, you have to use yeah the marking on the foot. That's right. You'll also notice on a lot of feet there is a quarter inch mark going this way as well. And that's so that if you need to stop and pivot at a corner okay. or at the end of something, you can see, right, so I've come to that point now. I can so stop. I can do. So the markings on the feet, I mean, I often use them for just lining up for top stitching and things. But the they're very valuable. They're really, but I guess if you mark your fabric, you'd be able to see which one of them does what. Yeah. So I would work out where my quarter inch is on, on this open foot. And then move the needle across so that it's less than a quarter an inch. Right. And then use the edge of the foot along the pencil line. Okay. If you can't move your needle across or you're not sure how to, leave it as it is in the centre, but just move your foot a little bit further across. Okay. So if I show that on the, on the table. Yeah. So instead of having your foot, the edge of your foot, say so this one. Instead of running the edge of your foot down the line like that, mm. with your needle moved to the right, you can actually overlap the foot over the line uh, okay, to, bring so, yeah. the, to bring it in. Yes. But a, a good idea with, with any um, quilt or anything that you do, and something I do all the time, before I cut into the nice fabrics mm. or start sewing them together in this case, I always make a little sample out of just some scrap fabric I've got. And it mm. could be a sheet, it could be a pillowcase, you know, whatever, and test how the instructions work yeah. for you. Make sure they, it works with your machine and, mm. yeah, and your thread and whatnot. And then make one or two of those. When you're familiar, then you can go to the good fabric yes. and you won't waste it. And you won't waste it and you won't go wrong, which is very important. It is. And with this kit, it is the Just exact number the of pieces. Angela. Just bought the kit to help get my patchwork mojo back. Kit looks beautiful. Looking forward to the demonstration. Oh, thank you, Angela. I know I, it's funny, isn't it, how you can lose lose that sometimes? You think I just can't be bothered anymore. I think it's happened to a lot of people during the the lockdowns. You think so? Just that uh, can't be bothered anymore. Yeah, I think because for a lot of people it was like, yay, I've got all this time mm. and I can make things. And for other people it was like they'd lost a lot of their purpose. So if you were making things for for your your family or your grandchildren or whatever, right. you couldn't even and take it, wasn't it done, to yeah. them. So. Yeah, I lost a lot of my, not so much my sewing mojo, but other crafts that I do. That's what I thought, because I lost my mum at about the same time. And I used to make loads of things for her. Right, and then you didn't... And then I didn't have her. And, and I'd also, whenever I made a quilt, the first thing I'd do is go trotting around to her mm. place and go, look what I've done. Yeah. And she'd always say, oh, it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and you haven't, yeah, and you haven't got that. And if you can't share things with other people... Yeah. I think also if you do more than one craft, you quite often will lose it for one of them. Yes. And I do all the time. There's always one I think, oh, I'm really not interested in yes. anymore. Yes. And it's getting it back. But I think sometimes, Angie, you're right, you need the right project, don't you? That's right. And, and then the right it, and it'll inspire you, you and you'll think, yes. do you know... Mm. And this really is a good start to one because if all you do on the day you get it is sew one of these, yeah, just you've started. Yes, you've broken the record. Well, you know, it'll be three a.m. <laughs> oh, don't. <laughs> mm. It's like one more, just one more chapter. Just isn't yeah. It? yeah, just just one more stitch, just, one more um, If I just finish off that row. Yes. Mm. So the other thing I will do, if I've got a little bit of fabric, 
is I'll do a little what we were talking about leaders and enders yeah, before. Leaders and enders, donkeys. Donkeys. Now we know what, why they're called that. Because, because you're starting on the point. Because you're starting on right. the point. So I would always use a bit of scrap fabric, usually doubled. I never do that. I'm gonna do that though. The donkeys? No, yeah, never do that. Well no. no. Well, this I do is a brilliant tip. What I do, I do is get irritated that the points pull Got up, mashed up. <laughs> and sort of pull them apart and press them a bit. <laughs> I just get annoyed, but I don't do that, so it's fantastic. So you can pin these together if you like. Mm. Some people, and, and I do this myself, just press them together and you'll find they stick quite well. Yeah, then why is that? I have no idea. No. <laughs> 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 well, actually, it's to do with the chemical <laughs> consistency of the dye and it makes them stick together. <laughs> I imagine it's a bit like when I was talking about setting the seam as by pressing the seam when you've sewn mm. it. You're sort of meshing the fibres in a tiny right. bit. Just enough. Just enough, yes. I wouldn't want to sort of hang it out in this sort of breeze and see if it stays together. But yeah. yeah. Open. Okay, so we start now. We've done our little. Oh, it's lovely to see you. Sorry, we've got some new, lot of new customers today. Really Ooh. nice to see you getting involved and having a go. Um, if you've got any questions at all, message us in. Sally, honestly, knows everything except for why fabrics stick together. Yeah, but I don't other know than that, don't know something. Other than that, she does know pretty much everything about quilting. And so if people know things that I don't, or I get something wrong, please do say yeah. so. <laughs> well, we have both learned donkeys, haven't we? Yes, we have. <laughs> I knew that's what it was called, but I was terrified no, of saying it. I know. <laughs> and go, what are you on about? <laughs> so we're going to sew. I've done it slightly. I think I've moved, I've moved my needle the wrong way, but there we go. So my scant quarter inch isn't very scant on that side. Well, when I first used to do half square triangles, I always drew those two lines in as well, so I could just sew along them. I think that's if you're a complete beginner, is really helpful, isn't it? Just draw them on. Oh, yes. It takes longer. So I've done that slightly wider because I hadn't set the foot in the right, um, the right direction. But now we cut apart on the actual drawn line. So we've sewn either side of it. Mm. Now we're going to cut it apart and I will press to set the seam, which as I say is bedding the thread into the fabric. Because you, you find when you've sewn a seam it's a little bit wavy. Yes. And this takes the wave okay. out of it and you'll also notice that the thread seems to sit inside the fabric just that little bit right becomes part of it becomes part of it and these I would I would press all of these towards the dark side because you've got a lot of white in here mm. just to just to sort of hide the seam now I don't tend to get too precious about that because even if you've got a white a lot of white or cream in your quilt if you're using a, a light coloured wadding, mm. batting, you really won't see it the same. Oh, okay. So unless you're using a black wadding, or perhaps you're using a black fabric with white, you really won't right, see okay. it. Right, okay. I know, but it's, you do sort of think, oh, it's got to be over to that side. But if you, if you do that, you'll find that sometimes you end up with either a lot of bulk in one area or you just can't help it <laughs> you, just, you know you just can't help it okay <laughs> so don't get too hung up on so it don't then. get too okay. hung up on it yes that's right so so we've got these now and these little things are called dog ears dog ears it's all about animals isn't <laughs> it dog, about animals beast, dog ears <laughs> They probably called other things. They're probably called donkey ears. I've no donkey idea. Donkey ears. <laughs> no, they're terrier ears. I call ears. them doggy ears. They're terrier ears. Yes, they are. <laughs> and we don't need them. We don't want them. They get in the way. And we don't need them. So just trim those off. You can do it with the rotary cutter or with your scissors. Okay. And I tend to keep everything. <laughs> you can't sew with those, but they can go in, into stuffed toys and things like that. <laughs> <gasps> oh, oh, I keep everything. You hate my house. Oh, I, I don't, I'm not very good at keeping things. Oh, terrible. Really? Oh, terrible. come from a family of hoarders. 
I mean, I'm relatively good compared to... <laughs> oh, really? I yeah. don't. I don't keep yeah. things, really. Oh, I do. Because I'm such a sentimental, what's it? Mm. You know? Because um, we, we, Paul was losing the roof on his shed yesterday. Mm. And we went to see what the damage was and tried to fix it, which is difficult in those sort of winds. And there are loads of boxes of mum's summer mum's stuff. And you're saying, well, we're going to get rid of all this. And I'm going, oh, can I just... <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm quite, yes, I'm, I can understand things like that, but bits of fabric, I'm not very good at oh, that. yes. I keep, I mean, all of these, I keep them. No. I put, yeah, and I put them... I'm, normally when I'm working, I've got a little bin on the desk. Mm. And when I've got a few... Um, they're quite useful like if I'm making a cat bed or a dog bed yeah. and you just put scraps of fabric threads dog mm. ends dog ears, ears dog ends no dog donkeys, ends don't work. donkeys in there and before you know it just run a few quilting mm. stitches over it and you've got a little dog bed <laughs> or cat bed <laughs> I'm going to post all mine to you mine will go in a bin on the floor <laughs> most of mine start on the floor <laughs> 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 so we'll just do that again Okay, so I'll just demonstrate that again. Right, so we're going to do a half square triangle. We're doing half square so triangle. you do that with all of the white, well, all, all, of, of, those white. all of those squares. Yes, and all of those squares. And they're already pre-cut, which is really handy, isn't That's it? That's right, and you're going to have... Someone's done all that hard work for you. Oh, it's lovely. So nice. Because I... Um, I love cutting out, mm. but a couple of ladies on a, a quilt class I run have a little bit of trouble with cutting out, either because they've got possible uh, dexterity issues. Mm. Um, one, one lady is left-handed. I'm teaching her to be right-handed. <laughs> <laughs> Can't she not just cut out left-handed? She struggles with the rulers. So she can use the scissors and cut out everything mm. left-handed, but actually she seems to be, and to me, she cuts better with a ruler right-handed. That's odd. Why yeah. is that? Then? I have no idea. Because yeah. I've seen plenty of people cut left-handed. Oh, of course you can. Them. And you just swap your rotary blade over. Yeah. So when she said she was left-handed, I swapped the blade mm. for her and she just didn't seem to enjoy it. It didn't <laughs> seem to flow. So I said, well, look, change it back and have a go. And she did a lot better. That's odd, isn't yeah. it? Maybe she's actually ambidextrous then. Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, so there's nothing wrong with being left-handed at all. I'm not <laughs> trying to force her to be right. <laughs> Make it up, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but she just can't do it. She seems to have... Well, it's not that she can't do it. She seems to have found it easier. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Some people are a bit... Not definitely one way or the other. They're a bit yeah, my sister is uh, ambidextrous. Okay, cool. So she writes with her left hand, but uses a knife and fork the same way as wow. right-handed people. Uh, she writes mm. left-handed, but so is right-handed. Very strange. Um, Fiona has emailed to say, are you going to any shows this year? What do you mean, as a visitor, shopping, um, teaching, <laughs> no, shopping? I'm not doing any teaching at the moment, but um, I think a few shows are still trying to decide what, what they're doing in that Okay, respect. so it hasn't been decided. So it hasn't it? been decided. And um, so I'm teaching sort of locally mm. and, and, and so on. And I will probably be going to shows as a visitor for sure. So if you see me. Mm. Yeah, ask her questions. Yeah, ask her questions. All the answers. Yes. <laughs> you know, I don't show. I found a question. <laughs> no, joke, joke. <laughs> so, are you going to make another one? I'll make another one just to show again, because okay. if you are a beginner, you know, seeing it a couple of well, times. Well, this is kind of a real building block for many, many quilts, isn't it? The half square, the HST. The HST, yes, half square triangle. And then the ones that we did earlier on are the quarter square triangles. So, really... And then after that, it's just positioning. Yes, is it? Okay. yes turning them around in different mm. directions. You can do that with these. I mean, if we if we go back to the quilt here, you can have, okay, your fabric's that way around. That makes, so you make a big triangle. Yep, or like this, which is almost looks like a flying geese, mm. and that is a way you can make flying geese. Okay. Um, you can have them pointing into the middle mm. so you make another square but you'd use more than one fabric probably to do that so you know, something like that and then another one there yeah so okay. there's lots of things so it is really a quite it's a good a staple block beginner. really yes and as we said before sewing triangles is tricky because when 
when you've got a piece of fabric, it has a warp and a weft, which is the way that it's mm. woven. And if you pull it in one direction, it won't stretch very much. If you pull it in another direction, it'll stretch a little bit more. If you pull it from corner to corner, it stretches a lot. Loads. A lot. Yes. That means that if you cut your triangles first and then try to sew them together on that stretchy, stretchy mm -hmm. length, you'll mm. quite find out they don't match. Quite find right. out they won't okay. match. You'll get little ripples. It won't lie nicely. And however hard you press it, it doesn't even look quite right. So if that does happen, I tend to dampen the fabric and then press it and press it and press it. But don't press out towards no, but side. by doing it this way, you're working with the stability. You're of working the with yes, the warp and the weft, which is mm. more stable. And uh, the f because you're working, this is called the bias. You will find that fabric tends to fray just that little bit more as well. Right. Okay. Because your threads are woven like that, if you go across it, they've got nothing to hold on to. So they just <laughs> they just. Uh, okay. Right. So we'll sew another. Oh, Fiona, message back in. <laughs> she says, if anyone does see Sally at shows and wants to treat her, she likes a cup of Earl Grey tea. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know who we're talking about now, sorry. And she said she'll buy you one at Malvern. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely be there, I'll definitely be there. You and know, a Kit I Kat. <laughs> I was demonstrating, because of the NEC, <laughs> and I, oh, I was demonstrating Metler Threads, I think, and... Um, I've been there three, four hours or something, and lots of people coming to mm. show, see me demo and talk about everything, but I didn't even get up to go to the loo or have a drink, mm. and she very kindly offered to get me a cup of tea, and oh, she paid for it, which I was even thought was better. very kind, so I really owe you one. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's, yeah, I know it's hard when you've been sat doing the same thing and no one brings you a cup of tea. It's awful. <sighs> well... It's awful. I mean, I got brought one, but that was hours ago. Yeah. Hours. That was hours. Hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> That's Elliot, you see, he's out in the well, office. Well, because usually at shows, everybody is busy. Everybody yeah, is busy. Yeah, I know. So you no just got, got people, you know, tea. kicking around. Right, so back to the half square triangle. The, so I'm doing the, the scamp quarter it's inch again. Making this fantastic quilt. Again, so many tips though. So, um, anyone who wants to buy the quilt, eighty four ninety nine. Everything you need, even the backing fabric, is in it. Um, all pre cut. All you need is the wadding, and you will just need a piece of wadding about fifty by fifty inches. Yes, so, um, I would say. I don't think it says, but I normally on I'm a smaller quilt not so much, but I normally add two to three inches. All the way around. All the way around, yes. Yeah, so, so on a 43 inch, I'd probably do, um, fifth, yeah, 50 About inches. 50. Yeah. Now, there are less than 20 of these and more than that in basket. So if you want this quilt, you need to check out, otherwise somebody else will have it, because it isn't yours until you checked out. But you can check out as many times as you want today. You only get charged one P&P of 3.95. Um, the P&P is 3.95 per day. It doesn't matter whether you check out once or 355 times, for example. Doesn't matter, it still will only be £3.95. Oh, my glasses are so dirty. I'm looking at the screen and there's like dots. I'll get them <laughs> clean in a minute. Anyway. Just a bit of fabric. <laughs> <laughs> it's so distractive, I can barely Hang on a minute. see. So in here you get all the instructions. Lovely layout diagram. Um, all of the squares are pre-cut, the white ones and the bright ones for making these um, half square triangles that Sally's doing. So easy. For those of you who don't like cutting, beautiful, beautiful fabrics. We've got the um, sashing strips and the binding strip. That's those. And then they're already cut. This is the fabric that's used for the border, so you do need to cut this one. No, that's cut. Oh, that's cut? Oh, is it? Not? No, no. Uh... No, I don't think that one is cut, is it? Yeah, I think that's the only one. Yes, that's the only cut. one you have to cut that's because you cut five lengths for the border and one nine inch square. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that one is the only one that's not cut. But you've got all the backing fabric. It's gorgeous. We never get backing fabrics and quilts. And how lovely that the backing fabric is the same. So if you were going to use it like for a children's, um, like a changing mat, or you were going to use it a picnic blanket or something, or even, you know, 
anything like a lap quilt. You've got this beautiful backing fabric on the back as well, and it matches beautifully. Well, it's part of the same fabric range. So $84.99 for everything you need. And you will have some mm. of that pink or left. Or use your own fabric for the back. And I keep this. <laughs> that's that's exactly what I would and do. And that's what Sally would do because she <laughs> eats everything and use yours. Yeah, so I just thought that was so luscious, that pink. Yeah, so all the half square triangles, it looks like you haven't got them, but that's because the white ones are on top. They are. Yeah, they've actually split them. So you've got each each six. Oh, they're in sections. Yeah, they're in sections. So oh. you've got six coloured fabrics, six whites. Oh, yeah, look, six so six whites. So you six can't colour, even go wrong. Six whites, six colours. Oh, that's good, isn't it? It is. It's well thought out. And the diagrams, coloured are the exact fabrics you're using. So you don't even need to think, oh, I wonder where I put that one. I know, so it actually shows you shows exactly, here exactly where. which fabric. And they're all coloured in the same as the fabrics. This is so easy. Right, so we've made the half square so triangles. So I've made another, another two so half another square two. Got triangles. Four and I'm going to do now is show you how to join them together. I'll do, if we've got time, I'll do a demo later about the star itself, but it still uses half square triangles. So you've got two half square triangles. I've pressed them to the darker side and we need to join them now according to the, to the pattern. So for example, that one and that one. So how many rows have you got left? Have you got two rows left to put on your So quilt? I've got one row left. One, to put okay. On there. But I seem to be missing one of my fabrics, so... We'll have to we'll have to work around that. <laughs> An orange one, yeah. I had it when I left home, but it doesn't seem to be here now. So I'm showing you the principle anyway. Okay. The orange one has disappeared. <laughs> now I'll show you a little tip I mentioned I was going to show you earlier. You can pin these. So you so what you're doing now is you're joining them together in the row. I'm joining them together in the row. So okay. we're just going to sew along one edge. Now, when we, when you, if you look at it on the, if you're getting close, getting close, if you look on the edge of the square, I pressed to the dark side there. Yes. There. We're not, we're not going to be able to nest these together, but you will see that that's going in that direction, and that's also going in that direction. Yes. So, when you put it on the sewing machine, ideally you want to sew it in that direction. Mm. Okay. That will make it sit together neater and not bunch up. But you can't always do that. So when you put something like this on the machine and you're going the other direction, which I'd be doing mm. with this, you often find that the seam flips. Always. Underneath. Always. That happens to me. Well, apparently, and I have tried this now, and I only learned this fairly recently, it flips because your bobbin plate isn't flat, isn't level. Okay. It's literally half a millimetre or something. But as you push the fabric towards it, it right. almost always flips, flips over to the back. Yeah, it does. So the only way around that is either to sew in the direction that the mm. seam is going, or, and I haven't brought anything posh with me, but you can tape like a sticky note or a piece of piece of paper on here and then when you're starting from here just be careful i'd probably cut a bigger bit so it goes over the edge mm. of the sewing machine you probably can't see that can i turn the machine yeah no i can see yeah i can see so exactly you'd have, what you mean yeah so you'd fold that it always there. what i have to do is hold it down like with the end of my seam ripper or a pin or something to stop it doing yeah that. so and, and so it's do really i really annoying it is annoying and you still find this and it still does it doesn't yeah it? and you know if you do forget or, or you're, you're doing the chain piecing that's especially or it if happen. it's an underneath one yeah then it will, well, so yes. if you just stick something over over there yes so i would always try to sew with a flat piece of fabric underneath anyway mm. but in this case we can't but you do can't that always. so yeah i'd have a piece of paper that goes okay just would up to in front of a piece of tape would that work a piece of tape but you just need to make sure the tape isn't so thick that it creates a new bridge <laughs> do, <laughs> do you know what i mean yes yes yeah so if you use like say masking tape or or um, electrical tape, it would probably create a, an, another bump. Because it's that extra millimetre. But if it? you could do it over the edge, then maybe not so bad. 
Well, I'm definitely going to try. So that it's worth that a try. Me mad. I'm not doing any money back guarantees. Yeah, money. Yes. So if it doesn't work, Sally will be coming round <laughs> to your house for free tutorial. <laughs> but it's something I learned fairly recently because mm. I'd always thought, you know, wh wh why? Never occurred to me that it's just no. that little, well, they someone little needs to lip, that. and it's not a problem with the machines or anything like no, that. It's just the design. It's yes, and even if you've got a machine without a top loading bobbin, you'll still find this. Yeah, there's a reach is. there. Well, who knew? Who knew? Well, we've got about ten minutes left. Oh, okay. I'll crack on. But if you want any more of Sally's wonderful um, hints and tips. Oh, we have also got two sets of her instructions, which had her lots of her hints and tips. These are from previous shows. The Twinkling Stars Quilt. Love this one. 9 99 It's beautiful. This makes a 64 by 64 inch square quilt. And this was demonstrated on the 2nd of December, if you want to have a look. As always with all Sally's instructions, very, very clear, tells you all. The, so you can, um, this isn't a kit, this is just instructions, tells you all the fabrics that you need, exactly how to do it. And she really explains very clearly how to cut and where you cut. And nice big diagrams. Because that's important. the quarter square triangles quarter, in it. Oh, QSTs. Yes, QSTs. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very important to talk in jargon. Because yes. you get all these other people in the world who do, and I think I haven't got any jargon. Oh. But QST is, yeah. <laughs> WF. <laughs> it really annoys me on the news when people talk in oh, that. And you I think, know. what makes you think that I know what you're talking about? There was something on the TV yesterday, I think it was, about um, some sort of new graphic, digital graphic... Um, animated things things right. and the, <laughs> the interviewer had um, interviewed these people who are very nice people so obviously seemed to know what they were doing but every two or three words she had to say oh that means right this. we said well don't say it then yeah I thought well why don't you just call it that in the yeah because no, we have no idea what QSD yes. w, yeah. Yeah. WRF yeah so anyway, that's why I'm getting distracted. I get told off from it. That's the Twinkling Stars quilt. I've also got the instructions for the Castellations quilt. When was this demonstrated, Kat? 9th of October. I like that. It's very pretty. Yeah, it's pretty, isn't it? I should have brought it in. should have brought it in. Then you'd remembered. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, I didn't know they were going to be on the show. I'm joking. <laughs> we didn't Sorry. Tell we didn't tell her. Take out my pain. <laughs> Um, again, really clear instructions. How big is this one? 48 by 60 inches. So um, 9 99 for those. So if you'd like to make any of it, Sally's other ones, we've got the Twinkling Stars and the Castellation. Oh, look, there's the quilt. Oh, I love that. That's pretty. And that's so only got squares. What castle were you looking at when you were inspired to make that That was, um, I think that was, was that Windsor Castle? Oh. I was, I, I, nice I, I did say on the show, I've been looking at... Castle. I, had to, I made the, the, the design originally for a charity quilt, mm. and um, I was inspired literally by castellations on the top oh, of the okay. castle. No, or was it Hampton Court? I've been to Hampton Court. Something like that, anyway. Mm. Something royal. Something, yeah, you know, hang around with it. Yeah. <laughs> so that just has squares and long strips. Oh, That's okay. all that is. Right, so quite a good beginner one. It is, and you can use Perfect. stash fabrics or a strip roll. Lovely. Right, thank you. So those, if you want those, they are also available on the website, Nine ninety nine. Okay. So we're going to join, we, you're going to join them together. Well, the we, like because I've done it all out of sequence, I won't put it onto the bottom of this mm. one, which I was going to do because I think it will all just look a mess. So, um, and I have lost one of my blocks. But yes, what you're doing then is following your pattern and then... Yeah, if, so the back of the instructions has got the has layout. Got the layout. So you just follow that to join the bottom. And so in you the make layout, all the rows and then join the rows together. Well... No. No? I've okay. left that as a row because of the, the demo. But um, the pattern asks you to do the centre um, star first. Okay. Which is that. So you start off with the centre square and then you put your half square triangles. These are in the wrong direction. But you put them two at a time, one on each right. side. Right, okay. Then you do the same thing with an extra one on the end. Mm -hmm. And you sew that top and bottom. So that's your centre block. Yeah. Done. So pretty. Then what I tend to do, I do this a lot when I'm joining what look like strips of mm. fabric. I tend to join them in something like a block of four. Oh, okay. 
or a block of six, sometimes eight. But I try as far as possible to join them into blocks of four and then join another block of four. Right. And then okay. another block of four. Part of the reason for that is that when you are trying to sew a strip of um, blocks like this, you've got a lot of seams to match mm. in one go. And there will be some give in the, in the blocks, so you might find they don't join up terribly well. If you do it into squares and then join the squares, you've not got such long seams. It's easier to, to pin and match okay. them. Now, it's entirely up to you. If you prefer to do it the strip mm. length way, that's absolutely fine. But that's the way I find for oh, me. Oh, well, no, that's a really good tip, actually. Yeah, I would have just gone, oh, I'll just join it in rows. Imagine you then got to the centre and thought, oh, that's not going to yeah. work. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You could still join it in rows, but you'd have to have two rows. Yes, that's true. There. And but then you do the borders. And then the borders, as per the image, is the pinky orange goes top and bottom. So that's already cut for you. Are they the same width, these? Oh, no, they're not. No, one's the binding, which is oh, wider. OK. Yeah, I think the, the um, border one, I think it's one and a half inches. Right, wide. so yes, yeah, so the board, they are, so that's really good, isn't it, that they are cut separately. Make sure you use the white one. And then the binding, so it happens to be the same fabric again, because it kind of links the whole quilt. It's two and a half inches. So it must be two inches and two and a half inches. That's folded in half. And with both the, with the borders, the inner border and the thicker outer one, I've joined them with the edges ends butted up together. Right. Okay. Yeah. When I'm doing binding, I always join the strips on so the diagonal. So why do you join borders straight then? Because if, when you're doing a, a binding, you're mm. trying to reduce bulk. And also, by the time you've folded it over and in half, you don't really see an awful lot of it. Mm. So if there is any strength of, the, of design, you really won't notice it. If you're joining strips for a border, I haven't done it in this case, but you can actually match the pattern. Oh, if you right, okay. So if you want to match the pattern, then yeah. Now this one is this one is sort of almost matched itself mm. in a way, but you can if you want to actually match right, oh, the okay. pattern, and you will have enough length to do that if you want to. Also, when you are when you've got a, a borders like these straight long borders, it's easier on the eye if you're seeing um, straight seams, straight. Okay. Don't ask me the psychology behind that, but it, it seems to work. Yeah, okay. Rather Whereas with your binding... Rather than seeing a diagonal seam yeah. at a three-inch yeah. width or something. Yes, yeah, no, that makes sense. The diagonal seam is, is a, possibly less easy to see, mm. but then you can't really join, um, yeah, join the pattern. No, it just never going to work. No, it's never going to work, gonna work. <laughs> especially if you've got stripes. <laughs> 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 no chance. OK, I know that's a really good tip, actually, because I, I mean, I always join my binding a diagonally, but I'm never really sure what, how to join my borders. Again, it's not a hard and fast rule. You can do whichever no, way I, you yeah, like. But you've tried both. But I've tried both. <laughs> and for, for me, that seems to work best. I mean, especially with this one, I haven't joined, joined them accurately. But when anything that's got square or straight lines in it, if you've got a diagonal there, you'll see it much yeah, more obviously. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So it's just a personal preference. Yeah, no, but it's good because, you know, you've learnt these from years of experience and having tried them. Yes. So <laughs> same, same everyone else, <laughs> having to bother. Now, I could just show you on the end here if you wanted me to. Um, yeah, I've got to, about three minutes. Yeah, so I could just show you a little bit of binding. Obviously, would nice. you would have your backing, some wadding, and mm. then the quilt top. So this may not look too brilliant, but we'll give it a go. So I always start off my binding by joining on the diagonal, joining the strips on the diagonal, press in half, wrong sides together, as we've got here, and then usually I fold over one end and press that and trim it away with a quarter inch seam. 
then you have created kind of a little pocket in there. Yes, yes. Yeah. Very good. A little yeah. pocket in there. We're now going to sew quarter an inch long. And what I tend to do is start here to secure it, flip that back, keep sewing for a couple of inches, a few inches, flip that back again, lift your needle and sew through all the layers. Right, okay, so, you've now so created the, the first a little bit's pocket. open. Yeah. Now you can do it just by starting down here, but I sometimes find that gets a bit of flops about it. Okay, it? so rather than pinning it, you can just sew it. No, yeah. no, that makes sense. You can, now you can pin your binding on. If so, I'd pin it with the sharp end of the pin towards the raw edge of the fabric. Mm -hmm. And that's probably true of most things. If you've got the the um, head of the needle the other way, the pin the other way, it's sometimes awkward to get it out, <laughs> out of the way. Yes, yes. And the other thing you can use, of course, which is my favourite thing other than glue pens, mm -hmm. is clips. Clips. Yeah. So, yeah. <coughs> so I'll yes, we love those. Love wonder clips. Yes. Are they out of stock? Uh, that's a shame. I love a wonder clip. I've got loads of them. Use them oh, for yeah. all sorts of things. I've got loads of them. Because they, they, they coffee. They bags. do tend to disappear. I've discovered. So. <laughs> No, and even my dog chews them and they don't break. I take them out of her mouth. They seem to be indestructible, but they do vanish. I don't know where they go. Well, they often vanish for me because I, I put clips labelled on everything um, that I bring here. And I don't always remember to take them all off and it gets put in a bag or a box. And then they're... And then you've got no clips. That's clip. <laughs> because they're all on there. Yeah, that's right. I've lost my blooming binding. I'm having a... Losing, oh, it's on the floor. <laughs> it's probably with the orange square. Yes, probably. <laughs> so, let's try again. Now, we are extremely limited in this kit. You've, ob you've got a lot of you have put in your basket and you've got checked out. So if you want it, you really do need to check out because what will happen is somebody else will want it. They'll go in, put it in their basket, check straight out, and it will just come out of your basket and into theirs. So unless it's checked out, it's not yours, and we are very limited. And um, I don't think we'll be getting it back either. I was told we probably wouldn't. But right. And you do get everything in it. Which is why I couldn't have two of them. That's why you weren't allowed to have two and I've got to look after mine very carefully. <laughs> That's why I've kept it all nice. Um, but you have got all the backing in there. Or you can keep that backing. I would. For your own things because it is beautiful. <laughs> I would. Because it's, it's, you know, 50 inch, you've probably got off cuts of things. You yeah. Oh, yeah. You just use an old sheet. Use an old sheet. I tend to use fleece quite a lot on the back. Do of you? Oh, yeah. OK. I've never, yeah. ever done that. Yeah, I do. Especially if I'm doing things for Project Linus. But also, again, for my mum. Because mm. she liked the fleece on her lap. And then I don't use any wadding then. Yeah, nice. I must try that, actually. Yeah. That's a really good idea. I've never tried it. You need to spray baste it, okay. ideally, because yeah. it can stretch. And I would use a walking foot as well. Right. So here we are. I've created my so little So we can't flap. find this for sale anywhere else. This is the We've had a look in the UK. So if you want the Happy Campus Understage Quilt Kit, the only thing you need yeah, is wadding in a sewing machine. Yep. And Sally's tips, Switch which red. come for free. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> so I've made my little pocket. OK. Now I'm sewing to the corner but I'm going to stop a quarter of an inch from the end mm -hmm. and that's where my little marker on the foot comes in because it's telling it me tells you that you're I'm a quarter, quarter of an right. inch from the end so I'll just do one more stitch and then I tend to reverse back off the raw edge no I can't we can't you have to show us because um you couldn't see from there, the fabric was in the way. No, we need a camera sort of here, don't we? <laughs> so, yeah, so I've sewn to a quarter of an inch from the edge and then just taken the stitches off the okay. raw edge, okay? We're then going to fold the binding so that it's in line with the next raw edge. Mm. So we've come down here, stopped, fold that away and then fold it back again along the raw edge. And I will put a clip in that. And again, start sewing about a quarter of an inch from the edge. 
I'll show you what happens. So the machine that Sally is using is the Elmer Excellence 680 Plus, which is finally back in stock. Oh, we've had so many people asking for it and we haven't been able to get it. We did it on pre-order so that we could guarantee that they can have it straight away. It is finally back in stock and we are doing a special free five year warranty with this Musso machine. Five years. Normally you have to pay like loads extra. They phone you up and say, do you want a five year? And you go, no, thank you. And then she said, yes. It's a lovely machine to sew with actually. Um, I haven't got one. Mm. But if I'm in the market for one, again, I, I will be. It's so smooth. Have you? I mean, you just got on it and used it. Yes. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, because, I mean, it's not my normal machine. Which is lovely, isn't it? Because I think often you think when you're going to buy a new sewing machine, that, oh, I'm never going to be able to work it. But it is a beautiful machine, isn't it? It is. And, and people say, oh, there's so many things on it. Just do one at a time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go straight stitching first. Go straight works. stitch. Go to the next, you know, a zigzag. Mm. And another thing I would recommend if you if you can and you've got the time, make a stitch book. Mm. So you have fabric sheets that you stitch each stitch and you write down what number it is. And then once you've done that and you've learned how to do those stitches, then try and play with width, stretching yeah. the stitches. But it's computerised, it works it all out for it you, which is wonderful, yeah, isn't it? And it's, it's got really so many good extras it's got a walking foot which is fantastic isn't yeah it? i'm a walking foot's invaluable when yeah. you're quilting so if you are looking to buy a new sewing machine this is one of our most popular machines which is why it's been out of stock for so long we have been waiting and waiting for it to come back in 1249 um it just sounds like a dream it does or you can do it on five split payments if you want to split um the pay equally over five months without paying any interest at all you pay 249.80 now and it will be sent straight to you and it comes direct from Elmer. We don't get involved with that, but it is only 3.95 postage, which is amazing. So I'll just anyway, finish this final corner. binding, sew yes. down there, fold it back, fold mm. it across again, and you end up with this little flap. flap. So when you fold that to the back of the quilt and hand sew it, I would normally hand sew it, you have a really neat little corner oh that's nice and that is called a mitered binding right i don't know whether the mitre is because that looks like a mitre <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i've often wondered that like these are about mitered corners well i think in, in woodwork when they're joining yeah two pieces of of wood a bit like joining on the diagonal with the fabric mm. i think a mitre is is the way okay. to go you can also sew the binding to the back of the quilt bring it forward Yes. and machine sew it on okay because not everybody do. likes hand sewing i do i do i'm a bit of a hand sewer pinner i love sewing the binding on. Oh, I, love it. I don't like doing it but i do do oh, it i do i love it <laughs> not taking orders but <laughs> <laughs> yeah sally loves doing it so send her all you um <laughs> spare bits of thread and just sew your binding for you as well um thank you so much sally today it's been fantastic i have learned loads loads it's great i'm gonna there's a lot of things i'm gonna Get with the donkey, yeah, and I'm going to get the tape or the bit of paper on the edge. Yeah. So, yeah. It. but thank you so much. Do you know when you're back with this? I haven't got a date yet, but I'm working on a new design. Oh, so. exciting! Exciting. Possibly one for the jubilee. Oh, but that maybe not be. Next. I don't know. But anyway, I am working on one. For well, the that'll jubilee. be lovely. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to work with you this you morning. Too. Um, so. Do remember to check out for this kit. Don't forget, you get everything that you need. You get the instructions. Oh look, we're down. Um, not up. Confuse me. Um, all instructions with the layout diagrams, with the photos in the diagram of the actual fabric, which is brilliant. The, it's all the fabric is pre-cut, and it's lovely that it's split into groups. So you've got six coloured, six white, six coloured. You don't even need to do any of that cutting. It's all in here. So all of the um, five-inch squares are pre-cut, all in order. You've got the um, border strip pre-cut. The slightly wider binding strip pre-cut you've got the fabric that's used for the wide border and then you've got the backing fabric which you can just keep for something else but it, you know for to make it beautifully matching it's the same print as the orange in here and one of the um greens in in the charm pack as well so fantastic value 84.99 for designer fabric from jennifer paganelli it's called um happy camper I think it's just happy flowers, really. It's be absolutely stunning kit. And as Sally said, you know, if you are new to quilt, new to sewing, you've just started sewing and you really would love to have a go at a patchwork quilt, this is very achievable. 
and it takes the, the difficulty and the measuring out for you. It's all done. Um, don't forget to you know write down today's date, 21st of Feb. Then you can um, watch it back when you get your kit at home. But we are very limited in stock now. So if you want it and it's in your basket, you really need to check out because we won't be getting them back in. Anyway, after the break, we've still got Sunshine, I'm confused. Yes, we are. After the break, it's all about the pre-cut and some fantastically inspirational books. So I'll see you back in a couple of minutes and we'll be going through all of that. Thank you. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Hi everyone, my name is Jules Mayouf and I'm really excited to be a guest designer on Sewing Street. It's combining two of my favourite things which are sewing and designing. Uh, I live in London at the moment but I'm originally from Staffordshire uh, so I think I've got a combination of two really great things so London's really diverse and um, lots of different cultural impacts and then Staffordshire is very rural so there's a lot of country influence in what I do. My grandma first taught me to sew when I was in my early teens. She was a dressmaker and she was always sewing and taking in orders from different people um, and I think I got my initial love of sewing from her. Um, I started making my clothes uh, because I couldn't find anything that was fashionable so I created my own fashion. A um, bit dubious at times probably. I remember once I um, bought some really lovely, as I thought, heavy brocade material. I created a pencil skirt, thought that was fabulous. It turned out to be curtaining uh, and I got quite a lot of stick from that. But uh, you know, in my defence, I was a new romantic and I, I think I was just fashion forward. Um, I have done a lot of um, teaching and coaching and mentoring uh, in sewing in my career. Um, and I would think that probably the best tip that I can give to people, because um, all age groups have various challenges, but the best tip is to be kind and good to yourself and don't worry about if you make mistakes because you've always got your seam ripper to hand. I'm really looking forward to my shows with Sewing Street and helping you have some hints and tips and knowledge. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 73 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in to our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 till 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So, you never have to spend a minute without us. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV fans on Facebook and click join group. It's that simple. 
Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! And welcome back to Sewing Street. Oh, look at this bright light. It's like an angel, isn't it? An angel. And I'm going to be talking to you about this in a minute. I'm, um, this hour is all about pre-cuts, but I just want to go back to the book cushions because I know a lot of you didn't join, weren't here at, with me at 8 a.m. Where were you? So if you weren't here at 8 a.m. and you missed the book cushions, I'm just going to bring them back to you because we have got a few of them left. So fantastic. Now these book cushions, they are, let me show you one of them, totally totally brand new and totally exclusive to Sewing Street, designed for us. So they're brilliant. So you know the book cushions that you make for children and you have a cushion and you put the book in it. These are more, um, well, they will suit any age and any gender as well and any interest. So they have a pocket there. The purple one says just one more chapter. You've got a pocket in the front. You can divide the pocket so you can have one section for your glasses. You can put your Kindle in it. You can put your book in it. You can put sweets, biscuits. Um, somebody messaged in a bottle of wine, thinking that's a good idea. Um, they have an optional handle. And then look at the back of the cushion. Features books. Brilliant for personalising. So you could even embroider your favourite. You could put the favourite books down there. If you were making this for a present for somebody, you could embroider their name on. Um, you can add lots of it. You could put your favourite book quotes on here on there. It's really, really um, versatile, versatile. So the panel, the panel, which is on my desk, has um, the instructions printed on it. So $14.99, you get everything you need. It's huge. All the instructions are there, written by Jules, and she's made it, so they all make sense. Um, we've got the front of the cushion with the whole library of purple books. Then you've got the fabric for the handle. Obviously, if you don't want a handle, you don't need to, um, but that's optional. You've got, there's the front of the pocket that says just one more chapter. Um, then we've got the lining for the pocket, and I think that's lovely. So you've got that piece that you don't even see, that's the pocket lining. And then that's the back of the cushion. So. Um, some people have messaged in to say they're going to make a bag with those. Jules actually used part of hers and made a little drawstring bag with it because if you want to make, you can make two cushions because you could use the back for the front. The bit that's for the pocket lining, you can make that into a pencil case, all sorts. But fantastic value, $14.99. Brand new today, totally exclusive to Sewing Street. Now, it comes in three different colours, but each one has a different quote. So that's the purple, just one more chapter. Um, the blue... It says, shh, I'm reading. Do you want to show that one on the overhead or? There we go. Shh, shh, I'm reading. I love that one. Again, so look, it's all in there. So there's the inside of there. The inside is beautiful, isn't it? So it's really, it's nice little finishing touches like that, you know, that the lining has got the books in it. It's just nice when you look into it, it really goes together. I mean, obviously you could use your own lining and save that, but it just looks lovely. Um, Jules put a little bit of wadding in the cushion, which is lovely because if in the pocket, if you were going to put your glasses in or something, it gives it a bit more protection. And then there's the back of it. I love the blue one. I think that's gorgeous, isn't it? Again, leave it as it is for a very quick make, or, um, you know, put your name on, your names of your favourite books. You can go as as large as you want. Brilliant. Um, you know, you can have one on each of your sofa, one for you, one for somebody else. And, and I think they're lovely. They could be used for children. So if you could keep the pocket completely open without the dividers for the larger children's books. Or if you're giving somebody um, a book as a present, Maybe you were thinking Mother's Day or birthday or Easter. Make them one of these cushions as well. What a lovely, lovely thing to have. So that one says, shh, I'm reading. And then finally, and the most popular of today, is the mustard one. It's called yellow, but it's mustard, really. Sort of yet shades of mustard and ochre and orange. And this one says, please go away, I'm reading. Fair enough. <laughs> 
Jewel's embroidered over over the top of hers, a bit of hand embroidery. So the you know just to show you can put whatever you want on yours, and then that's the back of the cushion. So the background section is grey, and you've got them. But when you look at the way it's been designed, it has a real three D feel to it. It actually looks like a bookcase just because of the sort of the different areas of shadows. I think it's really really clever. Forty ninety nine. Remember, you get all the instructions. That one's got. a this one does have a grey handle. It was just, that was the prototype that Jules made. So you just have to choose which colour. There have been a lot of you who've been multi-buying because they want the different colours for different people or, you know, so they've got their own. You don't have to make a cushion. As several people said, the brilliant panel for making a tote bag for, um, you know, if you're going to book club or you want to take it out somewhere because they are so lovely. You know, you don't often see fabric like this, you know. So if you wanted to make, this could be the front of the bag. Um, make that as the front of the bag, make that as the back of the bag, make two bags and then you've got these extra pieces, you can make it into a little drawstring bag, um, you know it'd be brilliant for kids to take to school to just have a few little books, making a little book bag for school, gorgeous. Anyway, anyway, for those of you who weren't with me at eight o'clock, just thought we'd show them to you. Um, if you want to go back and watch the demo, you'll, it'll be on YouTube. And there's nothing, there's no applique, there's no bonder web needed. You know, if you want to put some wadding into the pocket to give it a little bit of extra squishiness and the front of the cushion, you can, but you don't need to. And very simply as well, Jules just stuffed it with soft toy filling and sewed it up. So if you don't really want to be bothered with zips either, then you can do that too. Right. Now, I wanted to also bring to you the native lighting ring light, and um, purely because I've got one of these. We've only got four. I bought myself one just before Christmas because um, I take a lot of photos for instructions and things and I wanted to use it for that. So I bought myself one and it is fab. It's, um, a lot of people also use it when they're filming videos and things, videos and YouTubes. But what I think it's really good for is because it has three settings. It's got warm light, daylight and then cool light. Um, brilliant to use as a light a working light in your lounge if you're doing if you want to do some color matching you could use the warm light if you just want some extra light also this time of year when we're just not getting much daylight having this as a ring light in the corner of your room it just gives you that extra daylight so turns on i mean it comes with um the uh, bleh, the plug so you just plug it into the mains and then it has the stand which folds up into about this long by about this wide comes in a little cardboard box as well which is quite nice it all folds up quite flat and then the whole light itself which is just this section and the cable comes in this lovely big black zip up bag uh, with handles and then I just store that under my table so it all folds away really nicely so once you've plugged it in then you just turn it on and off like this then you can choose where which of the light settings you have it in so you can go um, daylight sort of cool light, I'd say. It's more like, it's a bit lighter. Um, I think it's called cool. And warm light. I use the daylight because I'm taking photos. Now, it also comes with three adjustable arms that you can put your phone in. Um, and they, they go like this so you can get bigger ones in. Now, it comes with three because some people want to use one phone for um, photos, one for videos, whatever. I just use one of mine. Um, and it comes with the remote control and all you have to do is download an app onto your phone and then using that app you can then take photos with your phone and you don't need to be there so if you were maybe wanting to do some demonstrations or maybe you're sitting using it while you're stitching and you want to turn it up because you can also change the um brightness so we can go i think we're probably on fully bright so we can go if you press that that will take it down and then if you press that, that will take it up. So you can change that. So say maybe you're sewing in the evening and you think I want it a bit brighter, you can use remote control. It's mainly designed really for people who are doing videos or um, maybe, you know, you know, everyone at home at the moment is doing Zoom calls. A lot of people are using these behind their computer so that the light is shining on their face and then it gives you more light, but you can use your remote control for that. You don't have to, you can obviously just use the things. Now, the way I use it is because it is fully adjustable, I flip it down so it's sitting right above the desk. Really good way for taking photos. Love mine. And it change, changes in height, so you can go up and down with it as much as you want. It's all, it's all lovely, fully adjustable. 
So mine goes like this. Oops, I might go. That one's a bit tight, isn't it? Do that one. So I have mine like this. And then I bring that one down. Actually, I do a bit like this. So quite often, so I've got my, if I'm taking a flat, sh a photo of something for a walkthrough, I can have that above my desk. Oh, let's tighten that up a bit. Um, see, and, and it will tighten. And then you can either put the phone in here, or sometimes I just you hold my phone above and you can take the pictures. It's brilliant. And then you can just adjust the control that you have. Message from Julie. I got the ring light from you in lockdown. It's the best purchase I made next to my sh scene machines. I sew for longer and no eye strain from Julie. Exactly. So I think this was marketed to start with as something for people who were doing photographs or were doing YouTubes, but actually it is a brilliant working light. So I use it, if in the evening I used to stop off, and I, I would never match colours or choose colours in the evening, but with this one, if you put it on the daylight light setting, you've got absolutely perfect colour match. So can highly recommend it as my own personal purchase. I'll put it back up. Let me give you some technical features. Um, sits on a tripod. Yes, it does. This. I can't lift it up. It does sit on a tripod. Uh, we, it very, very height adjustable as well. Now, it is LED, so it's not hot at all. It is slightly, slightly lukewarm to the touch is about it. But it doesn't burn at all, which is great because I touch mine all the time. And you do get, oh, it is called warm, cool and daylight. I either use warm or daylight, so I can't remember what the other one was called. Um, yeah, three holders for mobile device, so you can use it for filming or watching videos or for photography. It does have touch sensitive buttons, which is brilliant because I'm always changing mine and I don't have to think too much about it. Um, yeah, you can connect it to your phone. As I say, you just download an app and it's free as well. It doesn't cost you anything in the app. And then you can use that for using the little remote control. See, now it doesn't say on there. It comes in a lovely bag. And it's this lovely black sort of canvassy bag that has a zip all the way around. So it opens out flat. You can put your light in. And also the bag is padded. And it has two handles. So once I, I zip all mine up, because I think, well, I was worried about this breaking. But then I can just sort of put that in the corner of the room or under the table. I always put the legs fold up pretty flat. You know, about the box is about two, three inches square. And they all, that will fold up into a long tube. So it's out of the way. And also, because it's got the tripod, you can sort of get it underneath, you know, you can get it right up close to a table. But it's it's so adjustable. So many different parts of it that are adjustable as well. Now, this is sent straight from native lighting. Well, oh, so Michelle's asked how long delivery. Well, I'll tell you what, I ordered mine on um, the 20, you know, I ordered it on the 22nd of December and I got it on Christmas Eve. Now, how impressive is that? Because I bought it thinking I need this for after Christmas because I've got some photography to take. And I got it Christmas Eve. Very impressive. So the delivery is very good. Now, that was my personal experience. How long? I can't guarantee how long it will take. But it comes, you pay your 3 95 postage. That covers it all. And it comes straight, direct to you. And they also tell you when it's going to come as well. You get, I had various emails that told me when it was going to come, or texts, can't remember. Um, but it will come separately. So if you've ordered other things, because this is sent direct from Native Light and it will come from them. But um, it's, oh, I love it, the fact that it isn't hot at all, because you think, when you look how bright this is, in the old days, you'd have burnt your fingers. But I love mine, love mine. And you... And you imagine putting this, you know, in your sewing room and it does make a difference or just it's actually quite attractive, isn't it? Or just in the corner of your room. Look, see, and then you can just frame yourself in the centre of it. <laughs> um, yeah, Vic's bought one for a makeup, a makeup room. Has she got a makeup room? <laughs> I put my makeup on the top of the toilet and it is really, it is really good. Oh, we've got a picture of Maisie playing with it. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. You see, it shows how not hot it is. In fact, Maisie's touching it. But they, it is. The, uh, the, I, I use the daylight setting mainly. But you don't have to. You can have the other one. You can have the warm. We don't only have four available. But... Oh, yeah, so they, uh, yes, sorry, Kat was just saying. Yeah, do, they've been on, um, Native Light and been on Jewelry Maker recently, and they loved it. Because, again, it's really good for the, um, 
it's really good for those sort of fine details where you really need to make sure. And I think it's actually quite an attractive light. Also, if you don't want to have the foam bit, you don't have to. They screw in. See? So you don't have to have that bit if you don't want to. And it comes with three of them, but that's up to you. Um, now, remember, if you want to um, spread your payments on this, it is available in three equal payments of 31.99. I don't know why it's on split pay. Not supposed to have split pay. Anyway, just a special offer. So you will pay one payment of thirty one ninety nine now. It will be sent straight to you from Native Lighting, and then the other two payments you'll have at monthly intervals. But you will get it straight away. And honestly, um, there's there's not. I'd like to say there's not many things I buy from Sojourner because there actually are, but not um, bigger products like this by lots of fabrics and stuff. And I can personally tell you how much I love it. It's brilliant. Well, Vix has bought one. John's got one. Oh, has he not got the ring light? He's got one of the others, hasn't he? Mm. They are really good, but I would say, you know, they're very good for things like photographs and Facebook Live and Zooms and stuff, but they're also really good for sewing. Oh, Christine, Christine's daughter's friend's got one as a makeup artist. Yeah, they're great for that. But you know what I, in the, in the evening, I often don't use my sewing machine in the evening, just because I know my sewing machine's got quite a good light, but it's just not the same. But if I put this, oh, only three left now, only three. Mm. Well done if you've got it and you've checked out. But if you put this in the corner of your sewing room or you can angle it over your sewing machine, makes quite a big difference. And it's quite a nice, um, it's not like a single light because it's the whole ring. It's not sort of blinding. It gives you a better light, lighting coverage. Anyway, anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. Just wanted to, uh, so those, so that's the gorgeous ring light. And for those of you who haven't been with me since eight o'clock this morning, I missed the book cushion. Now the purple was the most popular. So when we finished at nine o'clock, the yellow was the most popular and pop popular, popular. And now the purple's the most popular. The purple's my favorite, but I think that's because it says just one more chapter. And that's one of my favorite. I, well, I hadn't realised a favourite saying something I say to myself quite a lot. Oh, just one more chapter. It's 3am. <laughs> Let's head on over to the other desk where my cup of tea is waiting for me. It's going to be cold in a minute, isn't it? Oh, no, it's still quite warm. Oh, lovely. That was an Earl Grey as well. Mm -mm. Just to remind you that the 680 is back in stock plus. 680 plus. Lots of you have been asking about it. It is one of our most popular machines. Congratulations to those of you who have already checked it. So John Scott owns it, so it must be brilliant. Because, you know, you think how many machines he gets to play and lo love and talk to people about. But I wonder if he got the five-year warranty with it, but he didn't. So we're doing a special, a special celebratory offer with it that when you buy the Elna 680 Plus, you get five years free warranty. So now, the machine is sent to you direct from Elna. The warranty comes from Elna. It's nothing to do with us. I'm not sure we would know how to mend sewing machines. But this comes direct from Elna, the five-year warranty. It is kind of all the bells and whistles machine. It's a computerised sewing machine, which means it does the thinking for you. It has got oodles of feet, including a walking foot. It's just a beautiful machine. Been out of stock for ages. Lots of you have been asking for us. We, we did allow people to buy on pre-order because Elna were waiting for it. And we didn't think it was going to be until this week or maybe next. And we're lucky it's come back in. So if you're thinking about buying a new sewing machine, either whether it's your first one, your second one, your tenth one, this is a fantastic machine because it it's easy to use. I mean, I'd like to say it has loads of features. Say it's obvious it's got loads of features. Obviously, it's computerised. Obviously, it's got all loads and loads of different feet and everything. But it's actually very simple to use, and I think that's what makes the difference. Is that we often buy a machine um, and think, well, I'm not going to need that, so I'll just get the next one. And then after six months, you need the next one again and you need the next one. Or you say, oh, well, I don't need all those stitches, all those 200. But actually on this machine, a lot of the stitches are really utility stitches, ones that you need for, um, look at them, look at them all. Stretch, so a lot of the ones, the ones are all here, this section, they are all your machine stitches for like hemming, overcasting, seaming, um, jersey fabric. 
So you know someone says, can you take my T-shirt up for me? And you think, well, I'm not with my zigzag. But this has special stitches for that. So a lot of these stitches, there are buttonhole stitches, not just one, but there are six buttonhole stitches. So you haven't got 200 decorative stitches. Well, it's not 200, it's more than that anyway. A lot of them are for specific uses for sewing with either fine fabrics, thick fabrics, stretch fabrics, whether you're overcasting, hemming, overcasting and hemming. You've also got all the alphabets, which means that you can embroider things. So if you want to personalise something or if you need to name things and you don't want to sew in the name tapes, you can. all you do is you set the machine really simple to do because it's been designed to make it simple. I mean, Sally used this today and she hadn't been on it before. She just jumped on the machine, did it easy, easy. It is lovely. Now, we have had quite a lot of YouTube demonstrations for this. Um, ask on the fans page, you know, this this is what Sewing Street is all about. It's about you guys because you are our community. You know, you, you dip in and out, you join me at eight, you join me at 10. Some people watch all morning, but you all are a wonder, wonderful community. I mean, I'm on the fan page all the time. And when I see some of you and asking a question, I think, oh, I know the answer, and I think 58 answers. Okay, I don't need to now, <laughs> because you all help out. Ask other people what they think about it. You know, there's no point in us stocking items that are rubbish, because you tell us, you know, we want you to enjoy sewing, and this is a fantastic purchase. So congratulations to those of you who have checked out on it today. So exciting, and you know what? When you get it, get it straight out the box. Just plug it in thread it up and do a straight stitch. Think about everything else afterwards. But I know so many of you have said, well, oh, I haven't opened the box yet. I'm so, honestly, this is really easy. And actually, threading it up is really simple. When I first um, threaded up the on the machines, it's got numbers on it. So you just follow the numbers. It's lovely. And it's got all the feet. It's got loads of feet down here, the extra ones. But all the feet that you use day in, day out um, are in this section here. <laughs> if you do the do it the right way around. So the ma the basic feet are in here, easy. You've got loads of other feet in here and you've got a walking foot. There is also, which I haven't got here, a huge extension table. There, there's a picture with the extension table. So you know when you're doing something big, maybe you're sewing a denim or a canvas bag, or maybe you're sewing a big quilt and you want the support so it doesn't keep falling off onto the floor. And then you have to sort of like wrap it over your arm or sometimes I've done it with quilts and put it over my shoulder. That extra tape, which it comes with, fits onto the end of there. I mean, obviously, all of this is removable. Now, all of the extra thing, the walking foot that it comes free with is £50 if you buy it separately. I mean, you know, that's not an extra thing to us. But what I'm saying, like my machine that I bought a few years ago didn't come with a walking foot and I had to pay £70 for it. This does come with it. A five-year warranty, because you know you you expect to buy uh, a machine with a year warranty, don't you? I mean that's pretty standard. But a five-year warranty, so you are guaranteed that you've got whole five years worth of cover, and it's the manufacturers as well. It also comes with a case, a carry case, a soft one, but a nice one. It's red actually, lovely case. But the um, the manual is very easy to understand. We've been through it loads of times, and it's got everything that you need to know. And there is so much so many features so this really is kind of you wouldn't need another machine you wouldn't need anything better than this it really has got everything but it's you know you could buy a machine that was say five six hundred pounds but sometimes what will happen is that you then move on you think mm, i need that extra table i need the extra bit it's just a beautiful machine to use it's a pleasure but well done for, for those of you who have checked out on yours today. Congratulations. And let me know when you get it and open the box on the day it arrives and have a play. Oh, we only have two ring lights left now. They are fab though. Just to let you know, don't want you to miss out. Hmm? The miniature, well, I was just looking at the miniature quilt block book actually. And it's really, and it's really nice, but I'm just going to have some of my tea. Hmm. Who doesn't love a cup of Earl Grey? Now, I love these miniature quilts because now I have seen this one because we did this one on air. This is lovely, isn't it? Um, now, obviously, it's lovely to make a big full double bed quilt, but miniature quilts means that you can practice those skills 
but with small pieces of fabric in miniature and they are absolutely beautiful so you've got general advices and techniques talks about um the you know the basics behind it how to do free mo um paper piecing free motion and then how to make the quilts i mean look at that this is 12 by 13 inches and you know and to me because it's fabric and it's textured that's more beautiful than a picture isn't it that is a work of art and it's just absolutely gorgeous and you don't need very much um fabric this is real scrap busting stuff 12.99 there's a lot in this this is one one book that i absolutely love i mean look at that one twilight in paris again 12 by 12 inches now obviously <coughs> you can make loads of these and put them all together into a big quilt and make a whole big quilt block but i think just as a little picture or use it for a book cover or put it with other blocks i mean it's absolutely stunning little quilt hanger you put it on the wall you, because you've um if you bind the edges with some fabric behind it it just will hang on its own and it is stunning isn't it i mean look at them so this is done using foundation paper piecing so if you've not done that before good place to start in a small thing talks about all the quilting as well and gives you even gives you a quilting template for it i mean that is beautiful isn't it again that's 11 and three quarter by 11 three quarters so this is foundation paper piece but all the templates are in there i mean that is just a work of art isn't it there's something just so appealing about miniature i mean look at it so in the back let me show you just so you can see all those all those templates are in the back so all the all of the templates are are in there so you have got everything you need but i just i think this is stunning my favorite one i mean i love look, look at that schoolhouse and i that's only nine by nine inches oh it's just delicious isn't it love little things that one's really lovely mm, that's rather nice isn't it somebody's going on their travels navigator and what's great about them because they're little you can spend the time on the quilting and you spend the time on the boiling because there isn't so much of it very impressive but no i'm coming to my oh that's nice pineapple i love this one we need to do more of these in fact oh wow look at that one i just that's just incredible isn't it the detail involved in that but because it's foundation paper piece it's probably quite simple this is my favourite one, and I think that's because it's the one on the cover. Night Cruise on the River Thames. I mean, that is a work of art. A bit bigger, this one. It's 22 inches square. But that has a picture on your wall. And you, you need so little fabric as well. And a lot of this is um, the quilting in it as well. But it explains it all. It's all explained in detail. Nice close-up photos of how to do it. So, and because they're quite little, you know, you can really spend the time on them, but it's gorgeous, isn't it? Now, this is the one that we did the pan, um, as a panel. I love that one. Just, so that's real scraps, isn't it? All you're using is all your little bits of turquoises and blues, and it, you know, you just use different shade levels on it, and then in applique a seagull. But it's all about the quilting. So you've got a few sparkly threads. You've got a bit of interest. And, but because it's actually explained really well, look, you can see here, it shows you here how to do the different, where the different colours go. That's what gives you that sense of depth when you look at it. And if it oh, one ring light left. One ring light left. I can't be singing now. <laughs> one ring light left. Mariner's Compass. That's lovely. There's just so much detail. I, if anyone has made any from here, can you send me a picture? I'd love to see them. <clears throat> yeah, I need, I need this book because I really want to make one of these. And then oh, look at the quilting, all the quilting in the red thread afterwards. Look, beautiful, isn't it? But when you're doing it on a small piece like this, it's not so bad. But, you know, that is very impressive because you sometimes see these, you know, when you go to like quilt exhibitions and you think, oh, wow, that's really clever. But this book tells you how to do it. So you can be, you can be the quilt expert as well. This one has got silk ribbon embroidered flowers on it. I think twelve ninety nine is an amazing price for this, actually. Now, the less than 10 of these left, it's, 
it's gorgeous isn't it the problem is is we never see it because you want to put it with the project but it uses such small pieces of fabric oh well that's beautiful trapunto with shading blue like a wedge and it's only 10 inches square so i guess you're using um well, do you know what? I think you are just using white fabric. This is amazing. So it's white cotton fabric, but the blue is created, if you look really close, is created by sort of blue stipple quilting. So actually all the fabric is white, but it's the quilting. And because it's very dense here and very dense here, then it creates that, almost makes the fabric look blue. Oh, isn't that beautiful? And then you stuff it afterwards. Look at that one. Just have a go. You know, I think for one of them, because it comes with all of the templates as well, can you imagine, you know, if you if you had to buy the pattern for one, it would probably cost this, but everything's on here. Look at it. It's all on there. All the templates, all the quilting templates, all on there, all the FPP, and obviously you'd need to, you'll have to photocopy them. There's even... The, the sea, there's the seagull with all the different bits you need for him. Beautiful. I would really like one of these, actually. I say that every week, though. It's an absolute nightmare because um, I just want all of them. Um, a big bundle of... This one. Oh, the natural Osnaburg. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Three and a half metres of natural Osnaburg. I like Osnaburg. It's like calico if you've never used it, but it's softer. So it's what people use for, I mean, like calico, you can use it for um, twirls, you can use it for doll making, tote bag making, lining, cushion making. It is softer than calico, but it has that little fleck in it. It's really good for embroidery whether it's hand or machine, because it's weightier than quilting cotton, but not as thick as canvas. Uh, it's the fleck that it in it's lovely. So if you love calico, this is like posh calico. A lot of people who do machine embroidery and hand embroidery will use it. It's really good for um, backs of cushions, things. I mean, because it's very inexpensive, 18 pounds for three and a half meters. You save one pound fifty, but for your, it's it's just love. It's lovely, and it's it's hard. To, I wish I could show you. You need to feel it, but it drapes beautifully, and it's. I know it's called backing bundle. I think that's because again, you could use it for quilt. So it is got a, It is slightly thicker than quilting weight cotton, but not. You know, you could use it with quilting fabric. So say you were making a like I'm going to do at some point a red and calico quilt. You could use this with, alongside. It's not, um, yeah, it would look lovely with that willow fabric that we had earlier, because it, but it's not too weighty. You have to be very careful when you mix different fabrics, particularly when you're quilting, but it's similar. It just is slight, it's just a slightly weightier, but it would look beautiful with the, um, oh, the willow fabrics. Look at these that we had earlier, if you're with me at, ooh, what time was that? Nine o'clock. But because I was saying earlier that these Willow, um, this new collection from the Willow collection is got like a natural linen kind of background. But look, doesn't it look beautiful together? So this Willow Fabric Mebga bundle, there's 13 half metres, one of every half metre, one of every fabric from the collection. And you get half a metre for free. So if I show you one, two, three, these are beautiful, aren't they? If you like red and white, You'll love red and linen even more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. I just had this horror that I'd go, 12. There you go. But you see how well they go? So if you have this, um, well, you've got, six and a half metres there anyway, but if you've got a project in mind, something you want to do and you all you want to back it, this is absolutely ideal, but doesn't it go together beautifully? It'll look really nice with red as well. Just saying, that because I have a thing about that. 
18 pounds and three pence that's for the Osnaberg. if you'd like to have the willow fabric mega bundle which we only have a few left of now 83 pounds 88 it's designer quality it's Wyndham fabrics um, it features shades of denim chambray and indigo with a linen effect background but it's the color of linen as you can see from this beautiful like well an antique linen not a light linen gorgeous Keep checking out for both of those. Okay. Um, Charming Shadow. So this was a, a design, a, <coughs> a set of instructions that you could use five inch squares for. Now we did do the birds as five inch squares. This is what we use them for. But this can be used to frame or to highlight any squares they i mean these have got birds on they could be used if you've got a charm pack that you love if you've got some fabrics that you really want to highlight this is absolutely ideal 9.99 um you've got everything that you need to know in here sort of so how you create the shadow effect it's really e it's actually quite easy the way it's done all you need is gray fabric and a light fabric so either white or cream or ivory and in the instructions it explains how you sew the squares to the gray bits they're then sewed to the side of the charm squares and then to the bottom and then how to create it into a whole quilt. Now, a lot of people I know have used this for maybe they've got a charm pack, um, something they really love, like a cave charm pack or a Tula Pink or a Liberty, and they want to frame them. So the finished quilt is hanging is 32 by 25. But once you've worked out the technique of creating this shadow, you can then use that and make it even bigger use it for any technique so 9.99 and it explains exactly how to do it and how to bind it and even how to quilt it to because it's important the way that you quilt it to make the shadow stand out so keep checking out for that one we have some of our own pattern right oh this one's nice oh now these are 10 inch squares yeah, we don't often have, I haven't seen many 10 inch squares. So this huge panel is 19.99, and it is, oh, I've got to get, I'm trying to get the right side up. I turned it around four times. Um, they're all 10 inch squares. They've all got a slight separation between them, so you can really cut them to how you want. Beautiful, aren't they? I love this trailing vine. We've got a navy one with white flowers. I like the colour of this one here beautiful green it's very um arts and crafts isn't it so you've got on this panel you have got 20 10 inch squares for 19.99 that is amazing value for money and you think of all the um the different quilts and projects you can do you know if you when you buy the 10 inch because this is what if you buy a layer cake or a charm pack they're nearly always 10 inch squares when you get an extra strip down the side as well but look at the patterns and prints involved them i mean the d and the colors i love the blues gorgeous aren't they well, that is fantastic value for money so 19.99 for 20 of them mm, that's pretty good gorgeous aren't they lovely if you think of all the different things if you want to just do some small projects you know you could um join four of them together make a cushion brilliant for doing like half square triangles the ones that sally did and the her first hour would be lovely because you could just put two of them together i mean she did hourglass so she made quarter square triangle really simple to do with these so you could use them for your patchwork really good for bits and pieces if you need them for fpp and applique um you can make them into little cosmetic purses by, so either use them individually, join them together to make bigger things. You could make tote bags, cushions. Four of the, if you cut them all out, you could put all the blue ones together to make a blue cushion or just go random with them. Really good thing to add to your stash because you've got 20 different squares for 19.99, and that's just um, fantastic value for money, I think. Now I've got another one as well. Yay. And the next one is called Jasmine. That looks pretty. That looks like the pretty one. That's the traditional one. Got this the right way up this time. Oh, this is nice. That looks very um, summery, pretty, floral. So we've got lovely sort of spearmint, minty greens, pinks. 
lovely teal colours there as well. Um, there's lots of the same prints, but just in different colours. I love this one here. Look at that one. You've got lovely, like, very fresh, almost apple green with spots all over the background. And then the pretty pe pink peonies. So, again, in here you have got 20 different 10-inch squares for 19.99. Join them together, cut them into pieces, sew them back up. Brilliant for, um, you know, if you cut them into little two-inch squares, beautiful for miniature patchwork. Very simple pillowcases. If you may, you know, maybe you want to make a load of drawstring bags. Very simple for that. It's um, beautiful. It's quilting weight cotton. Isn't it lovely? Look at the prints on them. Totally exclusive to Sewing Street. You cannot get this anywhere else, only us. We're so lucky, aren't we, that we managed to have our own fabric printed for us. 19.99. And in fact, as you look at it more, when you keep looking at them all, I think what I'd do is I'd cut them all out first so I could see what they all look like. But then, you know, you could just keep them four. So say you wanted to make a cushion, you could keep these four joined together and cut round the edge, quilt down the middle, easy. So it depends on what you want to do with them. But you know when you need little bits of fabric, maybe a pocket lining or the lining for a purse or the lining for a pocket in a bag and you want something just a bit different, a bit pretty, it's all here. It's a really lovely thing to have in your stash to, to get you going for. Give you some inspiration for other things as well. Guess just, yes, I know we were, Sally and I were talking about getting your sojo back and sometimes it's the right project and the right fabric that just does it, isn't it? Just folding back up. Backwaters. Is that that one? Is that flat? No. No, that's called stacks. Which one's flower garden? That's hedgehogs. This one? Okay. Oh, this is pretty. You know when you just want a little pack of five fat quarters, six ninety nine for five of them. They're really pretty. Look, I've got a pig polka dot. I've got little green checks. Look at that one. Blue, little bumblebees and flowers. And the flowers. Can I open it? Oh, good. Good. One thirty nine. So we've got a pink dot. We. This is very very good value for money. Not allowed to say cheap because it isn't it's very good value for money look at this one look it's got bees and flowers with buttons oh and i'm even going to unfold this one because it's so lovely peas i think they're are they peas i feel they're peas in pods that's got look so you've got button flowers and peas in pods love that one how can this only be 6.99 this is this is 100% cotton, isn't it? Yeah. No. 100% cotton. They're all five fat quarters, 18 by 21 inches, five of them. And then we've got a little pink um, butterflies, but the wings are gingham. What a beautiful little set. Add that to your order, even if you only buy it for the peas in the pods. But actually, then if you're making something, oh, I just want to make a little... So, you can, yeah, you're getting a metre and a quarter, actually, if you added it all up. I know. And when we can manage, when we get a half metre for 6 99 we're quite pleased. So, this is a metre and a quarter, but they're so pretty, aren't they? And I love that one, the fact that the flowers have got all buttons in the centre of them and little bees. What a beautiful little fat quarter set. Um, inspiration. Inspiration, all have a bit of fun with a fat quarter. Now, this is really useful for those 10 inch squares as well. I know it's for fat quarters, but there's loads of little ideas. You know, you say to yourself, This year I'm going to make all my presents. You need this book because they're all the presents that you want to make people are having fun with the fat quarters. Um, great, it's got all of the information about tools and materials, etc., etc., all the stuff that you'd need, all the techniques from patchworking to half square triangles. So, if you're a beginner to this, or there's some of the techniques you don't understand, it's explained very, very clearly, and really it is very easy to understand. Um, then we get, oh, even close, it even covers in very much detail with very step-by-step -step walkthroughs of how to insert a zip, which is something that a lot of people say, 
I don't know how to insert a zip. It's all there. So um, there's the rest of the lots and lots of inspiration, but I wanted to get onto the projects. So we've got flowers, how to make flowers, drawstring bags. I was talking earlier about having, um, you know, the early bird that we did that was the, oh, this one here, the early bird that we did that had the flip-flop fabric. Um, there you go. There's your shoe bag for the flip-flop fabric. Perfect. Because everyone needs that. Or you could use one as your underwear bag. So when you go on holiday, shoe bag, you could have that one to put your underwear in, couldn't you? But it's all. that's why I love these little books, because it gives you, when you've bought these fabrics, because you think, I love this, but what am I going to make with them? Reversible bag, quilted cosmetic bag. Now that would look nice in these, wouldn't it? Ooh. It's got, that's very clever. Look at the di I love the way the diagrams are done. So what you do is, it's quite good, isn't it? You quilt the fabric first, put the zip in, then you cut off all the corners and construct it. The quilting really makes this, doesn't it? But it would look lovely. Then you so you could use, um, you know, that one for the lining and have that one for the outside of it. Liking that idea. Door stop. Where have we got more of those fat quarters? They're nice. Fat eights, they're very nice, aren't they? They're on the website. They're nice, they're on the website, fat eights. Just saying ochre and grey, liking them. Right, quickly go through this book. I'm running out of time, running out of time. The Party Clutch. This is all using fat quarters as well, remember? So if you've got fat quarters in your stash or if you've bought some today, you need some inspiration. 10.99, how many projects have we got? 15 projects for 10.99. Oh, there's the mode there on the screen. Mode uh, through the woods, fat eight pack. Oh, I love that because well, I really like those mustard and ochre colours. Um, pillow. Uh, that's where you you know you know when you get your new machine that you've just bought. You know your Alma six eighty plus. You can test all your mich all your stitches on there. Keep it in your sewing room. Stitch library. Um, disappearing nine patch bag. That's lovely, isn't it? So when you take your little tote bag to the supermarket, don't just get one of those canvas ones that they give away for free. Make yourself one from these. Because um, I particularly like those. What else have we got? We've got a draft excluder. Very nice. A pillar with piping. I need a draft excluder. Yeah, just really a baby play mat. You know, I was saying earlier, everybody, people love to be given a quilt. A little pin of four, so it's all fat quarters, all fat quarters, and it's got all the templates. I just think ten ninety nine for fifteen projects is fantastic value for money. Right, very very quickly because I've got long left. I'm going to redo the early bird. So when we in the early bird, we had three half meters, so a meter and a half in total of these um, camping fabrics. We've got one with flip flops, which is lovely because it's got a floral background. And every design of flip-flop. One with garden chairs, from deck chairs to plastic chairs to metal chairs with a pink stripe. And the caravans as well. So for normally, normally £20.97 for three half metres. But today, and today only till midnight, for three half metres, it's 11 97 Loads of you were buying this at eight o'clock, but we have got a few left. Um, that works out as £3.99. £3.99 for half a metre. That's amazing please do keep checking out of those because um when they're gone they're gone or when they get if they they're not all sold by midnight they'll go back up as well thank you for joining me on sewing street today it's been a pleasure to spend the morning with you tomorrow we have we have who's presenting tomorrow john scott the lovely john's back tomorrow eight o'clock stitch into spring fabrics at nine o'clock oh he's got dawn taylor with him showing you how to make the spring home sweet gnome table runner i'll bet that'll be nice 10 o'clock, no, tomorrow is a very special day. It's my sister's birthday. If you're a brownie or a guide, it's thinking day. 22nd of February is thinking day. So all the guides and the brownies and the scouts and the cubs will know exactly. It's when you think of guides around the world is thinking day. But also it's 22, 2, 22. It's the two day. So all day long. But it's also Tuesday, like Tuesday. Tuesday the two, 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 two. Um, offers all day to do with twos. So at 10 o'clock, £22 fabric bundles. 
and they really shouldn't be £22. These are special discounted in aid of my sister's birthday and thinking day. It's do, 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 22 on Tuesday. Um, Tilda's Toy Box at 11 and Sew Machines at 12. So join John tomorrow for the special two-day, Tuesday two-day. It's going to be great. Thank you for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. We've had some wonderful people in. Thank you for all your lovely messages. Congratulations to all of you who've checked out on the Elna. And I will see you back here on Sunday. I'll be back on Sunday. See you later. <laughs>